exploration research dash my education. Rotator right here. And um, Sounds good. So you have a Stephanie is better right, with the out. Twitter um, if she wants to take over that. Ready? Let's uh, go down. Twitter, we are at Ocean Explorer. And, and if you want to use the hashtag Okeanos, hashtag Okeanos on all your posts, um, we do have someone monitoring the Twitter feed. And if you have any questions, they might get read on air. Absolutely. And then for the final social media, we do cover all of our bases. Uh, we also have Instagram at at Noah Exploration uh, at Noah Exploration. Sorry, I'm old. I still say dot com <laughs> um, after everything. But uh, yeah, if you guys see anything interesting or want to post a question or whatnot, we are actively looking at all of these. So um, if you want to participate, we'll try to be uh, monitor it as much as possible. And we can definitely answer those questions for you. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Deep Sea Nerdy. Or on Instagram and Facebook at Deep Sea Nerd, um, and I'm trying down. to convince Cam to get a Twitter. Maybe I'll Lost get her to do it tonight. We'll Maybe announce we'll it tomorrow. See. <laughs> Maybe by the end of the cruise I might cave, <laughs> but I haven't gotten there yet. But I do have an Instagram at Deep Sea Kim. Right. Uh, you can follow me and part of my uh, research progress as yeah, I go through my PhD, it. which is now in its final stages. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I go Copy home, that. I will be Work defending my PhD dissertation. Awesome. So it's a quite exciting that. moment for me right now. But Drop right now, I really want to focus on these dives. And uh, if you look back on your screens now, you can see we've reached bottom okay. again. So. Um, as we Close talked about earlier, here. we can see that these there are a lot of um, fine-grained sediments with some dark gray covering, coarse stuff. Um, it looks there possibly might be some coral rubble down here, but we're not entirely sure. Um, it's a little far to see, but um, we're, we're able now to start our dives. Yeah, watch it. Uh, we're just getting our lights extended and positioned. Um, so just another 30 seconds, and we should be good to start. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you, Bridge, Pilot. this is RV Nav. RV Nav, Bridge. Just wanted to inform you that we are back on bottom. Um, I believe you already confirmed the center rotation is around the A-frame. And if you're ready to discuss a bailout plan, I got one for you. Ready to copy. Okay, bailout will be due west, please. Due west. We've got a fish here. 270, excellent. Thank you very much, Bridge. Roger. All right, watch it. Um, we're all set, so we're going to go ahead and start. Um, and we'll just kind of go along our track, and then as you see things you want zooms on, um, just let me know, and we'll do our best to get them. No worries. We got gotcha. you. Thank you, ROV pilot. All right. Pretty flat here, huh? Good. Yeah, go for it, video. Um, when you do get a chance, I'd like to zoom in on some of this uh, bottom to see if there's actually coral rubble here. Uh, yeah. You get real low to it, and maybe you can kind of zoom in as I lower. There does seem to be some branchy looking items down there. Here's to hoping. That means there might be some live coral on top of this ridge. A right, video, you want to start to come in? We, I think we can say that this is coral rubble. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think so. And we also have our first. What I is can't that? tell. Is Ophiroid, it maybe? Ophiroid? Yeah. Um, if you guys can zoom dead center, there's um, a brittle star, it looks like. Yeah. There he is, hiding under some coral. Awesome. And these looked quite extensively encrusted with ferromanganese. Mm -hmm. Your coral bits are coral bits, Joe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, that yeah, you can kind of see the coral pileups. These are old. These have been here for a very long time. I'm, yes. But there's a pretty cool Ophiroid. So this is a brittle star. I do not know what kind. He is new to me. If anybody out there knows which kind this is, please chime in. And there seems to be a gastropod sitting right next to him as well, hanging out there. These are our first organisms that we're seeing on our very first dive here. So 
pilot, I think we're good. Thank you. Copy that. All right, all happy. All right, video. Go ahead and come out. So I'm glad we have coral rubble here. That's promising. Uh, it's not uncommon to find coral rubble near Lophelia mounds. That's a natural right, phenomenon. Video, come on out. We'll keep going. And it's pretty extensive. It's pretty much everywhere. Yeah, as you can now, as far as the eye can see, now that we've determined that this dark coarse material is that coral rubble material. We have a pretty flat area here. I think likely under the coral rubble, you think it's piled up coral rubble, or you think there Maybe. might just be okay. sediment? Yeah. Uh, I think there might if be a small forget, mix of it, but probably further down you go, yeah, the let more the next pilot know too, as coarser we sediments we actually yeah, sounds have. sounds good. Thank you. This is very promising for me. <laughs> this is looking good. And maybe now it starts that second layer foundation where if um, pilot colonies start Co to come, the coral larvae start to come, how maybe they'll doing? start colonizing well. this Just area got the too in the future. Who knows? Um, it's great. pretty flat. We have a fish way out in the distance at Copy. noon. Um, really flat. Yeah. Some kind of rat tail as we continue forward. Hey, watch it. We're just going to do a quick uh, pilot change real quick. I'll be right back with you. Roger. Roger that. And as you can see here, um, just to take a look while they're doing a quick change, I want to point out really quick at the current systems. Here you start to see in, um, where we're, while we're looking at all of the, the coral rubble, if you look slightly to the top of your screens, you start to see this these all these particles in the current system, and that's referred to as marine snow. So all of this detrital material that's being swept through the current systems. And as you can see, it's not going really all that fast. So that means the current is at a re relatively uh, good level for us to be diving today. And um, we can see that all of this material is composed of um, forams or any sort of organic material that's flowing through the current and we can see even that potentially a uh, rat tail swimming away now from the ROV um, but it seems to be a relatively um, overall pretty um, sustainable area for us to be diving in today Okay, so we're trying to acquire this little uh, hill here. Okay. So do you want to start moving? You guys settled in from your shift change? We are. All right. All right, we're moving on, it looks like. Yeah, we're, we're... Got some sloping. I think they said 060 is general direction. Okay. The next... Uh, we are still covered in coral rubble. Copy. We got maybe a 10 degree slope uh, in this small hill here. Other than that, it's pretty flat. We have no rugosity. Okay, once you get settled in, Jim, we'll uh, want to get a move. Looks like our bailout is to the west, directly to the west. Great. Um, the last moves, I'm having a hard time finding any, but uh, 
I think zero six zero is the direction we want to go. Sounds good. We can. What uh, do you think? A little something swimming around. Looks like a squat lobster. You can definitely uh, start doing a move. Why you drag to this line? Tell me what that distance is from Sirius. So even in a what looks can come like in on the fish. Let me do still have a lot of life that Hold there. From Sirius? Yeah, Sirius, that line. What is it roughly? Uh, 70 meters. 70? You could probably do 50 of that. At uh, decimal two, maybe? Okay. And most of this coral rubble, correct me if I'm wrong, Stephanie, looks to be quite Lophelia esque. Um, they're quite robust skeletons, so... Yeah, I would definitely call this Lophelia or Inalapsamia. Um, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, Bridge our OV nav. Hands, but, uh, yeah, definitely. I'd like to request Lophelia a move. Lophelia-esque. Range 5, um, zero there's quite meters, a bit of it, too. It's bearing piled, zero, six, zero, parts. Speed decimal so two I'm knots. I'm hoping there's going to be a big yeah, mound of off. living Bearing somewhere zero, close by. <laughs> looks like we have some dead... Mid um, Magic possibly. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Can come out. So just when you think you're only looking at the dead. All right. Okay, watch the life. Yep, that can be used as substrate for some species. Is and there's there definitely small critters and stuff living. Is there anything underneath particular in this rubble watch lead that you're trying to get a closer look at? We're just getting a general feeling. Oh, thanks, Violet. I think we already missed it. I couldn't even point you in the right direction right now. Okay. Got a ship move underway, headed towards the feature. Uh, I can't push out any further without starting to tug on our tether, so I'm going to sort of investigate in this general area until the ship catches up. Got a star on the bottom here. And I'm trying to think of what these long kind of strands are. Come in a little bit. They look like seagrass? Yeah, yeah, they could the, easily uh, be detritus at, okay. at, at, falling from the shallow water. Okay. Here's another one of those ophiroids I don't know the name of. <laughs> He's got five legs. It's very spiny, has a very distinct central disc. It's almost a pink color. You can see his two feet on his uh, right leg there. If we can focus a little bit. They're pretty neat. Um, okay, certainly for anything new, we, we'll be able to do that, but we'll have to there do that we with the um, memory the ship and everything. Do our so best this here. is related to a starfish. Um, it's a type of star. Well, it's a type of echinoderm called a brittle star. And I honestly have no idea what species this is. I have never seen him before. So if anybody knows out there, please chime in and let me know. Let's see if a. If, I don't even have it on the chat log. <laughs> nope. No input yet. Yep. But he looks fairly content. Thank you for all that move. Thank yet. you, ROV. Yeah, yeah, I think we're I'm good. I'm getting a little bit closer. Great. Okay, video, when you're all set. And there's his front view. I mean, I don't, maybe it's a do. I have no idea. He looks very different to me. Yeah. He must look soft. Like the tissue on the top is soft. Usually they're pretty yeah. hard or scaly. Maybe most of his or organelles are being housed in that area. Soft and squishy. Um, for those of you, we just are now seeing these two red dots. These are our, our measuring lasers. They are 10 centimeters apart, so it give you an idea of how large the stuff we're looking at is. Um, it's used for scale. We use these all the, all the time on our ROV cruises because um, the concept of how big things are really gets confusing in these uh, in the whip. video feeds. And we are getting a little hilly in this region. We are approaching that slope feature that we're going to be scaling upwards. 
We got another fish up here. We have another fish and maybe a sea pen? Yeah, possibly. Considering that the framework structure looks pretty broken down, I would say it came from somewhere else, possibly the top of that ridge that's there. Um, I don't really see any distinct um, uh, preserved structure in this area, so likely it tumbled Coming down from the current the system pen. or just kind of broke down over time. But we definitely know these have been here for a while, long enough to be encrusted by that ferromanganese that we uh, clearly see on the darker ends of these skeletal structures. Yeah, it's definitely old. Yeah. This looks like a sea pen. And then up here we have, I think, an echinoderm at noon. Just got somebody on the base here, maybe? Or is that just a close polyp? Could be a polyp, never mind. Looks quite happy. If there are any sea pen specialists out there, we would like to know what kind of species sure. this is. Can just start to um, see the bottom. Feel free to chime the in. Peduncle there. Maybe. But other than that, he looks to be really happy. Okay. You can see even his polyp sure. structures there wafting around in the current system, probably trying to grab whatever material comes by as a snack. Click on the tip. And it seems to be two prong system where every polyp okay. structure there is, there seems to be two Wanna polyps your, uh, branching from that same area. And they seem to be forming in one general direction. So we don't see growth of these polyps on both sides of the sea pen, just on one general direction, which is normally a characteristic of sea pens, isn't it? I think so, yeah. They usually form on the two sides. Yeah. Great. I'm not sure which species this is. If someone knows Picking up um, out there, on. let me know. Um, there's a nice rat tail. Got a little uh, undulation down here, so trying not to uh, scrape along the bottom, but it makes the front end a little high. Um, as the pilot stated, that we're coming up now on that uh, slope feature, so he's going to try to navigate to make sure that he doesn't scrape the bottom of uh, the seafloor here. Um, it's best to leave things undisturbed if we can. Um, let nature take its course with things. We've come up a few meters uh, since we started. We hit bottom around 870, and we're at like 866, 867 right now. Another beautiful fish as we see here, rat tail is what it's referred to. I would think I'm terrible with fish. <laughs> yes. Eel, this is why we have land science scientists to help us out, because I have no idea what the fish are. <laughs> Come in a little bit. I don't know if this is a... This might be an eel. Not our area of expertise, but it does look really interesting. Maybe a cutthroat eel, Tara's saying. Not a rat tail. Not a rat tail. Okay. He's pretty cool. Mm. Looks to not enjoy the ROV maybe too much, swimming away from it. <laughs> He's pretty active. I'm turned around here. I'll let him go. 
just to further discuss here, now as we're coming up closer to this ridge area, we're starting to see more and more dense accumulations of these of this coral rubble, which continues to tell us that most of this Kinda coral did not form in situ at the base of this ridge. So it's likely that it uh, did currents or what have you pushed it over so. the edge, and it's starting to accumulate then at the bottom much, of this escarpment. Definitely. When we get to a living reef, you'll see a huge difference of standing. Okay. You'll start seeing standing Stopping. dead coral yeah. and then living coral. Do you want to come a little bit closer? And this is just rubble there? that has fa fallen off the, the wall that? Yeah, um, in, that we're at the base of right now. Yeah. So. Oh, and it looks like there might be an anemone straight ahead. Yeah, that slight reddish feature this. there. Or do my yeah. eyes deceive me? Could yes, be. it looks right. It could be. We can get a little come closer. partial video. I'll try to snuggle up here. Yeah, come on in. Oh, oh now I'm really not familiar with what what these guys are. Come in a little tighter before he goes in. Could be a worm. It looks like it did retract something just now, and it Ooh. seems. Oh, oh, and there it goes. <laughs> we scared him. We can hold this. Could yeah, also be a right siphon for a um, clam. Might be still out. Possibly. We got some shrimp. Ooh. And Ooh. a little Ooh. lobster or, or crab further just to the bottom yep. there. Squat lobster, some kind. I mean, it's little habitat. This is an entire habitat for all these little critters. This, yep. this car rubble. He looks to be on the hunt for something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the little broken back shrimp. Okay. I think that other tube's also sucked in, so. Can, uh, yeah, we can come out. I got to unwrap here and start thinking about the slope. Looks like bacterial matting or some kind of slime. Yeah, gelatinous. Yeah, matting. that could be an egg sac. It could be a feeding, a feeding um, sac. It could be bacteria. Okay. And we just heard from the chat room that Maria Diaz says that it is indeed a siphon from a clam. Um, it looks to be, that's generally what we think it is to be the closest. So um, thank you very much, uh, Maria Diaz. And she also pointed out that that gelatinous material, okay, matting material that we did see portion. earlier could be over cyanobacteria. Okay, so um, Stephanie was right on the money on that one. Sounds good. Yeah, watch that. As I said, we had a little undulation there where it was going down before the upslope. So we're just going to give a little push out so it's a little better view for you guys. Okay. Get back Great, thank you. Where it's sloping up again. Navigator, can you actually zoom in on this one as well? Maybe um, to 30 meters? Oh, here we go. What is that? This might be an anemone. Yeah, it looks like a coralomorph. Okay. It does look quite interesting. Yep, that's a definitely a coralomorph. Um, they're related to corals and anemones. See, it's a single polyp with uh, tentacles. It uses to feed itself. And if we were to zoom in, you would see its um, mouth right bit. in the center. There we go. And it uses its foot to stick to these big rocks. Nice stable bottom to hang on to. <laughs> you can see the bacterial matting to the right. It's pretty cool.
Now, do we know what um, gives them their color? Um, well, definitely down here, it's too deep to be um, zooxanthellae. So I would imagine it's just its tissue. Okay. In a matter of you are what you eat, kind of? I, or? It could be. Okay. It could be. Really nice. And even, like, the tissue looks very complex in order to... Mm -hmm. um, for all of its protruding tentacles, we see it's very textured. And they're, they're, they're almost like a, like a sack of water, right? So they can, they can squish down and grow out. Just oh. like, a, like a, a regular anemone can. They're pretty cool. Nice. Thank you, pilot. I think we're good. They likely also have stinging cells because they're in the phylum that area. So that's how they here catch video. food with their stingers. Does look good, and there's that um, matty stuff that Steph was talking about earlier on, on the right bottom hand side of the screen. And what's kind of interesting is that um, this Coralomorph, mm -hmm. is what it's called, mm -hmm. um, is settled upon the likely one of the, the tallest little features that we see in this okay. coral graveyard, essentially. So it's probably due to Thanks. the currents. He's trying to grab the, the highest point so he can make sure that um, he can feed from the current systems. So that's another interesting uh, thing to, to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so from Harbor Branch... Um Dr. Dennis Hanasek and Josh Voss, Dr. Josh Voss, have chimed in, and they're saying, okay. not sure that not slimy that stuff the, is uh, cyanomat. Okay. Um, yeah, Josh said it could be a sulfur oxidizing bacterial mat, but here. we're not 100%. Yeah, okay. okay. We can, uh, oh, we might have some stand-in coral here. Do another 20 meters at least here. And do you want to take a look at any of these... Coral, uh, are you looking at the rubble or what? Yeah, be alive yeah, on the lower. Lower oh. right. You want a closer look? Yes, please. Yeah, of course. Want me to hold off on the move? Or? No. Yeah. Just give yeah, us that like looks like standing dead to me. Yeah. It may not be attached though. It Start might just it. be a chunk. Yeah. That has fallen off, which means yeah, it's okay. probably a little it newer than the rest. And then we're just speaking in geological time, right? So. Bridge already. New yes. is <laughs> <in our> relative. <laughs> I'd like to request a move. Yes, it's kind of conglomerated. Two zero meters, bearing zero six zero. A little tighter. Speed decimal two you can knots. See, there's some critters living on That's it. Two zero meters, bearing zero six zero. Another aphiroid. Good yeah. copy. Thank you. Just this rubble here. Looks like there's some sponges. Any some decaying leftover organic tissue at the top there, whatever was left of the coral, but we do have some little critters living in him. This little sp spider crab, is that what I'm seeing right in the uh, center? He's cool. I think so. I'm not sure how much interest. You can see him moving around a little bit. Yeah. Where's he the crab? He blends in with the back. Um, he's at like 3 o'clock uh. on the main. Yeah. Now he's dead center. Yeah, that guy dead center. Sure. Right on. There he is. See him? Oh, wow. His little legs. He almost blended right in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what this brown thing is. Yeah. Very small guy there. Yeah, he's yeah. teeny tiny. And we've got a spiny ophiroid behind him. He, that's the pink the pink arms behind him. That's an ophiroid or a brittle star. Uh, he's very spiny. Um, I would guess ophiothrix for the family, but I'm not 100%. We also have small tube worms. Um got yeah. something living on the top here, another oh, crab another maybe. Crab yeah. That's cool. Yeah, this is an encrusting sponge. I mean, this little tiny habitat is just filled with what? We've yeah. seen yes, at I least cool. five, Thanks. seven species just sitting here. I can't imagine how many there are. I know that um, when John Reed went into, was doing his research on the Oculina Reef, 
he picked up a head about the size of a basketball and of living coral and there were like i don't know a couple hundred different individual species most of them new to science in one little in one tiny little ball of of living coral so yeah um, this is pretty cool um these little tiny critters okay and it, it's no quite idea. amazing because this rov is nine feet tall and can get down to less than a few centimeters in vis visibility yeah. so and focus in on these pilot. really macro um animals tilt down a little yeah Okay. Thanks, video. So Chris said she saw a piece of the sclerida, but I'm not sure where she was looking. So that's a type of sponge. Um, yeah. This uh, branching type here or no? Hi, Steve. Hi, Chris. How are you? Yeah, you were yeah. um, in a uh, piece of rubble oh, that was this. standing vertically. And surely pointed at me uh, oh. at this uh, white veil, right. transparent. It looked yeah. like it was a thin encrusting yeah. stone. Oh, uh, okay. It grow it like that. Like okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, this is probably stylaster coral. This white branching coral. Uh, it's not real coral. It's actually a hydrocoral. So it's more related to hydrozoans. It is a hydrozoan, I should say. <laughs> um, More related to. And you look at really close, you can see tiny little polyps um, sticking sneaking out. in closer right now. We were mm -hmm. pretty far away, so I'm just getting a little more light on it for you here. So we've got our first. And you can get it a little tighter if you want. Attached I center it coral. Up. Um, ish, okay. ish, <laughs> sort of, <laughs> kinda. So we need to. So you can see it's stinging, okay. it's stinging tentacles. I mean, yeah, there we go. We got a second here. Ooh, say. that's Each one of those is an individual polyp, and they sting. That's how they catch food. Okay. That bridge was complete. So yeah, we would call this, if we were in the shallow that, water, it would be relative to the, of the fire head. corals that are in the shallow yeah. water reefs. These tiny little tentacles that stick out. And if you touch them, you know how bad they hurt. So we do not touch these. They will that 20 meter burn you. Complete. Good to know. Great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank that, you. Hence the fire coral name. Yes. There's <laughs> a reason they call it that. Awesome, and we've got some polyp down here that look maybe it could be a barnacle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There he is. There's his little yeah. tentacles. They're actually feeding appendages. So barnacles are, are related to um, c crabs, right? So arth arthropods. And there's his feeding appendages coming out. And he collects food and then pulls it back in. He lives in a little shell. A little bit of a shell, yeah. Would you say he's um, taking advantage of the placement okay. of the of the the stylasterid, or is it just more of a coincidence that they're together? I yeah, mean, I don't know I'm if there's any together. evidence that they purposely grow near other, you know, near this specific stylasterid. It's possible that they settled uh, there on purpose, but uh, through chemical interaction, right, they can tell where other things are. Some species can. So that's a possibility. I honestly don't know. I thought that was going to be the sponge you're looking for. I don't. I haven't seen it. Um, you said there was some sponge that they noticed. Yeah, there was like a thin, gooey sponge on the on the. Um, oh, on the rubble. Yeah, on the rubble, yeah. standing okay. rubble. If, if we see it again, I'll, I'll let you know. Thanks. Okay. Well, I'm going to give a little push out. See if we can catch the hill on sonar, and if not, we'll do another big move here. Is that a different fish? Oh, there seems to be a little guy there. Can come in a little bit. Lemonima, maybe? Runs away. Like a codling? He looks a little different than that. It looks like the some type of codling. Down. Yeah. He might even be blind. Look, he's having a hard time. Maybe we're just blinding him <laughs> with our giant lights. They never see light down here, so <laughs> he's a little confused. Mm. 
He's quicker than I. Can come in a little bit. Might be stabilizing for us. Yeah, he seems to be swimming about. Not sure um, what he's looking for or whatnot, but... If anyone knows exactly what kind of fish this is, please chime in. And we see in the background there another yeah. ophiroid. Next video. Yeah, we'll give him another second, but we might be disturbing him, so we might move on. Either way. Yeah. A little unpredictable for us. <laughs> Thank you, pilot. Yeah, of course. We got lots of your rights. Oh, we might have some standing coral here. Like standing dead, likely. It's not white enough to be a living. That fish is keeping up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to get another move? Yeah. Looks sure. like we have some more standing up ahead. You want to do a larger move or 20 meters again? Yeah, it seems like you can do a larger. I'm getting pushed out and I don't see anything yet. Okay. On my sonar, you could do 30 probably at least. Bridge ROV nav. Go ahead, nav. I'd like to request a move, okay. range three uh, zero no, meters, this, uh, standing bearing coral. zero six zero, speed decimal two knots. What was that? I'm just going to push this standing coral. Good copy, thank you. Maybe the tips far. are alive. Yeah, let's get a little closer and see. Yeah. I think it's pretty well lit. You can start in video. Maybe not so much. Yeah, I think it's probably recently dead. Um, yeah, okay. I don't think there's a lot of... We can other see than that if you there's see the a lot of critters on here again. People hanging out. Yeah, this Carl definitely looks... Dead. Maybe the center right here where it's white and... And, uh, like... I don't want to say opalescent, but pearly white. The, yeah, the, pearly white. That might, the might be there, a little bit. But yeah, but you can see the skeleton. Yep. Yeah. The yeah. coral polyps, or what they call coralites, excuse me. That's where each individual coral lives. Right? Because each it, coral is actually a colony of small animals. It looks like it looks like a bunch of tiny anemones that live together on a single um, s skeleton. Yep. And each one of those lives in these little coralites, and it feeds. It's colonial. Uh, but yes, this looks dead to me. We've got, we do have some other stuff living on it. These pink ophiroids, which are pink brittle stars. You can see their little legs. Um, this white branching thing might be a foraminifera, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I wouldn't know right off the bat. And we've got a tiny nice. one over here. There's not much in the way of light down here, but we can bring it in. Can you see more ophiroids? Yep, I see a small sponge here at the bottom around 6 o'clock. You can see the soft, it's almost clear white. See the yellowish one on the uh, just left of center? In Maria in Diaz on the ways. chat says again that yes. white encrusting um, veil like sponge. Sorry, not encrusting, but that yes, kind of gooey high, veil. Uh, Copilot can bring the lower, the port the lower of the uh, conglomerate. Deploy you could even further. see the osteola of the sponge. Yes. If you go a little high, there you can see the white, thin veil, orange, and so a couple of osteos. 
Just, you got any idea what it is? Just uh, port lower. Uh, it's not, in on you want to bring it out. Deploy it to be a of clarity. Piece of Okay, so that's what we're Sponge. There's also a, Chris. There's also a yellow one dead center, way deep in the in the in the um, dead coral. Do you uh, see it? The port side. It's a yellow, maybe oh. hexactinellid. That I don't think it would be a hexactinellid. Okay. Uh, but but it, I, I cannot see it as clearly right now. That's okay. A little bit. It's a little snappy. Jump, yeah. There it is. There's the spot. You got a little light in there. And we've got that Let's slime again over maybe. here. You can see it bubbling up yeah. with the current. Yeah. Some form of that I don't know, we're gonna get microbial that. mat or cyanobacterial right. mat. Okay. And there we have that veiling sponge again. Get a second with at this. At the top. Not much to look at. And uh, we'll move on. He looks like maybe he had just knocked over and is hanging on to the last bit. <laughs> he could be actually forming a clump, like they can right. like, uh, conglomerate together using the sponge, right? So the sponge is holding yeah. this clump of dead coral together. It's, unless we pick it up, physically pick it apart, I really, it's really hard to tell, right? Yeah. So, pilots, since um, it looks like the wind is picking up a little bit, we definitely want to reach the top of this ridge um, before we have to pull it in case weather um, picks up so bad we can't continue. Yeah. So if we could just make that a priority, unless we see something super fabulous, we'll let you know. But otherwise, let's just move as quickly as possible to the top. Okay. Ship's underway now. We'll tack on a, a little bit more to that. We've been keeping the ship pretty consistently moving. Um, and all the stops you see are just the fact that I can move a little quicker than uh, we run the train here. Okay, that's that's great. If if um, we can just keep moving, that's fine. But if okay. you have time to slow down and can keep up with the boat, we're totally fine with looking around too. Yeah, the we we would we would go a lot quicker. We just don't want to, you know, if this is a really steep feature, we don't want to come upon it without knowing how overhung it is or anything like that. So as we approach, we'll. We'll keep the ship moving, but we can't go, you know, half knot or something, or else yeah. we'll have too much layback. If we stop the ship, Copy that. Cirrus Thank will you. keep swinging. If we see the cliff too late, it'll swing into the cliff. So we we'll want to. Yeah, let's try to avoid that. Yeah, so we'll we'll keep <laughs> safely. We'll keep moving at our uh, consistent safe speed here. Sounds good. Thank you. The move's complete. You want to repeat We can lines? swing the camera yep. over to that left. Nine o'clock. Yeah, you want to take a look at that. Let's get a drive-by viewing. Sure, we can do a snap on it. Bridge ROV nav. Okay, yeah, you can bridge, snap in. I'd like to request here. a move, range oh, 30 meters, four, I believe. bearing 060, speed decimal 2 knots. Happy and then we've got we some kind of fish. Take a little more here. Three zero meters. Yeah, for us. So this is a type of juicy coral. Uh, Good copy, thank you. Yeah, we got some polyps over here. He's quite beautiful, huh? Oop. Oh, hi, fish. Stealing the show, are we? Sneaking in a little bit. <laughs> some light here. He is quite beautiful, and he looks quite healthy, too. Mm -hmm. Nice zigzag pattern. There's that crinoid. Oh, right. We have a crinoid. That's nice. He's at 6 o'clock. So crinoids are relative of a starfish, sort of. They're a, both echinoderms. Uh, it's also known as a sea lily. And if Chuck Messing is listening, I'm sure he can chime in and tell me the genus and species. Okay. And then we had... 
there's more of that um, matty material. And then what are those kind of anemone looking features? It could be zoanthids, which would be like a colonial polyp animal. It's a definitely a nodaria, a relative of the coral or anemones. Um, don't think it's, oh, there's a crab. crab. There's a little crab all the way on the inside. Yep, we have some crinoid feathers. Crinoid there's some white the sponge zoanthid. at the top. Full zoom. Okay. All right. We'll bring this live stuff back into view. Very interesting clumps, uh, Kim and Steph. If we move a little bit the camera to the left, we saw something that looks snug. So a little to the left. Can we swing the camera towards the left a little? Yeah, we can come left. What were you looking for, Chris? If the, there was something that looked like a slug in the top of the clump. Oh, that looked uh, like a slug. Okay. okay. But um, so left and high. Left and on the top? One. Okay. Yes, on the Still top. Go left and up? Yes. Maybe it was not, but uh, there was something. Wow. Oh, what's going on? It's like dead uh, barnacles. Dead barnacles. Um, if you pan out, I think I know what she was referring to. I think it's all the way on the left hand side of this little boulder. Cars feature. It looks like an isopod. It does look the like a little bit. A bunch of barnacles what here. What do you think it is? Well, no. Oh, this, uh, this guy right here. That sponge. Is that what you're looking at, Chris? The white sponge? Yes, yes. Look, look it's a sponge. Yeah, yeah. And that could be an exotinelli. Yeah. yeah, that looks. Uh, like a, yeah, like, yeah, I think that's a hexactinella. Mm -hmm. How about the little ball at um, 9 o'clock? It's sticking off the edge. A demo sponge. Demo, okay. Wow. It looks like there's a little gastropod right settling underneath the sponge there. Teeny guy. Can pan down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think it's a hermit. Oh. Yep. Oh, there's yeah. There's his little legs. I love hermit crabs. They're so cute. They are. <laughs> and we also have a tube, tube worm here. Mm -hmm. I can see the tube right here. It looks like the tentacles are out. And it's interesting to see um, from the geologic perspective, this looks like a piece potentially from the top of the ridge or yes, from um, right. the actual escarpment itself, you some sort of karstified conglomerate because there are some structures more. in there, but we're not sure if they're either boring um, from biological percent. material right, or video. maybe um, we're gonna just in the formation of the actual here. rock that occurred here. But um, it's quite degrees. interesting to see that there is just one solid little oh, boulder out in this right in um, overall possibly. kind of coral graveyard here. And just from that gaining that little bit of height, a lot of these organisms have latched themselves on just to see if they can really be benefited by the current systems by being that much taller than the rest of the topography. Okay. Oh, someone said they saw a polychaete worm. Yeah, the serpula, that was the okay. tube. Okay. Okay. Ship's still moving. Yes. We will tack a little more on shortly. I'm going to give a little push out, see if we can catch the hail on sonar yet. Not seeing it on Sirius. Something interesting from Sirius view, maybe. Bit of a crater or a pockmark. Maybe there's somebody in there or something going on. That looks like a fresh little scour there. Mm -hmm. Not sure what could have made it. It's 
different, huh? Yep. Could be a stingray. That bridge was complete. <laughs> Copy, thank you. Could be worm digging the out. The moves been completed. Could be. Bottom. Could be a fish clearing some room. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, maybe a cephalopod okay. came down yeah, and scraped against the, yeah. the bottom. Keep them coming. Who knows, man? We Repeat the same. Yeah. Just Evidence of here. Somebody. Bridge oh, ROV nav. Yeah, something soft here. here. We'd like to repeat last. Sure Range 30 meters, bearing 060, speed decimal 2 knots. Come Possibly a little bit. Okay. That's 30 meters, bearing 060, speed decimal 2 knots. Good copy, thank you. Well, oh, it looks like we have a crinoid on the far right. Let's get a little more and detail this pink on this thing guy. looks like it could be a Nepthead or soft yeah. coral. Back up a little. I'm yeah, that's what I'd call that. There we go. Looks almost like broccoli, right? <laughs> broccoli coral. Looks like he's got a little hermit crab next to him too. Yeah. And a yellow, maybe zoanthid cover. Yeah, for sure. I'll come down. Branch. Of Branch. Some sort. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful, look. Too fast. Sorry. I'll bring it around for you. I would, yep, call that a... <coughs> and they latch on other branches of some sort? Yeah, so they're like, they're a colonial, um, they're a colonial <coughs> animal. And they usually will, yeah, well, not always, sometimes they're single ones, but th this one's okay. colonial, and it, it's probably growing on a dead Gorgonian branch or some other type of branch. 80%, um, 80 degrees. And it either okay. grows on living ones and kills them, or it grows on dead ones, and it depends on the species, I would imagine. Um, okay. I'm sure there's some zoanthid experts out there who could chime in and let me know if I'm wrong or not, but that's my understanding of it. Um, we might have a Gorgonian, yeah, looks like we've got a white Gorgonian. To the right. Okay, video. This is pretty neat. We got a boogie soon. Thanks. And something white might be some Madripoor. Pilots, are you um, fighting a little bit of a bottom current? Um, maybe a small amount. Yeah. Okay. We're. Uh, experiencing a little bit from west to east, I would say. Oh, no, it's uh, just curious, because it looks like something was blowing that coral around, and so I just wanted to see if it was a bottom current or some sort of uh, um, jet wash from our thrusters, but, you know, it's good to know if there's any sort of current down here. Um, you know, one of the things we're always interested in, where these corals grow, and if there's any current down there, good to know. Yeah, Thanks, pilot. A good indication, if you look at Serios Cam, this, the marine snow sort of moving in reference to me from left to right on the screen there. Um, but yeah, we, I am pushing about you know 20 to 30 percent to my port to stay even with the bottom. So there's a small amount of current, and that was well below me um, in terms of prop wash. So shouldn't have been experiencing any of effect from the props. It's like below my skids when I was taking the shot. Um, Thanks, pilot. Yeah. Do you know how far from the base of the wall we are? From the bathymetry, the the first indications of it are right here. Um, but um, I expect, you know, to the slope to increase. I'm not sure how steep the wall will be, uh, judging by... Oh, we have a sea urchin also. ...how far along we've moved here and aren't seeing much yet. My sonar indicates, you can see it's a little bit more of a tight mesh right in front of me. Um, I think it's definitely increasing in slope. Um, but we should be... Yeah, I think we're at the base of that ridge. Yeah. Should be pretty yeah, close, so to close to the base here. Yeah. With a sea star, not too far from oh, it. Oh, nice. At your two o'clock. Okay. How long do we have until the end of that world? Yeah, 
can't spend a ton of time here. We gotta it's this uh, is a fairly common sea urchin. We've gone 20 of the 30 yeah, meters. I'm blanking on the Can name. I'm trying to remember it. If it's the one I think is, is extremely venomous. Yeah, it's 96 degrees. Okay. All right. I'll move along. Hopefully there's more of these along the way. We're going to keep up with the boat here. Yeah, don't, don't slow down. So Kay. that's good. Keep going. Now I noticed some broken spicules and whatnot on it. Is that normal for Great. a sea urchin to have any sort of bra um, and keep them on them? Or I mean, he could. He sometimes they'll pick stuff up and put them on their on their head. To, you or know, like hats. Yeah, to cover themselves. Um, he may have just lost that spicule and hasn't you know, tossed it out. Yeah. Yet. Okay. Gotten rid of it, or maybe he's hanging on to it. All right. Get a little push. I've seen a lot of the shower, shallow water sea a urchins pick up other shells and other gastropods and wear them Coming like little hats yeah. for yeah. camouflage and whatnot. And um, those that we have at the marine uh, okay. labs and stuff, they just like to wear now. them yep. for fun. <laughs> About, uh, we decorate 20, the shells so they look like little festive out. hats. <laughs> what would you say is left in that move? About uh, eight There's meters. There's another corral of more. I'll push out. It looks like we're Good heading eyes. up slope now. Yeah. We've got a nice increase. That bridge will complete. Oh, the move's complete. Ah, great. Copy, thank All you. Right, so likely we'll hit, if we're going on a steep slope, we're going to lose a lot of the coral rubble. It'll start smoothing out. And we might be able to see the underlying. That bridge? Like, uh, rock. Nev. Right, maybe. Yeah, we'll depends on how steep it is. Yeah, it depends on the steepness, and it depends harbor. on um, what kind it's of... Uh, of sediments uh, we're actually looking at. So this does seem to look like a lot of carbonate Roger, material. Uh, proceed. So, Thank you. Uh, so the, you know the bathymetry yep. is a 25 meter grid, so which means each each cell size within our rasterized bathymetry is, is 25 by 25 meters. So anything smaller than that, any, any steeper escarpment smaller than that, we, we probably would not be seeing. Uh, based on the bathymetry, we do have it at a 25 meter grid, which is, which is pretty high resolution for the deep sea. Um, we're thinking the max slope is going to be around 14 to 17 degrees. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if there are any smaller outcrops in that. Um, but that's, it's, it's a steeper slope. It's not some of the steepest slopes we've ever dove on. So it will be interesting to see how, how it does change. And speaking of that, here you can see now um, this slab of what looks like karstified material. Um, jutting out between all of the, the coral rubble and graveyard, and we are starting to see some slight resemblance towards standing coral frameworks. Not, I don't think they're alive, but um, we're starting to see a more a higher density of these framework systems, and um, we'll start to proceed up nor uh, further up slope, but we're starting to see more and more of actually these features of the ridge that um, we're potentially going to be at the top of. Right, so and you we can have see the slope increase now. We've got maybe yeah. 30, 30 degrees, 40 degrees at when we look uh, along the side. Yeah. So we have um, we have a Chrysogorgia maybe here and some cup coral. Does you want to take a look at any of those? Sure, if you have time moving? to zoom, we're in. Okay, the ship's making a heading adjustment right now to get into the wind a little bit, so we have a second before they can take a move. Also, looks like we have a white sponge at three. And yeah. Kim, something we were thinking about for these ridges, right, were, were these ridges driven by some sort of biogenic um, formation or were they driven yeah. by some sort of tectonic shift in the underlying bedrock, right? What are, what are creating these long north-south trending ridges? And, and maybe this is a piece of the bedrock that's, that's under it. Who knows? Yeah, know. and it could be a combination of, of all of the above and, um, and also of the current systems of why we have this particular escarpment here. Maybe um, the framework system just started to, con to grow and okay, the current system tighter. started to deviate around it, therefore undercutting maybe some of the underlying geology that's there. Um, but it looks like, like here that. we have that Chrysogorgia. Um, very nicely upon this exposed karstified slab here. That looks also quite nodular. That bridge, we're at a heading of a zero one zero. And we have a little crustacean. Copy that, thank yeah, you. what's he? You can see his little claw, maybe. Is that yeah. what I'm saying? A leg. He looks transparent. Yeah. The heading a bit. change has been completed. Translucent. Great. That could be a sea spider. These are uh, little squat lobsters that are really common with Chrysogorgia. They often live on these corals. 
think. Uh, yeah, you can see his, his long appendage sticking out to the to the right, the little hairs on it. Yeah. He's sitting there waiting for food. And over the course of several of these dives um, so that I've participated on show, we're seeing these squat right, lobster come uh, in a variety of colors from coral, very translucent white to pearl white to um, lots of species. We might come yeah, out and I mean, I don't know if there are specific it. colors yeah. to specific areas Backs or do there. they mix and Should match or, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I would imagine they're just different species right at different there. depths. Oh, look at this. Ooh. The solitary cup coral. He's pretty big. Yeah. There are so many species of cup coral, I can't even begin to tell you where to start <laughs> with this guy. And honestly, you'd have to pull him out of the ground and, you know, pull him out of the water and count the coralites and measure the sizes. And, yeah, they're really particular. <laughs> and, they, yeah, look at even the septa. Yep. It's all in there. It's, yeah, they're pretty hard yeah. to, to ID. Um, so, Timothy Shank on the chat room thinks that actually the crustacean on the the Chrysalogorgia coral is a um, chrysostylid crab. Um, Coralisted. Oh, I think. thank you very much. <laughs> I am clearly not the biologist. Listed, yeah, that's right. Coralisted. I think. Chrysalisted. That's it. That's pretty cool. Okay. Shirley says, beautiful image. I yeah, agree. Yeah, I'm good there. And more of that matty material surrounding okay. the coral there. Um, there if it is that kind of coral that, um, sulfur bacteria or cyanobacteria, Matt, top, we're you know, not entirely sure. There's a little fan. Could be the leftovers too. maybe of an egg sac even of some sort. There's quite a bit of it. I would imagine it's yeah. probably bacterial. You guys interested in the fan or the rock pen? Actually, yeah, that would be great. Okay. Whatever you have time for, we are in. Well, uh, the ship's done with its heading move, um, okay. so once Maybe we're done here, we can boogie along. Yeah. Um, the ship's ready for us at any time, so. One quick Let's look at the fan, and we can move on. Uh, we're going for the fan at the bottom here. I'm just getting set up for you. Oh, yeah. I think they want to move as well, so we'll Could start that be a here. bamboo coral? Come on I'd in. have to get closer to see if it has striping on the face. Possibly. There's somebody hanging out on it. I don't see any striping. Not on the skeletal material. But we do this white blobby thing underneath it. Yeah. I don't know what that is either. It looks like it has even organ something, some sort of organism. Yeah. But we do see on this coral that generally the polyps are facing one direction. Yeah, that blob is also I quite interesting to look at. Primnoid. Scott. Scott's a primnoid coral. Oh. But at that base, that blob there looks like something else. If anyone has any idea what it is, feel free to chime mm -hmm. in. And we have a really nice ophiroid flattening itself against oh, nice. the rock, almost not visible. Be like a tiny sea cucumber <laughs> or something. You can see some organs in there. And Scott also says to note on this primnoid cor octocoral the, how stiff it is. It's not very fan-like overall like we see in some acididae corals or... Um, those bamboo corals that we may have thought it was at some point. But um, we're also seeing this little c tiny crab hanging out on him towards no, midway fun. up the one of the branches there, probably disturbing some of the polyps. Okay. Waiting for food to pass by. Yep. And I get the last shot for video. Is there anything else on and this rock before we move along? I'm uh, happy whenever you guys are ready. I okay. think we're good. We don't know what this white blob is. If anyone out there knows, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's a sponge. It has like a pink internal. It does look like it has organelles yeah. in it. So it, some sort of organism. Okay. Even after the dive, if you guys want to chime in and email us or tag us on one of the social media aspects, feel free. Um, we'll gladly correct ourselves or mm -hmm. come back to that when we have a chance. And... Um, from the chat room, it says that Den Den Dr. Dennis Hennesack from HBOI says that um, it's the...
gelatinous sort of matty material that we've been seeing is likely not cyanobacteria because of the depth. Um, but it is one of the most right, abundant things that we are slope. seeing at, at um, currently this depth I'll besides get a the coral rubble. We do another move. And as you can see, as we start to move upslope, we're starting to get more of those actual framework systems of the corals that are still intact. We see a lot of the coral rubble around the systems, but um, generally more of it's, it's preserving a little bit of that overall framework system that the coral is producing. So it starts to give us an indication that as we move upslope, potentially we'll be seeing more intact framework systems and hopefully um, a lot of beautiful live corals having a good time. Looks like we got some sponges up here too, possibly, yeah. at two. And then some sort of red yeah, organism at the base of that coral. Not Could sure. Could be a strawberry is. coral, anthemastus. I mm -hmm. can't really tell from this far away, no. but <laughs> based on the color. Come on in. Yeah, anthemastus, I guess, possibly. It could be a zoanthid, though. So anthemastus has its polyps like on a little ball on a stick, it's and it can pull them ball. in and put them out um, versus a zoanthid, which is more of a colonial um, system of, right. of polyps. In a little. So not to discount the sponge on the lower of course, the right hand <laughs> side <laughs> for Shirley. And Scott is also yeah. mentioning that that matty gelatinous material that we're looking at is, could also be some old mucus from any sort of mollusk or worm okay. or seranthid. Hold fast. An enemy that possibly there. just got caught in within the sediment, so um, could more. be really interesting. Maybe at some point Coming if we down. see it to take a sample, but we'll um, be trying to move along here. Um, and this white coral is bamboo coral. And that sponge that we were seeing, um, that's just out of frame now, um, Shirley Pomponi is saying that there are several white plated the sponges along the fridges, and we'll start to see those um, possibly more frequently as we also get to the more dense framework systems. And then we also have a Nephthia, the soft coral down at 6 o'clock at the uh, base I of I think this. they're just trying to get a general idea on these, and then we'll move on, unless you want a tight shot on something. And just to correct myself from um, Scott Franz also chimed in, the, the fact Great. that it's older mucus means nice. that it's likely just um, been sitting around and abandoned by the host whoever made it in order to feed and capture sediments. Sorry, Scott. We uh, um, He asked if we could zoom in on the white coral, but we've already moved forward, so we, we can missed it. Right I'm here sorry. Still, we can still get it you if you want. You want to get back in there? If he needs a tighter look. Okay, we're going in. We are headed back to it. There's a larger also sponge in the top hand corner that we'll pan back to when we're um, done getting a tight shot of the coral. Yes, please. Yeah. Bring it in view here. Scott, oh Scott, I didn't know Swiftia came in white. I thought that they were like a red and an orange color. Must okay. be it's not Exerta, then tight. it must be a different species. If you th if you think this is um, Swiftia. Look how cool. The polyps look so happy. Oh we've got a little hanger on oh. here too. It looks like I got a little cup coral or anemone attached to it. Flexurity, we think it's flexurity, Scott, thank you. Yeah. Um, so it's a type of gorgonian or soft coral, octocoral. And the little trout hang on specimen is a ring anemone. Ring anemone, cool. By Scott France. Are you getting uh, the right views on this coral? Is there something else you guys need to see? Scott, do you need this from a different angle or are you good? No, definitely not a bamboo coral. And it looks like we're all good. Thank we're you. We're good, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I think they're good here, yeah. <laughs> it looks like the anemone. Do, do these anemones live um, 
on these corals for a long time. It looks like it has destroyed the tissue around the, the wind's blowing around now. the stalk. Okay. Yeah, they're oh permanent inhabitants. Okay, well that makes sense because the, the tissue looked all kind of beat up and kind of growing past its. Do foot. they? Do they also grow on dead coral that maybe the framework is still standing, or do they die along when the coral also dies? There's that large sponge you guys were looking at. Take a scan at it. So, hesectinellids, uh, maybe axonellid fan this is what we're looking here. So, this is a sponge, this fan that we're looking at. You guys need a tighter look? Uh, yeah, you can zoom in on that. Okay, come on in, video. Oh, he said he didn't recall seeing those ring anemones on anything dead, so they must be specifically on living, or so for that we know of so far, right? Yep, Ficalia, that's what I was going to guess too, Shirley. So this is an elephant yeah, ear when sponge. You're ready, you can come in. If you zoom in, you can actually see it looks veiny. Thanks. Um, which is why they call it an elephant ear, right? So it's like a like an elephant's ear, right? It's pretty yeah. neat. And it catches the water. They're pretty cool, and they're pretty stationary, meaning they don't really seem to flow or or catch anything. They pretty much are resistant to the current speeds up to a certain point. Or I would think so. I, I have never really seen them blown around too much. I mean, Shirley might she has a little more experience with that, but if she's seen them. Yeah, and she says that the veining is caused by clusters of silica spicules. Um, so they're actually very strong. Mm -hmm. Sure. The tilt is uh, hard to... Right, they tend to face the current, which is why they're kind of yeah. grows in this like specific direction, oh, right? Cuppy way. Yeah. Yeah. And they got Ophia, an Ophioroid here, probably Ophiothrix with his spines. The camera's doing its own thing. Uh, he's pink and off the screen now, but ooh, what a nice tight shot. Yeah. You can see the texture. And then some zoanthids yeah. growing, maybe at the top, attaching themselves, taking advantage of that high place. It might just be spicules picking oh, up dirt. Well, oh, yeah, look at that. There's tiny somebody there. One right at the top. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. Looks really cool. Do they come in different colors or? I've only ever seen them in white. Uh, maybe this like, you know, tanny off, off white. And that's about it. All right. Off we go. So Scott Francis chimed in in the chat room, going back to that ring anemone that we saw on the primnoid octocoral earlier. He says from Okana et al. in 2004, right, a quote, um, the during the last here, two decades, so several species of the ring anemones have been recorded going. in different areas Another of the Pacific 30. Ocean, from the Japan mm -hmm. to New Zealand, on different bottoms okay, and depths ranging from 30 sure to 1,500 it. meters. Really These ring mean. sea anemones are remarkable because of their particular attachment to Gorgonian species. They show a high degree of morphological transformation, resulting in considerable differentiation between the petal disc system and the rest of the body. The ring attachment is unknown in any other actinids uh, um, that live in the epibionts and That's anthozoans, such as Hormathidae, correct me if I'm saying that wrong, yep. Hormathidae. Mm -hmm. And in addition, the RSA Curious may be parasites of their own octocoral hosts. So that is really interesting information. Thanks, Scott. Oh, we definitely have a bamboo coral here. Yeah. You see Look the at those nice the rings bottom. at its base. Yeah. Missing some flesh at the bottom. One of the most first more robust <laughs> co live corals that we're seeing on this dive. Yay. Maybe People I'm on shore are quite happy one. about that. Mm -hmm. You can get one started. Yeah, out there a ways, right? Zoom if we have time. Uh, yep. Yeah, we can get one started. 
20 meter. And as you can see, by using yeah, the lasers, good. we can actually really tell how large actually this colony is. And the, te the, the two dots of the lasers are 10 centimeters apart. So we're looking at uh, probably a, a coral that's at least right 50 now. centimeters tall. I'd like to request uh, a move, range 20 meters, can come a little bearing 060 kind of degrees, next to him, a little sea speed urchin. decimal two knots. Okay, that's 20 meters, bearing and another Gregonian in the back there. from Noah of some kind. Good copy, thank you. There's a yellow one too, white and yellow. Beautiful polyps. Again, mostly facing um, a unidirectional system. But what almost looks like, if we look at from the serious view of where the current is actually facing, um, it seems to be almost like swirly, but coming from more from coming the left to the right system. So it's interesting. Maybe the current changes in this area at a specific time, but the coral polyps seem to almost be facing away from the current. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe the current does change at a certain point of time. Uh, we do know that within this region, there are some bi-directional currents that occur um, in such as like regular it's tidal currents that you would see in the shallow depths. Those do occur in the deeper depths. So maybe the coral is getting food at different times of the day. Um, I don't see the happy polyps all out. So maybe that's part of it, that they're facing away. They don't want to expend energy. So yeah, um, Scott, right if you have now, a phone, so if you have a phone access, can you call in and explain what internodes means? Um, that's part of the identification. Uh, so he's thinking echinomosis for the genus of this coral. Okay. Um, if Scott's around to call in, that would be awesome. We it's can see the thick. tissue doesn't go all the way down to the base. Yeah. But it is a very robust skeletal system. Oh, he's dialing in now so we can get some more detail on this guy. This is a pretty big uh, bamboo coral. I've never yeah. seen one this large before. You can see the base is quite robust. And the tissue stops, right? I don't think yeah. that that's uncommon, though. I've seen that before. It looks like there was another branch apparently trying to go before the tissue either died off in this area or potentially was eaten off by something, another predator. Does look like a There we go. Scott, are you Hi, on the line? Oh, Hi. Hi, Scott. Hi, Steph, I can. Sorry. Um, preparing lectures, the dangers of having a job on shore here. I know. <laughs> so we're looking at this uh, beautiful bamboo coral. The uh, close-up that I'm seeing right now, I can see below the pink tissue with all the polyps, I see a white skeleton, and then there's a black line in there. Mm -hmm. That black stuff is the protein, and most of the other corals, the sea fans that we were seeing earlier, we said, look, you know, flexor, okay. flexifia, those have a protein-based skeleton. The bamboo corals are unusual because the protein bands are uh, interspersed with calcium carbonate, uh, basically a chalk rock-like skeleton, uh, the same sort of thing that stony corals are made of. So when we talk about nodes and internodes, what we mean is where the brown uh, or black protein is, and an internode is the white skeletal part. And so we uh, can distinguish some species of uh, bamboos and some genera based on where do the branches arise. So on this one, the genus Echnomyces and the genus Caratomyces, uh, the branches actually already. come out of that internodal part okay. of the skeleton. Yeah, so right. the, the calcium carbonate is actually splitting. And then we'll see other bamboo corals where the branches are arising from the black protein part. Those are called nodal branches. Okay. Then there's How's other that aspects down? that we look at. We're, um, we're about five the, meters Are all the branches complete. coming out in one plane, or okay. are they coming out to that form a bush be. versus a fan, for example? Or maybe they're unbranched, uh, yeah. or maybe they grow Copy, in bramble. So lots of characters like that. Yeah, and then we ultimately, we have to look at the level, microscopic level of more, the polyp, like meters. or key characteristics in there to identify the species. So um, good find. Awesome. Wow, thanks, Scott. And one more question. Based off this acidity, um, coral, do we know for Bridge sure if, it's, if this species is known to produce an aragonite skeleton uh, like or a high magnesium calcite range skeleton? Range 20 meters, bearing 0, yeah, 6, 0 degrees, uh, these are speed decimal 2 uh, knots. I forget this now. Yeah, Which one did the, sclera the sclerotinians do? Aragonite. Good copy, thank you. Yeah, so these are calcite. It's, uh, it's a bit of a surprise. 
Interesting. So we're seeing that, um, and this is another note to say, on previous dives in the Pacific, we saw that some of these skeletons um, were still forming deep down into the ocean, and that's because even though they were below the aragonite saturation horizon that the ocean does um, have at certain levels, we saw coral skeletons forming below that, and we were interested to find out that some of them are producing high mag calcite, which in turn has a slightly deeper uh, level where normally the skeleton cannot produce so it's always good to keep in mind on what kind of mineralogy the skeleton is composed of. Absolutely, and uh, we know these bamboos get really deep, and uh, I'll be happy to send you a paper that talks a lot more about the mineralogy of these bamboo coral skeletons. Ah, I would love that. Thank you, Scott. Okay, getting out ahead a little. And thank you for chiming in. We really appreciate that. And um, Chuck Messing has just come online onto the chat room, and he says that mucus um, that we've been seeing around the base of the bamboo coral and also seen earlier um, all take the form of flattened-looking funnels and open at one end or tapering on narrow um, at the opposite ends. And it's um, characteristic shape that we've seen on dives Gosh. over this region um, but we never really see where it's from or who it's by or even something maybe living inside. Want. So um, we'll definitely keep an eye out if we yeah. end up seeing it so to something that is quite attached. Yeah, we're going to need a zoom on this sponge here. Ooh. Definitely. Uh, we, de we have a small bamboo coral on the, on the left. We have a, another gorgonian in the center, and then this white... These white balls, balls. Um, on, on stalks are definitely a sponge. I'm waiting on Chris and Shirley to chime in and tell me if they know what it is. <laughs> Looks like something out of Dr. Seuss land. All right. It's pretty cool. I mean. Yeah, it might be sent a gallon nook, but I need to just double check on that. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll add it to the, the chat. Okay. To the log. Okay. So is this a hexaxonellid, Shirley? Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So this is a type of glass sponge. It's pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, there's a little baby squat lobster or something living in the I wonder if load. it's all attaching to a single base and protruding outwards, or if they're all just kind of... Like individual lollipops. Yeah. Right? I'm not really sure. That's a really good way to describe it. And then mm -hmm. we have something growing right in the middle of them. Um, something, if we can get an even tighter zoom, so uh, right in between closer. the coral. Okay. It the might be anthomastus. Yeah, I can try to sneak that in. That might be yeah. a um, on, strawberry a coral in there. For me. See if I yes. Yeah, as this I is get tiny. Closer, you can see I'm how yeah. small the these, here. these bulbs see actually are. Yeah. Get in closer and get the. Still get the critter. I took my eyes away for a moment, but I did notice. I think some zoanthids tucked under there. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah we thought maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. I thought maybe anthomastus, but it might be. So trying to get a a closer zoom there. Uh, give me one second. There's a nice bamboo car. It looks like it's mostly yeah, okay. dead. Come on in. On the side. Yeah, yeah, I do see Can some pups on the uh, far left. A bunch of little cup so Still things. hanging on. Oh, yeah. And there seems to be a little organism growing inside the, the little glass sponge there. Not yeah. sure what he is, but it looks yeah, like, those, yeah, that's good. Good twice. Yep. But this, um, who is it, Scott? Is that who was talking? Is that a zoanthid? Yeah, that's Scott here. Uh, it looks like he's got a base here. Could that be a strawberry coral? See that there's like a foot to the mm, left. Small one. Yeah, I'm seeing. I'm seeing a brittle star. I'm not sure the coral that you're. Oh, to. okay. So. It's oh, I'm sorry. In within the glass sponge. Yeah, in between the lollipops, there's there's a looks like a oh, small I pink. That bridge was the um, yeah, I can't tell from this view if that you. is. Uh, zoanthid, or if that's a little soft coral. Mm -hmm. It actually looks like a little soft coral. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been seeing these sea fans that have an internal uh, axial skeleton made of protein, or as we just described, the bamboos, okay. internodes. Um, yeah. But soft corals basically use uh, water as their skeleton. They have mm -hmm. a hydrostatic skeleton, mm -hmm. much like anemones. And so I think that's what that is tucked in there. Ooh, Interesting. Awesome. And if you saw um, okay. by one of the right. coral <laughs> branches there, we had a little um, forum that was hanging out there on one of the branches. Um, but that was great. I think that may have been a little amphipod that amphipod, was peeking out amphipod. of the uh, sponge. Oh, oh okay. in, the, in the in sponge. The sponge. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
It looked like it had two little eyes. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Thank you, pilot. Yeah, go ahead. The sponges not only are just spectacular in their architecture and their beauty, but they're home to lots of other invertebrates. Mm -hmm. There are all kinds of things that like to live associated with sponges. Mm -hmm. So sponges, to me, just like the corals, are really important members of the community, much like, you know, the trees of the forest. You get a lot of different trees. You get a lot of different birds and Go squirrels ahead, and Steve. insects that live associated with them. So sponges are serving that role in these communities. Exactly. Uh, Shirley said Sim Simpagella nux for those lollipops we saw. Oh, interesting. And Shirley, is that a one clump or is it a bunch just living? Is it one one animal or is it a, a bunch living together? It, it could be both. There could be a few that are clustered and attached together at the bottom, and then there could be some that are individual. It occurs both ways. Okay. Thank you. And thank you, Scott, for chiming in there. Here we're back to that um, more coral skeleton graveyard, but we are seeing some light dusting of these sediments, um, more patchy rather than that overall large blanket that we were seeing earlier of like more um, coral framework systems still somewhat intact, leaving some um, open patches for the sediments to possibly drift down or collect. So we'll see hopefully further out in, in more dives for this cruise that we'll be seeing how these sediments and coral frameworks interact together to potentially form these large coral mounds that um, were recently um, discovered on the bathymetry map. And here if we see on the slab there was a crinoid that we passed, a stocked crinoid. Um, and we're... Moving on up, and as you can see, for the geology, is starting to really change around here. We're seeing these larger slabs, and up ahead, we're starting to see these really nodular, um, really encrusting, kind of um, eroded um, karst features that either are bioeroded or this is how they were formed. And it almost looks like it's forming into a tunnel system that's there, the entrance of something um, that looks, well, Something I wouldn't want to go into. <laughs> Somebody's home, maybe. Yes. We got standing dead coral here, too, it looks like. All around. These framework yeah. structures are staying more intact in this area. And we can see the biology that's taking move, advantage yeah. of this entire feature here. 20? Uh, yeah, he's about 20 meters from yeah, me. Lots so of that, that be gorgonians fine. growing on the top, it looks like. There's possibly a sponge Chrys under there. Chrysogorgia mm -hmm. back there. Bridge ROV nav. Go ahead, Nav. Uh, I'd like to request His a move to have range a bit 20 too. Zero meters, bearing degrees. zero six zero yeah. degrees, yeah. speed decimal two knots. Yeah, it's two zero meters, bearing zero six zero, speed decimal two knots. Good copy, thank you. But as we're going up slope, you can slowly start to see the overall morphology change in this feature, and hopefully uh, we'll see more of these karst features all along the crest, and if they if they weren't um, biologically created, the, that um, sort of ridge crest feature by the biology, it's likely that there are these protruding karst features that then the biology is taking advantage of. We're going to continue up slope here. It looks like we've got an increase in standing dead coral, possibly some hexactinellids above us uh, at noon, which are glass sponges. Another one of these um, uh, sea urchins. If we can take a look at these two tubes here at noon, that would be good. Yep. Sure thing. Let's have a cool web in their uh, 
mouths. <laughs> if you have the opportunity after the sponges, just going off the left, uh, excuse me, the right side of the screen, there's a couple of uh, whip-like things, and one of them has a bulge about okay. 10 centimeters down from the top. I'm curious what that is. Okay, we'll swing there next. Um, video. This is the wedding sponge. <clears throat> Heterotella. So these usually have a mated pair of crustaceans that live inside each one which is and they um, actually give these away as wedding gifts in Japan I think that's why it's called the wedding sponge A pair of shrimp right the two shrimp inside and they live there their whole lives it's, it's a type of glass sponge there's a crinoid on it And I think also just behind behind it to the right, there's another of those soft corals we saw tucked in among those lollipop sponges before, and this time the polyps are extended. Um, it's slightly pink in color. To the right, okay. Information that there is a soft coral here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see him right there. And then, Scott, you said there was something you wanted to see to the right? Yeah, but before we do, I think also that's a carnivorous sponge, that little comb-like or feather-like uh, thing just oh, no, to the yeah. right of the lobster claws, the, the uh, squat lobster claws. Oh, I missed him. Um, but what I saw, yeah, was a little bit further distant. Further away. Oh, so and we have live lophelia, I think, possibly. Um, but yeah, if you want to back out and then you said to the right, correct? Oh, here. Now, bridge will I see, yep. I see the, the bold. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, so there's a single it. stalk with something hanging on to it. Okay, but yeah, you can come in a little bit. Is that what you were looking at, this little hanger on here? I'm okay. wondering, is that a snail, maybe, that's uh, climbing up? I can't tell if that's a sponge stock or a coral stock at this distance. Yeah. A cowrie, maybe? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Looks like you have another one of these ring anemones, too, here on the on the smaller white yeah. gorgonium. Yeah. So, yeah, this white one may be the same that we saw before that was mm -hmm. branched. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've got to go and look those up. I should be able to identify those better than just plexorid. And we have Madripoora here. It looks like it's fallen over a little bit behind in the background. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can try. And then, guys, when you're when you're ready, if you can pull back. Um, wow, well, we've got lots of rippling. Yeah, Does we that just, mean we've got fresh water, maybe? Well, or a change Somewhere in temperature. Somewhere? Either a change in temperature or a change in salinity, yeah. That's just something. See the rippling? Yeah, it looks... Like um, Pilot said, probably a change either in temperature or salinity, a, a different um, current system coming through. It can form all of those kind of like shear, um, what, what is it called? Uh, sheary um, Schlieren, effect? I think, is the name for the effect. Okay. So just okay. as a note, this is so we're looking at a snail, and it's on the stock of, I'm not sure if this is an old crinoid mm -hmm. or sponge or what, but they stock itself has been overgrown by hydrozoans, mm -hmm. those tiny little skinny polyps. And that uh, snail, I'm not sure if it's feeding on the hydrozoan polyps or on bacteria mm -hmm. or something else that's growing on that. And there was something else. And um, there's, one different see. Kind. there's a bramble-like bamboo up there as well. That's great to see. Right. That's that one that's very thin branches. I think um, I think we have... Watch it, I forgot the other request. Sorry. Um, we have a live white coral behind the heterotella sponge on the left oh, at okay. about 9 o'clock. I think that might be our first live lophelia, but I need to get in a little closer to see. Okay. So looking at the ROV CTDs here out on the ship, and then looking at the um, regular updates of the metadata in the chat room, it looks like the temperature changed about a half degree, uh, which is not too dramatic, uh, half degree Celsius, I should say, which is not too dramatic. So there could have been a, a temperature change, or it could have, could have also been um, 
a different a different water mass. I mean, you, you know, these carbonate features can be very porous, so that could have been it as well. It, it does look like we had a change in the dissolved oxygen, uh, so that could also be some different water masses, either just sitting here or uh, coming out of uh, the seafloor. Okay, Vida, you can start in. Thanks, Mike. Here we are zooming in. Is it our first Lophelia? It's definitely Lophelia. Yeah. Um, it looks like it might even have living polyps on it. So, looking for might be our first living scleractinian, which is a true coral. Very promising. And maybe a black coral just behind it. Oh, you're right. Yeah, grow on out right now. Feathery like. Mm -hmm. So you, can, uh, you can see polyps. polyps, awesome. So right at the tip on the one at three at um, noon, you can see distinct polyps. It's feeding appendages. Uh, yeah, so we've got living Lophelia. Yeah, and apologies for crashing your Lophelia party. That is not a black coral. I take that back. <laughs> <laughs> that is not an octocoral. Octocoral, right. We also have a yellow hydroid, it looks like. Yeah. And if we want to scale right to the left, um, I saw something on that other, well, feathery looking um, thing up uh, yeah, up on top a little bit. Yeah, and it looked it. like there was even an egg sac or something involved on that right there. Oh, maybe it's not an egg sac. Maybe it's a, another kind of anemone or soft coral. Oh, this guy. That yeah. That is anthemastis with its polyps pulled in. Ah, okay. So that's what it looks like. That's that what way. that looks like. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure what this white Gorgonian is that it's sitting on. It's got really weird polyps. They're almost flat, yeah, from what I can tell. Crinoids yeah. on them. So and they're very glassy. I, I, sorry, Steph. I don't think that's anthemastis. I think that's another uh, soft coral. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anthemastis growing on a scale like that. I mean, it's a good guess because it has the same basic morphology and it's mm -hmm. done the same basic thing. Um, but you can also see soft coral around it just to its uh, left. Okay. okay. Around video. Sorry. That's a good call. Maybe Anthemastis is behind yeah. it or that other soft coral. Yeah, you coral. think that's a soft okay, coral. Okay, that's yeah. all soft coral. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we have some crinoids. Although, yeah, that Gorgonian is interesting. Um, yeah, it's like they're the polyps are like feathery almost. Yeah, I don't know what that leafy. is. Any idea, Scott? Um, there's a bryozoan is the white thing. If that's oh, the that's okay. why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I understand. Yeah, so you've got, it's a really nice display here. You've got on the far left, the feathery things are hydrozoans. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, that's kind of nightmare. And then as we go towards center behind the pink blob, you have large octocoral polyps. And then the white thing is a bryozoan, uh, which is a, a completely different phylum, phylum mm -hmm. bryozoa. But they're all sort of feeding in the same way. They're getting their food out of the water column. So they've all evolved strategies to essentially get some kind of net-like structure up into the water column mm -hmm. to intercept them. Um, exactly. The difference with okay. the bryozoan there, those little, uh, what's called a loaf of four, it's like a horseshoe-shaped ring of tentacles, is those tentacles are ciliated, so they generate their own current, much like a sponge. Nice. Where oh, wow. And the hydro is the more passive things have to hit them. Time for a move. Okay. Uh, double check. So if they generate yeah, their own so. current, they don't necessarily have to be, say, the highest creature or anything to, maybe they use the current yeah. to be more optimal, but they don't sure. really need it? Um, well, I mean, they can only generate enough force that they're moving the water very close to them, so they do need to ultimately be in moving water so that um, the water around them is... Bridge are over you Otherwise, yeah, I would agree with you that they don't need to extend up as high as... Um, I'd like to request uh, to move range 20 oh, wow, meters, okay. Thank you. bearing 0, 060 0 degrees, speed decimal 2 knots. Good copy. Thank you. You got it. We're moving further up slope. We're not too far from the ridge crest here. 
and as we're um, going by, you can well, start to see the that there's more and more alive um, biology in the area. Yeah, it looks like we have more white lophelia patches and some standing dead coral on the upper right. And pilots, how far from the top of this ridge do you think we are? We're pretty close. I don't know if you can hear me. How far from the top of the ridge do you think we are, guys? It's about 85 meters. Okay. About 85 meters. Okay. We still got a little bit to go. We can see here already a large framework system. Um, sadly, most of it, about 90% of it is all dead. Mm -hmm. But um, we can see now that getting closer and closer to that ridge, we're seeing more intact framework systems that are holding on to the, on to the, to the ledges in these regions. And we can even see the sediments starting to accumulate within and around it, which goes back to what I was referring to earlier about potentially having um, the morphologies of mound-like features or small ridges where the sediments collect within the framework system and start to grow over all these large mound features that potentially we might be seeing in future dives for this expedition. If you guys can pan up, it looks like there might be a lot of white ahead of us on top. I don't know if I'm seeing sand or living coral up there. Yeah, we're headed there next. Okay. Um, and John, if you if we have the time to slow down and take a peek at this um, standing dead coral, thought okay. maybe Inalapsamia or Lophelia, if we could get a good zoom in on it. We're going through a slight pilot change at the mm -hmm. moment, so um, we'll give them a minute to to get all settled in. So yeah, they wanted to see, I think up above there. Looks like we have a fish too. Okay, watch leads. Uh, can you hear me? This is pilot talking right now. Yes, we can hear we you. We can hear you. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's turn on the lasers on. There you go. So if you see the lasers, um, what subject are you interested in? Um, we wanted to zoom in on this standing dead coral just to identify the species it might be. Just yeah, real quick. just a slight right to the right where kind of the, the, the echinoderm is and just to kind of get a, a brief glimpse of what it looks like on the, the framework system. So am I pointing in the, the right direction? Right yes. yes. Okay. That bridge will complete. Yeah, this clump of Copy, dead thank coral. You. Nav, uh, we need to move another 10 degrees to starboard to a zero two zero. Confirm that. Good to so go. So, John, if you want to chime in and explain how you tell the difference between Lophelia and Elapsamia, that would be appreciated okay. for me. Um. <laughs> I never tell. Let's come in slightly, video. Nice standing dead coral. is a big chunk here. Then right there, hold. It's pretty old. Okay, let's see sheep. Okay, watch lead. Um, yes, go ahead. Do you want to see the coral? The coral that's... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're fine. What do you think, John? Lophelia? Let's zoom in right there, video. Yes, Lophelia. Wait, hold it, hold it. 
Yes, yeah, so this is just dead lophelia. We got a nice standing now, which means there's hopefully some living close by. Mm. We have that same poisonous um, urchin. Looks like there's a shrimp ant living on them, though, I think I saw. And we have then like a golden yellow mm -hmm. ophioid mm -hmm. hiding in the background there. Probably Ophiothrix. That's got those long spindles, spines. So we see some okay, wide mouth. Um, both slightly, species yeah. of Lophelia and Elapsamia further there south are 100% in Elapsamia, is what John's Ooh. telling me on the chat room. And I am blanking on this Econoderm name, if anyone out there knows it and remembers it. There, there seems to be some sort of um, organism right next to him on the lower left-hand side. A little pink thing. Um, like a slug or cucumber of some sorts that has almost branching things on top of him. If we can get a close up on him, uh, we're I think we're passing him. And there's an eel here or something, some fish. See his head? Oh yeah. Almost looks like a snake. The bottom of there, they're moving up to the. Okay, let me get closer. What ladies? Here. Was that Chris I heard? Yeah, center, yeah six o'clock. Uh, the uh, yellow, six massive, might be a sponge. Yeah, this yellow right here at like yeah. six or seven. Yeah. 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 Can we get sponge. a zoom in on that um, pink, right where the laser is over right now? Um, that looking squishy organism that's there? Oh, maybe. it looks like a holothurian, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, right there. So I keep on. Drifting back. Now he's at noon. I mean, uh, dead center. Yep. Uh, let me see. Mm. Areosoma. That's it. The pancake urchin. Thank you. Who's that, John? Thanks, John. Areosoma. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Let's come in with you. Right there. Hold. I think they were okay. This guy. Gonna turn a That's little him. bit, and then let's focus yeah, see the on flat. the yellow ah. subject right here. I think that's what. Yeah. They see, here's this pink at. guy here. Yeah. yeah, it might be a nudibranch. It's on the left. Sea slug. Sponge. A kinoderm. On the left of your screen right now. Yep. We should play guess the file. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> the pink one. Mm -hmm. The pink. Yeah, yeah the pink one there. The zero zero. Copy that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Very well disguised. That center right there, video. Uh, and I think I'm stable. Really so cool if you branching, polyp-looking things on his on his yeah. back, and the heading change has been completed. Yeah, there are a number okay. of um, of mollusks, uh, gastropods in this group that have secondary gills, mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember them being distributed so far over the body. Um, I tend to think of them as being more at the posterior end, but. Right, like the nudibranchs, uh, right? Frozen, so come back, yeah. yeah, and it seems to almost have like um, those front two, I don't want to say antenna-like things, but um, those look different than the rest and not sure what those could be, sensory or yeah, whatnot. Well, I think that was a good guess, antenna-like things. They do have a sensory antenna and rhinophores that um, sense motion and sense uh, chemical signature in the water. So I'm I'm quite certain this is a gastropod now that I've got a better view. Is there any interest in, in collecting him? Do you think he would be a new species? Uh, or? I'm sure there'd be somebody who would be very interested. Oops, I, sorry, I just I'm don't know enough back. about them to know. To you know, commit to that. Yeah. Okay. okay. It, it looks slightly. like a disguised soft coral. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Trying to hold this right here. You know, that's kind of fascinating. I don't know that that would be of any use at this depth, but maybe it's related to something in shallower water where... Um, that's a good defense mechanism. Maybe. Not sure. Do we have any interest on shore to um, collect this uh, specimen? Shirley says suck it up, but <laughs> 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 I'm not sure if, if that's um, something we really want. Yeah, 
getting to the top is a priority. This might take a little while. Yeah, um, I think right now we'll we'll keep moving on. Okay, let's come out, Lydia. That's like sponge, I think. Yeah, on the top of that. Looks and then anything else right here in frame, unstable, I can zoom in on mm -hmm. other subjects. Um, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just lift off and, and keep going. And if you're here, uh, just get a, a close-up view of the fish head. Even the fish head. Oh, the fish right. head. Looking at the red there. Yeah, okay, so let's down. go just in. About video. Six, let's uh, seven look at the from fish head just really quickly. Yeah. Almost in the center of the screen. There he is. All right, you can come in a little bit. It looks interesting. Want. Are these one of those cutthroat eels there that we've right been there. seeing, or is this something different? Yeah, it probably Guilty is, and I should slowly. know my fish by now. <laughs> but I'm glad okay. a fish person tell you. Mm. Yeah, well, definitely interesting. The The snout looks a little different than what we've been seeing, but I, I'm not a fish person. I can't tell. I just know when they taste good. <laughs> All Thank right. you very much. I think we can move on now. We can come out video. Looks quite interesting. All right, lifting off. Copy. Do we? Is the weather holding up okay? Okay. Yeah, we're yeah. we're wind's been. From our map, wind's been trending down. Looks like a little bit more li living low speed. Lofilia. It is right at 20 knots, which is a lot. But oh, and there's a big crinoid. Downward, so. Okay, turning Slope's to increasing my a bit. port on oh, starboard side. There you go. Line it looks up. like a coral that's been recently so chopped up. up. Different kind of sea urchin, I think. That oh, was. yeah, pencil urchin. Look like, yeah, here's some more white living coral and maybe yeah. Ficalia again, a sponge, both an ear sponge with some standing dead. Uh, more standing dead coral is over here. More of this framework system that's holding. Mm -hmm. Another area soma. More echinoderms. Looks like we're almost at the top of this ridge, maybe. Yep. We're getting there. I sure hope there's some living Lophelia up here. That's very uh, mean of <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, the universe, right? They're putting all this dead coral here and no living Lophelia. Where is it? It's got to be here somewhere. And if we're looking at overall the morphology that's here, you can kind of see that there are almost wave-like features happening between the coarser dead corals and those lighter sands underneath. And that could What's be also a good indication of, of downslope currents yeah. coming over it to oh, create some, these um, small wave or ripple-like features with the coarser material, pushing it in kind of a sinusoidal pattern down slope as we go before maybe it gets caught in a larger like framework a system right or there, um, a spontaneous uh, framework uh, system that decided to, to grow mm -hmm. just right there. But we can start to see like there it's are like some down. kind of um, yeah, perpendicular like lines that go are that are parallel to each other, excuse me, but are per um, perpendicular to going down slope that are there. Actually, I don't know. So these are all things that we like to yeah. keep an eye on yeah, as um, also as far as the geology goes of how the current system does the impact system. the overall morphology of the system in itself. I think once we get here, we turn south and... Okay, okay. we'll just push out. So Chris Diaz says 20. the um, fan sponge we yeah, saw think, earlier was yeah, probably Ficalia yeah, connexiva. connexiva. Bridge ROV nav. Go ahead now. I'd like to request to move range two zero meters, bearing zero six zero degrees, speed decimal two knots. 
Good. So two zero meters, bearing zero six zero, speed decimal two. Oh, knots. we got something there. Good yeah. copy. Six. Thank you. Probably ophiroid, maybe. Looks like it. More interested in that slight yellow little pop <laughs> there, right to the to the left of this guy. It's almost indiscernible. Yeah, you can hardly see that. Just goes again to show that within a seemingly dead graveyard, you mm -hmm. still have a lot of life. Yeah. It's oh, and then there's some yeah, some kind of hydroid or something. What is happening here? Is this a crinoid? Oh yeah, that ophiroid is in fact a crinoid. Our eyes have deceived us. You see that yellow? What is this yellow we're here? See yeah. it dead center? Maybe sponge bit? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Like how it could be sponge bit. That star okay. is like a center disc though, doesn't it? Teeny tiny sponge bit. With a whole bunch of hydrozoans growing around the dead corals. And as you can see, this black encrusting that you see on the coral rubble then itself, that's a ferromanganese crusting that um, occurs when there is uh, the current system, the saturation levels in the current system interact with the overall geology and the skeletal structures of the systems. And they create this cro coating on the skeletal systems that um, turn them essentially black because um, it involves a lot of iron and manganese um, that are on this end. For right. sampling, it's actually quite, um, it's interesting to see, but it is actually um, quite detrimental to when we're trying to sample things and age date some of these coral fragments or whatnot. Um, it's all coatings that have to be removed because these do in fact um, uh, destroy some of the sample that's actually inside that where we actually want to get to see. So. When we see this, it's interesting, but on the lab side, not so much. Hi. Hi. We um, get a close-up of this um, yellowish material that you thought might be a sponge bed. Oh, we did already. Did you, are, are you guys on a delay? Sponge bed. Very abundant. Yeah, we already passed that. Um, did you, are you guys on a delay? Yes. No, for, no, for the next one. Oh, can, okay. Uh, you see it again, or yeah. it continues to be abundant, it will be interesting to look uh, closely. Okay, no problem. We almost close to the top of this ridge here. I see another air, couple area somas. These uh, uh, pancake, pancake urchins, uh, they're very toxic. Part of me is hoping we don't have to sample one. Oh my gosh, we're not picking <laughs> that up, forget it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Only if there's a really high intensity request. <laughs> Otherwise, we prefer to keep our fingers. Yes, unburnt. <laughs> There's a lot of them, though. I see four just in this, this shot. And I can see where we might be coming up slowly on this ridge, and there's a lot of dense framework in this system, partially rubble, partially um, still intact. Um, we're starting to see more and more biology as we approach. And also um, skeletal structures that have not yet been um, to encrusted by that manganese um, encrusting material. Pilots, can you confirm if we are at the ridge or if we're um, almost there? Just like up to here. It's about 75 meters. So, the, yeah, so, so you can see how the... Um, okay, yeah, thank we're you. definitely starting to get to the yeah, flat part. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. 
I mean, like, it's 75 meters to the, the middle of the, the flat part, so we probably are already at the top of the, the, the ridge. Then, if, I don't know if you're looking at high pack right now, watch lead? Yes. Okay, so, like, all of this, uh, the reddish part, it's probably the same height. We'll probably turn pretty soon to the west, I mean, to the, the east, east, or southeast, southeast and so then that right, uh, right. we'll keep going up. We're going to shoot okay. for this bright red area you see on high pack? Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. Oh, right can there. we go back to the to the left? There was some, like, red organism or something there, some sort of crustacean. I don't know if that's of interest, but it just caught my eye in the middle of this. Um, yeah, right there. Oh, like that little fish right there? Is that a fish? I can't tell. I think so. Might be a black belly rose fish from this distance. Yeah. They're pretty common on the Lophelia reefs. So. Okay. Um, I'm hoping for some good reef out here somewhere. Mike Galoli, maybe he's an indicator. Mm -hmm. He looks quite happy sitting in his little so sand patch. With some coral sprouting around. Mm -hmm. Thank you, pilot. Looks kind of grumpy. Yeah. It's going right there, baby. Maybe because he hasn't. He's not on a olophilia reef. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty cool. Now all these corals around these yeah, are these acidities or are these chrysogorgids or um, uh, primnoid uh, maybe? High and move maybe. On, or if they just want us to beeline to this bright pink. Uh, either way is fine for yeah, us. Yeah, they kind of look Checking like uh, primnoids oh, to me, all these men. The maybe, maybe Caligorgia, which is a pretty common primnoid. Okay, uh, thank you, Scott. And it looks like this guy almost has like a little parasite on they the corner of his me. mouth there. But definitely a grumpy face. With some ophiroids around, and this is actually a good shot for all the sand. Instead of going up here and then over, do you want us to make a line right over to the higher part? Okay, video, let me know. Thank you. What do you want? Do you want some into the head? Go do in you this direction. Yeah, right I would have for the... Just coordinating with nav. And as you can see, this is also a great I mean, zoom in for the sediment zoom in features. Have, but I can try it. Um, this is good. Don't worry. Thank you. Um, we can start to see that this is um, a lot of benthic okay. forams in this area. Um, if you could zoom in really quick over the more sandy patch. All right. um, there's a lot of um, material in these sand um, stuff, maybe composed of skeletal material that has since died off and become part of the sand. Um, there can be composed of broken up mollusk shells, uh, sponge spicules mm. is common, and, f and varieties of planktonic and benthic so foraminifera. All right. Thank About you very 115 much. 115 degrees. Okay. I'm at about 90 right now. Okay. Or 90. Uh, we can we can do. I'll keep coming around. I just don't want to leave him off the screen. So he'll have to come around. I'll finish Kay. my turn, and then we can Let's head come that up. way. What would you say, 115? Yeah, 115. Okay. Okay, pilot. Yep. The next maneuver, 115. Ooh, and we can see just from now, from where the RV accidentally uh, touched the floor, that there is a lot of fine-grained sediment within this area composed within that coarser grains that we're seeing. So that's just an indication, again, yeah, of how the current system is I'm like, what um, material is actually being Keeping transported by the current, go. and what Probably. it's actually being fixed within the coral rubble system. So this is all part of the evolution and general morphology of the seafloor that we're seeing, where how Settling the coral framework impacts it. Copy. All right, so I and think we're good. You can see a little bit of a slope to my left, so you can kind of keep your nose left as we go along for at first until we start to hit the slope. Sounds good. And 20 uh, meters. Just uh, keep you centered up. 
Sure. It's it's pretty flat for a while, right? You can do. Uh, you want to do thirty? Yeah. So he's stretched out. It's pretty flat. Can do thirty. Bridge R O V Nav. Go ahead, Nav. I'd like to request to move. Okay. Three zero meters, bearing one one five degrees. Speed decimal two knots. What is that white thing right on the left? Okay, that's three zero meters, bearing one one five. Speed decimal two knots. It looks kind Good of copy. like it doesn't belong. Come in, video. Are you talking about this? Uh, yes, it? exactly. Um, and trash, some sort of trash. Yeah, I, I think it is. Does look like some trash or oh, too too close. Yeah, I was gonna maybe hopefully say something skeletal, but it does look like some plastic or trash that ended up on the bottom. Thank you, pilot. Okay, let's come up. Yep. Yeah, and from the okay. chat room, we're agreeing that it's a piece of some sort of plastic plate They're or pretty far, so something. I'm um, gonna just come down and then let's take a look at this one while they catch up with us. Uh, let's come in on the white one first. We see right a there. shrimp then right on there. the right hand side and some corals there and, and possibly. Um, what looks like an anemone or a soft coral right above it, that brown one. Okay, let's come in. All right, hold right there. All right, let's come in a little bit more. I don't think there's much interest for this. Too far out there. It's this there. is a good look at the sea I'm fan that I was identifying as possibly in the genus Caligorgia, which would be a member of the Primnoidae the family, degrees. and the Primnoids are Perfect. very, very common and, uh, uh, deep sea back family of octocorals. And then I think you're right, Kim, right. I think that's a soft coral up behind it. And so it's an interesting contrast. They're both octocorals, so they both okay. are colonies that are made up of a series of polyps, look but the, the ones we're looking at now, the, the white one, right on top have this ready internal video. skeleton that's made of protein, and the one up above is much more Copy. fleshy and only uses Filting water up. to support the overall colony and all right. the branches. Ah. And actually release the water from its colony and so shrink down, kind of like on a right. bubble gum. Yep. And yet if you get a good look at the Copy. polyps, you'll see they still have these little calcareous sclerites in them, so they still have the spines and stuff that are okay. characteristic okay. of the corals, but just not... Um, an internal skeleton. Wow, that's great. So would it take more energy to precipitate part of these um, more mineral skeletal structures, or does it take more energy to actually hold in that water to keep it standing up straight, do you think? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know that okay. anyone's done explicit so experiment on down. that, but certainly it takes energy and material yeah, to obvious. deposit the skeleton. And then yeah, as the like colony when you grows larger, you can tighter, constantly like have to add to like You can really so notice. Grows, yeah, much like a tree really in that, some you know, there are rings formed as it ages, so it both has to extend the skeleton to get longer, but also make it thicker to support yeah, the base. Yes. This, really you don't need to, to invest the energy yeah, in that so kind of skeleton. But yeah, it does take energy, perhaps, to squeeze the water out when necessary. Um, but, okay. you know, that may not happen very often. Perhaps right, it's right being there. disturbed by some predator. I suspect, and you know, if we reached out with the, the claw and touched it, you could see it withdraw. Okay. Oh. I can up coral just next to it. So, nice view. Yep. And the major predators also to these soft corals would be those sea stars coming around? Yeah, you know, I've never actually seen a sea star feeding on a soft coral, so I'm not sure what All the right, major predators are. Closer, so uh, but there are also things like um, sea spiders will feed on all of these colonial cnidarians. Um, uh, there's something called an aplacophrin, which is okay. a worm-like mollusk that will feed directly on the know. polyps. Uh, right. We know that fish will bite off the tips sometimes, uh, some fish, of uh, some polyps. There are some jellyfish, actually, that will land and feed on polyps. 
Um, I just can't say specifically any of those on the soft corals. We haven't seen it. So if you do see any predation on a soft coral, yeah. that'll be a really interesting right. observation. Oh, okay, we'll definitely keep an out for, out for it. Thank you. Okay, watch lead. Um, Sirius just cut up with me, so we'll keep moving. Let me know if you see anything interesting. Sounds good, thank you, pilot. What have we got left in that move? We're 28 meters into a 30 meter move. You can, uh, we can do it same. Another 20, some yeah. Varieties Another 20? Of some isolated yeah. corals, um, possibly some crinoids and anemones or soft corals all along this area. Oh, I'm moving more of those pretty quickly because I saw you urchins. like a little bit closer. Yes. Are we nav bridge? Move Just complete. jumping really quickly, huh? Copy that. Thank you. Could um, I request another move? Point two. It's not yes, we're quick. ready. A range two zero meters yeah. bearing one one five degrees speed decimal two knots. Yeah, if we could zoom two in on that white meters, coral one that's one there possibly degrees, with the sponge. Right Good copy. Thank it. you. The white right in the one right in the middle? Yes. Okay. Let me get a little bit closer. Um, Looks to be some sort of stony coral, but I could be mistaken. Okay. Let's come in, with you. Yeah, hold right there. And it does. John, correct me if I'm wrong, but this does look like a Lophelia coral Just with some a bit more. potential Chrysogorgia on top um, with a squat lobster hanging out. There you go. Oh, 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 oh. This lobster looks like it's ready to take on the ROV. This is my coral. Looks really nice, and we're starting to see um, at the top there some polyps. All happy. Okay, you can maybe. Looks really nice. Right there. A sponge Hold attached right there. to it. Okay. Looks really Sorry. great. Oh, John just confirmed it is a Lophelia coral. So that's good. My geology hasn't impaired me from learning. <laughs> okay. Back there's some Ophiroids surrounding in the in the Chrysogorgia yeah, coral, and then potentially yeah. that a soft coral off to the left hand side, yeah, but this all looks in. really great. Well, now we get an underside view of that lobster, squat lobster, hanging on, waving those arms, probably trying to catch some, some detrital material passing around in the current systems. Christy says that there's another Hexalanid. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering those terms. Um, not my forte, but um, uh, also known as a wedding glass sponge Kay. out in the background yep. that was um, on the left hand yep. side of that coral. Gonna tilt down. And this little lobster guy seems to be quite active. Right there. What did you say? Yeah, to help you out on that oh. sponge since you're going to be seeing it a lot, it's Hexactinellid. How far down are you? Hexactinellid. Thank you very much. Hexactinellid. Yeah. So all the all the glass sponges all right. belong to um, that group. Watch lead. Okay, Anything else you. out of this coral? Yeah, and that sponge looks more like that platy sponge that we saw before with a fringed edge. And I already made a note and uh, an annotation on that. Thank you. Watch lead. Anything else right here? Uh, no, pilot. I think we're good. Thank you. Okay. 
Just a note of a crinoid off to the side there. Okay. Let's push out. And then we're we're still moving, correct? Sounds correct. Good. Okay. Tilting up. So in this area we're seeing a lot of these isolated coral colonies that are here. No um, real framework system like we were hoping maybe further out into the dive, um, but right now we're still seeing a lot of those coral rubbles and um, some karst features like uh, slabs and little boulders that are highly porous and jagged. Um, we have some Nav bridge fish in these complete. areas, but it doesn't seem to look like we have a you. lot of um, standing live framework, dense framework systems here. Just a lot of these isolated um, small thickets that we're now sweeping over in this area. You can see kind of on the horizon of the seafloor, uh, again, those thickets of um, these more either Isididae or Gorgonian corals that were passing over. There's another one of those sponges that we were seeing, um, those plated sponges, if I'm not mistaken, Shirley. Yep, correct. In the, okay. <laughs> yep, sorry. Oop. Sweeping up some sand there. Nav bridge. ROV nav. Hey, is now a good time to do a quick heading change? It certainly is. Okay, we're going to come right about uh, probably between 5 to 10 degrees. We're going to shoot for 7 degrees to the right. Copy that. Can you let me know when it's complete? Will do. Thank you. We're just taking the time now to look over um, the overall morphology of the area while the ROV then reaches one of the, the crests of the, the planned ridges from the ROV dive, potentially being at um, 830 meters deep water depth. And overall, we've this slope we've seen at the highest point, about 16 degrees, um, with a rise overall from the base to the top of the ridge, about uh, 40 meters that we've been scaling over and looking at the different morphology and we can see how the evolution of it takes place. We're at the base, we saw a lot of these um, just coral rubble pieces um, scattered about and it started to get more and more dense into some more of these framework systems that stayed in shape and kept their structures as we scaled up to the slope and um, up to here. And we're still seeing some of those um, coral structures here, the framework systems, although we're not getting a dense framework system, we are seeing that other colonies of these corals are taking advantage of that hard okay, substrate that the coral rubble now presents and colonizing them and forming their own systems as we can see here. And we have a variety can. of um, different okay, kinds of corals stable. here from octocorals to acididae corals um, and we even got to see some sclerotinian. Okay. Let me see. And John is asking in the in the chat room, so we are seeing all this dead coral rubble. Um, can we tell when they were alive okay, and when did they die and when? Um, this is all subject to um, uh, dis Drifting debate back. because we don't ha uh, have too many of these samples here. Okay. Um, and a way we can be able to tell when these corals died is by um, potentially grabbing some of these samples and using them to age date um, oh, through uh, either radiocarbon dating or uranium thorium, Copy depending that. on Thank how you. old these corals okay, are. Right and then we can estimate a time for when they actually died. And on, um, a lot of these framework on. systems are so fragile Stuff. in that any changes in temperature yeah, or salinity on. or oxygen can have a detrimental effect on All the right, entire reef system going. in this area. And and likely the that could be one of the causes that caused uh, all of these corals heading, to yeah. potentially die off and form these okay, framework structures. Yep. We're not sure if all of these um, 
Do the Dead same coral thing? rubble below, were alive all at the same time, or if this more is a, a layer now. effect, where just sometimes See, corals okay, thrived the and then died the off, and then more the corals, yeah. corals thrived and died. So a bit more often, it could very well be a pattern that we're seeing, maybe yeah. even through uh, geologic time, Come through these right glacial in the and interglacial view, cycles, where we see sea level change, and therefore the current systems change, where it presents either the perfect temperature where these corals can thrive, and then when and the sea level changes, certain current Bridge systems RV actually nav. shut down and prevent I'd like to the corals from move, having those nutrient two levels that they meters, need in order to live, and then one it potentially degrees. dying off all in this section. So I'm sorry, bearing thank you for that question, John. Degrees, it was very interesting. Uh, speed decimal two knots. Range two zero meters, bearing one one five degrees, speed decimal two knots. Good copy, thank you. This blue subject right here is that on. All right, we got Arisoma again. Let's come in right there. There's a cool brittle star, too. And a blue, okay. what is this blue thing? Sponge, maybe? Yeah, let's come in. There you go. Oh, crazy. It's, it's got to be a sponge. Oh, let's start drifting back. Hey, Chris, is this a sponge, this blue guy? It looks like. Can you? Can we get a, a better look? Close up? Yeah. Please? Okay. We can, can zoom in a bit. Yeah. Uh, I got I to gotta land, otherwise I'm going to start floating. Uh, bright land. blue color found move. among several of them as sponge orders. Uh, they have uh, species that have these. Hymodesmia, is that the blue one? Okay, let's come in. Maybe. I mean, that's one, one that it could be. Yeah. Aliclona. Oh, oh, but this is oh, not so very spongy to me. That's Maybe a tunicate? Oh, that's really weird. Yeah. 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 You guys think sponge or something else? Okay. Let's see. It looks kind of... Gelatin of the outside. Let me. Not sure. Not sure. <laughs> we can't even get to phylum. We should play guess the phylum on Twitter. I know, really. Cool. Wow. <laughs> you can't get because it's fun. It's more fun to me. All right, I'm going to bet on Peripera. Yeah, but we haven't. Seen, I, have, I mean, I don't recognize it. Yeah. Uh, anything I have seen of the blue sponges. So it will be okay. something different, I will. That would be my vote. Would there be an interest in collecting look it? right for a tunicate because of uh, the openings. Um, so, they're not right. paired. It, do it doesn't look like a colonial tunicate, that's for mm -hmm. sure. So I think it has to be a sponge. Right. So watch lead. Are we Yeah, definitely good? a different. Should we take not, off or should we stay one. here? Are you, are you, um, Chris, are you good looking at that? Can we move on? Yes. Yeah, we can move on. All right. Looks like we got another crinoid, <clears throat> some gorgonians. Tilting up. We have a sand patch up here. The slope probably increases. Another eel. Cutthroat mm. eel, maybe. You can see the top of the ledge above us. Something brown here. That's probably a crinoid, I think. We are at uh, 830 meters underwater, 827 meters complete. roughly underwater. Copy that, thank you. OK. 
Okay, looks like we're coming up on the top of one of these mounds. I think we can probably keep going because, yeah, I don't uh, see anything. Why don't you come up around mm, back to the center high point. of view here? Okay. Mostly coral rubble still. Lots of interdispersed sand and sediment. So 115 will take us slightly north of the peak and then uh, we'll head south through waypoint four. Okay. That sounds great to me. I'm not sure where all this Lophelia rubble's coming from. I'm hoping we find some living coral somewhere. So this is the peak that I'm seeing ahead of us? I think. Yeah, it's definitely right ahead. Yeah, we can get well, we're in a lull. Um, you guys on land can ask questions on via Twitter. Um, that's at Ocean Exploration Research. 45 meters. I'm sorry, at Ocean Explorer on Twitter. Yes, we can do um, using the hashtag Okeanos. 30. Um, we 30. have someone monitoring that, so maybe if you have 40, a good question, maybe you'll get read over the 30. air. Yeah. Um, on Facebook, at Ocean, Ocean Exploration Research or Ocean Exploration dash edu Research dash Education. Are we swapping in nine? And on Instagram, we're NOAA we Ocean swapping Exploration. In nine? Um, and if you want to follow yes. me, I'm Deep Sea okay. Nerdy on Twitter, or Deep Sea Nerd on Instagram. Bridge ROV Nav. Go ahead, Nav. I'd like to request a move, range three zero meters, bearing 115 degrees, speed decimal two knots. Three zero meters, bearing 115 degrees, speed decimal two knots. Good copy, thank you. Some more area soma, which is this um, toxic <coughs> echinoderm. It looks like we are getting some primnoids too. These are pretty common on the Lophelia reef. You can see these small fan corals. Looks like we might have a good sponge here at six o'clock. If you guys can zoom in at six, I see a bulbous white sponge. We had a pretty good current blowing our uh, econoderms around, it looks like. Okay, Brian, you can come in. We're gonna zoom in on this white sponge here. All right, Shirley and Chris, what do you think? It's like volcano-shaped. Well, definitely it's a massive demosponge. Mm -hmm. Demosponge. And it might be uh, astrophoric. Astrophoric? Yeah. Astrophoric, yes. But, you know, it might be Apacastrelide or Ancorinide. So large, massive um, Beautiful. You can see the oscules at the peak yeah, of this kind of lobe uh, projection. Pressure, but I keep so we are starting probably to this current. Uh, it seems that it's going to be generating right a, a growth of uh, many other organisms. We could see in the horizon and many soft corals and uh, good currents that can hold these larger specimens. Interesting. Do you think this is new, or do you think you're just 
Is, if it, is it a strong interest? I, I could not say because there's, uh, there's several genera in the Astrophorida that grow uh, similar to this growth form, and, you know, uh, I could not say. Let me just center it. it. Okay, let's go in for this part. All right. Oh, neat. Yeah, I, I can hold it. Yeah, that's fine. So we're looking at it's so those osteo, are raised osteo, so sponges have pores all over their body. There are some of them that they use for intake of water and some for outflow, okay. and these are raised um, osteo, so those are the X current or outflow pores. Mm -hmm. All right, let's thank you, go Ms. Shirley. right here. Yes. Thank you, thank you. We have a, a crinoid right above him. He's hanging on to what looks like a dead Gorgonian. And this is interesting. His tips are very thin. Almost like, almost looks like his pinules have been torn off, but Can I would I imagine this is natural. I don't up. know what species this is. And I don't think Chuck is on the line right, to tell right us. There. No, I meant like the tilting up. Yeah, I don't think Chuck's on the line. This is Scott, okay, but um, I do know Chuck has talked crinoid. in the past about crinoids. Um, right there, one right group there. of them do have these long um, thread-like uh, tips to the arms, so that's right. a natural thing. It's not that they've lost it. Okay. Good to know. I was feeling bad for him for a minute. That's my phone. So I just... He's just blowing in the breeze, it. huh? Yeah, and the coral that it's on um, is actually instructive because you can see parts that have white tissue, and mm -hmm. then uh, further to the left you can see it's a lot more Copy. brown. And that brown is the actual protein internal axial skeleton that we keep okay. referring to. Um, typically, we don't Oops. see it because it's covered by the live tissue okay, that supports the polyp. So this one looks sickly or dying. Yeah, I, th I completely lost my footing, so... All right. All right, pilots, we're happy whenever you're ready to move on. We're good. Copy. Here's Arisoma. Tilting up. Okay. And then pushing out. Right now we're aiming for the high point of this ledge. We haven't quite reached it yet. Oh, are we moving or are we still? We're running. still moving. Yeah, keep moving. We're still moving, okay. Nav bridge move complete. Yeah, we're now. Okay. Um, Copy that, thank you. So we still have about 20 meters, right? Or 30 meters to get to the top. Um, it's about 35 meters. Okay. We can call another 30. I think it's in this direction. I th Do you want to keep the same heading or uh, change? Yeah, I mean, yeah, same heading is fine. Okay. Actually, we might change pretty soon, so you can hold yeah. off that one. Okay. If you guys are just joining the um, live feed for our wider audience, um, we are, this is dive one of our cruise. We are on the Blake Plateau, which is off the coast of Florida. We are about 88 miles from shore. Um, the bottom depth, our max depth on this dive was about 870 today. And are, we're at our min depth right now around one, uh, 823-ish, 821. Uh, so we have about a 40-meter rise from the bottom of this long ridge to the top of this mound. Uh, most of it's been covered in Lophelia coral, uh, dead Lophelia coral, excuse me, rubble, um, and its um, corresponding associates, mostly invertebrates, a couple of fish. 
Um, a highest slope in this area is about 16 degrees, even though I feel like we were driving on it, we had a, we had a much higher slope than that at some point. Um, so that's according to our data that we collect from um, Let's, the ship uh, on the multi-beam. Practice some. Uh, we're traveling about a total track of 880 meters. And tomorrow we are going to be doing a, a dive called the Million Mounds East. Um, Right now, we see lots of these crinoids. You can see they're brown, five-armed echinoderms. They're almost like stars, as well as the area soma, which is this um, sea urchin that's dead center screen. And then you see white sea fans on the side, which are primnoids. Yeah, it looks like their own little forest of sea fans right there. Uh, sea fans, I'm sorry, crinoids. Yeah, I think they're crinoids. <laughs> I think Not they are, too. sure. <laughs> We were fooled before, but yeah. maybe we did learn. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little bit of a lunch shift change here today, right now. Give it a moment for the ROV guys to settle in. If you guys want to look at camera two now, it's a pretty great shot of the Discover 2 against um, the overall seafloor. Um, now that a lot of that sediment, um, the marine snow has kind of bypassed us, um, you can have a really great view of the D2 and, and see it in all its glory from the Sirius camera. Ooh, we're there bobbing a bounce. little there. And hey just man, to kind of get gone. a view of it, the camera does not do it justice. So and it's a really large right piece of Finished brilliant machinery that we're able to use here. And, and it's uh, about um, nine feet weather, tall and 10,000 pounds bit, on so um, when we take it out of the water. Yeah, copy that. Uh, other than that, uh, the other thing that was changed is uh, the update was that we're going to start. Right, so we run a two ROV system four. here where we actually have uh, to a pilot four. for yes. each Copy of the ROVs. Due right? Due so there. Sirius floats above. Almost okay. there. So we should rotate. Um, and he has his own ROV. pilot. So we're going to go south. And that's the one we're yeah, looking at on ROV, feed two. It's actually a heading of about 155. And then yeah. the main ROV, which is D2 or Deep Discoverer, is the and one that we're getting all these good close up clean shots on the bottom with. And okay. so it's very large. The biggest ROV I have Sounds ever good. seen. I'll rotate in person. and look. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We usually yeah. use a much smaller so, one okay. run by UNCW's no. under, Undersea Vehicles Program uh, called the Mohawk, and he's probably only like two or three feet tall. There's some good current cup out, so I'm going to take it slow. And, and this ROD, ROV, ROV guys, excuse sorry. me, um, is capable yeah. so of collecting samples. Right, um, it has so we'll um, a when claw to reach out and grab yeah, samples as well that we can that grab way. biological as well as geologic samples. And well, now, like said, more recently installed, has been this um, suction system where like five, uh, we're able to actually scoop sediments and um, any sort of biology five, four. off the seafloor and put it into different tanks. So we can ice actually yeah, also isolate good. those specimens and, and uh, being able for then sample collection yeah, yeah, and preservation yeah. later. Is it a local so high? this is, is a new system yes. that was uh, um, added to the D2. So and um, the local for high me, for geology and sediment-wise, like it's quite interesting also as well yeah. um, um, to be able to collect so these soft sediments and not just and uh, the high, the like maybe some smaller rocks yeah. that we might so see or whatnot. And here we came across this slightly now depression within this area, and you can see like all of a sudden the distance. overall sediments get a lot darker, and that means that there's bit, more yeah, of that overall coral bit. rubble yeah. in this area. Yeah. And we go? Uh, we're Let's not seeing any uh, definitive structure-wise, yeah, so this is east. very so highly coral rubble, eroded, broken down, biodegraded features. 
And I'm not so seeing really any ripple structures either we in this area, so maybe the current isn't as strong. Towards waypoint five, uh, it'd be more of a bearing of one third. We can kind of see some miscellaneous little larger pieces of some karst boulders or features here. So I'm looking that maybe more biology settles on, but we have a lot of distributed uh, crinoids should we go up at this the top slope? here. Slope? Should we just follow it, or should we go? Let me talk to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I believe it was to climb the local slope, and then we make our way. Watch the nav. Go ahead, nav. Yeah, I just wanted to touch base with you. I, um, I was advised that we were headed for waypoint four. Kind of dead ahead. Could, and E2 right now is the there. Right in front of you. Yeah. Um, and if we head towards waypoint five, it kind of takes us maybe downslope a little bit. Is the whole goal to just go upslope? Uh, no, it was potentially to also scale across maybe a few of these um, smaller crests that are there. So if you want to do continue to wait point five, that's um, going to plan. Okay. Okay. So you kind of want to go across on that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Received. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Oh, did you hear that? Wait point five. Yeah, I would say if we if it looks like we can kind of. So the goal of this dive is those. to once yeah. we had reached the I mean, crest to potentially scale like down um, a few right of here. these yeah. uh, small um, kind of crest features that we're seeing along the ridge to see if there's any differences or similarities between the two, zeros. and um, we will be going slightly down slope along yeah. in order to reach okay. the next crest. Sounds good. I want to see what that looks the like. Pilot's already lining up. Yeah. And we can go that way. Okay. Um, They've been pretty much 30 meter moves. But like yeah. I said earlier common. just now, we see so that there is a transition from more of the framework still ready, forming structures that, that are yeah, on that good. relatively okay. high crest to so that then depression feature where we start to see a lot of the more crumbly rubble yeah, that doesn't meters. really have any okay. framework system still um, within its I'll structure. Right yeah, it's really loose, broken up. Bridge mm -hmm. nav. And we can see almost exactly like that line of where it stops versus then yeah, going okay. into the back up a um, more Kupai. depressionary or downslope yeah, feature. I'm a pretty low delta. Sorry, Nav, go ahead. And then I don't know yeah, if you guys, guys at home test, can see it, but just um, uh, sporadically about move? those small, okay. yes. Okay, um, uh, distance, 30 meters. Those sporadic brown spots one, along three, the seafloor are crinoids, potentially. Uh, um, two knots. They... They do look like Raise crinoids that are there. They don't look like they're three, stocked. Three degrees, um, speed decimal two but knots. they do have some characteristics Roger that, that um, show the standard crinoids that we have been seeing throughout this dive. All right, Wash Leads, uh, we're going to start making our way to waypoint five. Uh, this is pretty much at waypoint four here, and you can kind of see the local highs right in front of us. So we just called in a ship move, and we're on our way. Copy. Thank you. Thank you. They might be up here, rides these stars down here. It's I can't really. Maybe I need Chuck to come back from lunch. <laughs> Help me out with that. You can see the top of this ridge too. Is one off to the yeah, that's just left of dead center, so that's definitely an ophiroid. So, gives me slightly more confidence mm -hmm. that we're calling a crinoid a <laughs> crinoid. <laughs> oh, someone's swimming by the screen there. Maybe a little shrimp or, oh, a little fish, maybe. He's darting across there. Yeah, he's a little quick for us. Got 
dark colored fish or shrimp possibly maybe maybe it's just detritus float oh nope definitely a fish it moved Another like possible cutthroat eel. We don't have any fish people on the line, so unless they want to join in, yeah, feel free to come on the line and talk to us about fish. I'm terrible with fish, so you can definitely see the edge of this. It looks like y'all have a little bit of a current. Uh, yeah, definitely. Edge of this, okay, um, yeah. I caught a significant current yeah. here. It's, it's looking <laughs> like uh, about a point. 2.3 And I want to point out, out near south. the top of the screen above the horizon in the, in right? the open out ocean, the you south? can start to see a lot yeah. of these white um, particulate the uh, material, yeah, and that's referred right. to as yeah. marine snow. And that's any and maybe a um, bit of organic a west, material, detrital material that's being swept through the ocean hey, currents. And this includes yeah. um, like any degraded organisms and yeah. uh, foraminifera, which are these little tiny bugs in the ocean that swim about. Um, and are actually skeleton producing. Yeah. And so a lot of these organisms are, yeah, are being goes. wafted through the current Thanks. system and flow through. And that's where a lot of these organisms on the seafloor try to reach out um, and grab these organisms and little organic materials in order to feed on. So this is a lot how these coral framework systems and um, the crinoids and any sort of material that may be isolated and stuck in that they can't move, they can't walk around and catch their food, so they have to rely on the current systems to bring the food to them. Right, and we're also way too deep for photosynthesis, so the ability to turn light into food, like a plant does. So we're too deep for that. The sun does not penetrate this deep. So they have to rely on other primary producers, which in our case is going to be marine snow consumption. I think the current's yeah. so and strong. And this is known as the aphotic zone. So normally yeah, for light, we have three particular zones that, um, that so the light can penetrate yeah, through the ocean. Around. And then the top, where yeah. we do have that light penetration, where we see a lot yeah, of the shallow water like corals, we, have, we refer to as the photic yeah, zone. Yeah, that intermediate, intermediate area yeah. between yeah, about 15 meters to maybe 30 meters deep if you're lucky on a clear day you have some form of light and that's referred to as the mesophotic zone and then also here at the deep ocean where you have zero surface. sunlight yeah. where most of these organisms live in complete darkness all the time it's referred to as the aphotic zone so all of the fish and everything that you're seeing here likely with the rov this is the first time that they have ever seen anything remotely resembling uh, yeah. light pretty much just got me up to them because i'm still looking down at a three three five Angle. We have more the of same. these more dense coral right. skeletons around yeah, here, still with like still what looks like a little bit of a crinoid I mean, forest, I, I if you will. We're seeing uh, almost more yeah. than anything I mean, at the moment. Time, these um, four, dark brown so branching features time, that um, so. you can kind of make out uh, on your screens um, you go ahead and add it on, are a form of crinoid. And well, let's see. Do we know what a crinoid they're, is? They're Can we explain it's that? A, it's a sea lily, and it's a common name, and it's relative to a yeah. starfish or a sea cucumber. Yeah, they're all in the uh, phylum Echinodermata. Bridge, now, go ahead. Here's a good, hey, here's yeah, a good still, crinoid, right? Just, from uh, that, right here, it's uh, pink. It's at 3 o'clock. We got to it, but uh, then we, uh, zoom in on we got our heading. Got pushed out of a uh, uh, limit, so it's just coming back uh, now. But I mean, we're three minutes from uh, that waypoint. If sorry, you want to go ahead and do another move, I'm but sorry. Yeah, can you zoom in on the oh. pink, the pink okay. rhinoid at uh, noon? So yeah, you guys will be ready for another move. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're good now. The ship's Close just still settling to the lasers. out. I think it's that right, uh, small yeah, game. Yeah, and there is even if balance. Chuck Messing is, is on the line yeah, or in the chat room, maybe he can chime in. But from, uh, a lot of these crinoids, the um, as you can the see, they now, have these almost root-like yeah, structures, okay, feet like. that okay, hold on to the seafloor. But some species, when they don't feel like being around anymore, they let go and they can actually swim in the sea until they find another place where they would like to settle and hang out in. And maybe it's a good place better where they're getting food sure. and um, some of these species are even stalked okay. which means that they have a long stem and then only at the top do they have these feather-like lilies 
um, right. reaching into the current system that also gives them an advantage to being the highest um, creature so they can reach high into the current to grab more of the food. And I'm definitely going to say these brown ones are definitely chronoids. You can see their their feet okay, attached. Okay, zoom a bit further. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah do not have that. So Ophiroids have a center disc. And you can see them on the brown side. But here's a nice pink one that we're going to zoom in on. Yeah. And they actually will catch food at the end of their tip, the tips of their pinules, and pass it down each little arm, and then put it in their mouth, which is the center in the center of all their arms. And not to discount also the geology going back in this area, we've seen crinoids almost all the way back millions of yeah, years, and they were no particularly sample. proliferant in the in the um, um, Cretaceous period, that? where okay. we start From to see past, a lot of these crinoids that are remember. huge. Okay. They can be Someone meters big, and they even form like these huge colonies that are were actually fossilized in some stones and. A lot of museums actually have some of these specimens in their their geology yeah, area, and you can go see where a lot of these living creatures, blast. you can even yeah, see down copy. to where the yeah. feathers were on the actual, their little spicules on these guys, on their actual little arms that they're right, catching anything, food with. Uh, so it's really specific? interesting to kind of see uh, in what kind of environment they grew up with so that they can be them. so well preserved yeah, even yeah. through geologic time. Yeah, if you Google the Burgess Shale, there's a lot of really cool um, fossilized Absolutely. Um, crinoids in there, and they're stalked still. Yeah, they're the, all. Most of them are stalked. Yeah, these uh, these are not stalked. Um, no, Video's but they clear. weave together and they form almost their uh, own yeah, like little crinoid reefs, if you will. And and so um, of you, each of if when they are stalked, at least those in the Cretaceous, they form the these little, little like nodules little, uh, that were then grown Slope and kept within now. the tissue ah, so okay. you can actually yeah. take home sometimes if you're lucky and you find a fossilized material some of these nods if you don't find yeah. the whole crinoid in itself and those are all like fossilized Ooh, skeletons oh swimming the, 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 cri the crinoid uh, was swimming <laughs> kind of if you can it's no fine. it's okay yeah. <laughs> i think he's on top of the camera right now oh <laughs> But that was just a, an example of how we can see that they can just let go and, and swim down into the current of wherever they see fit. Maybe he'll take a, long, a ride along with us if he is, in, t in fact, attached to the current. <laughs> or the camera, sorry. I, yeah, I don't have eyes on him. Oh, right there now, he is. Yeah, I can see him in the uh, see him. preview. <laughs> Um, that was a great concerts. example of how we Five, can see six, all of this that. and how diverse the seafloor can really be even when it looks like a skeletal graveyard we do see so much life that relies on it There's quite a few of them here, really abundant, these brown crinoids. Yeah. They're difficult to see, they blend in pretty well. You just see the kind of color change. Looks like we're heading a little bit down slope now. I'm at the top of this mound. Maybe to the next one. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a good time to do another round of introductions as to uh, the control room, the mission control room. Um, for myself, my name is Kimberly Galvez. I am a PhD candidate at the University of Miami at the Rosenstiel School of Marine and Atmospheric Sciences. Um, I study mostly marine geology and the coral framework systems and how it impacts uh, the seafloor and over the evolution of uh, geologic time. Um, I'm the biological science co-lead Stephanie Farrington. I'm from Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute at Florida Atlantic University in Fort Pierce. Um, I study deep sea and mesophotic coral reefs and their habitats and do bottom classification, habitat classification. Um, but mostly I like inverts the most. Uh, they're my favorite. So. 
Uh, can we have a pi one of the pilots introduce themselves? Is this a good uh, time? Yeah, absolutely. Sitting pilot currently is Sean Kennison. I'm part of the RV team, uh, and we're from Global Foundation for Ocean Exploration. We're made up of engineers and videographers, and we're responsible for the ROVs and all the video products you see today. And sitting to my right... Lars Murphy is co-pilot. Down. Sitting down. Yeah, I'm Mark Durbin, navigator. And then over on... And my name's Tara Smithy, and I'm operating the cameras on the ROV. Yeah, bridge move complete. And in the back, bridge um, uh, doing Thank you. video clipping is um, uh, Caitlin Bailey. Great, thank you. And these are part of just um, one session down. of the crew that comes Come in and, and pilots like all of the ROVs and collects all the so footage that you're seeing. And it's a great back. team that requires yeah. a lot of people on board. And uh, we're very grateful to be part of their team and, and to yeah, work Lars on Isaac what's there. <laughs> and in the corner, we have someone waving. Just by five. Yeah, I'm kind of at the low point at this point. But I'm just kind of going up But, and yeah, that's so all part of the we'll team do. that we work with here and yeah, that we're very like happy and fortunate to be part cool. of. And so we can actually do a lot of these deep sea dives and discover um, a lot of what is, Point frankly, has never meters. been seen by man before. So a lot of these features that's, are yeah. new. Uh, we haven't seen any of these before. Um, we are still within that um, HAPSI Border, and if Stephanie wants to explain a little bit about what a HAPSI is. So HAPSI is a term they, for Habitat Area of Particular Concern, or HAPC. Um, it's a, this one, we're in the Deep Carl HAPC off the coast of Florida, and it is the largest, I believe the largest deep sea coral um, protected area, uh, definitely in the continental United States, and I believe in the world. Um, it was established in 2010 based on um, the data that my boss, John Reed, submitted to the We're South fine. Atlantic okay. Fisheries yeah. Management Council. The current's kind of pulling the tether. Um, who the put south. it into the community, and okay. they all decided um, as a unit. So it's um, kind of tugging both vehicles. To but protect this area from bottom trawling. You can, you can surface fish, but you cannot yeah, 30, um, drag nets across the bottom are good. Okay. in this that zone. And that's specifically to protect our lophilia reefs that are out here, which are a very distinct and unique habitat like, uh, you're settling out um, and very important for the for the health of the ocean we still have almost four and I hours i believe it's time. 11 uh, square 11,000 square miles I think the, i'd have to check on that for you guys there's a concern it is definitely um, the one of the largest if not the largest potentially early due to yeah. weather mpa marine protected so i think area. they wanted to move a little quick in the first half to make sure they got right, to Right, and just to continue off um, that, like, these lophilia reefs are very yeah, important. They form a, a lot of these sclerotinian the corals. So um, what they're known for is their actual stony skeleton um, precipitation that they make. So within the coral yeah. itself, it forms these skeletons, going. and they are robust, yeah. and they hold up We're a lot of what other corals that rely point, on to so. be part of okay. um, uh, the overall structure. And they form... They are the Same. foundation for you a lot of these ecosystems yeah. that take Just place at the seafloor. So we have a lot of long, fish yeah. that are okay. related to them, other sea anemones. Um, they're they're highly Bridge highly now. desired on the seafloor as far as for other organisms. They're re they're reliant on them, and Good over enough. time we start yeah, to see that they um, distance thirty meters uh, actually Bearing grow one, sometimes, three, three. and hopefully in, in future dives we'll be able to see this into these large mounds where we have these Rain, framework forming zero, corals, one, three, three, sediments three, that three, come three, through with the currents get Roger trapped, that. and they Thanks. start to grow these large mound features that we're seeing, um, maybe not here in today's dive, but hopefully in future dives we'll be able to see. And then over hundreds of thousands of years, these mounds can grow anywhere from a few meters tall to over a hundred meters tall. And we're looking Look at, at the test. size of a building like about that, how big these, these uh, mounds can get. And it's very unique and, and these environments um, Fortunately, should get are very yeah. desired for these and they just change the shape of the seafloor and that's upstream. as a geologist it's really interesting to see how these actual living things shape a lot of what we are only just finding out now the bathymetry and and rov diving has only been just available in the past well few more decades with the recent technology um, advances in technology and we're able to see how they adjust and how they change and over time and 
it's it's really important to kind of investigate from the science point of view, and and that's one of NOAA's main core missions in order to see how the seafloor is changing, what yes, the biology is like, and to discover so the previous unknown. If we keep moving at the current speed, um, you're like an hour and a half to get to the final waypoint. And, and if you guys have any uh, questions uh, or concerns, I and or just want to so. give a I shout out, we have um, some various yeah. social media aspects that you can reach out to us on. Uh, on Facebook, uh, where you can reach out on at Ocean Exploration so Research. We also have another time, Facebook so. where you can reach out at at Ocean Exploration Dash Education. Um, Instagram handle we have at Noah Exploration, lots, and for Twitter, you can reach out on. Ocean Explorer <laughs> with a hashtag Okeanos. It looks like we might have a starfish oh. here. Oh. I can't quite yeah. tell until we get close. It might just be it another is one the of one these center. Is that It looks out? a little different, though. Yeah, we'll get closer. Maybe. One sec video. Maybe not. Looks like a wrapped up crinoid. But even if snap zoom real nah, quick. I think it's just a crinoid. Yeah. Same crinoid we've been seeing. Same one. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while, yeah. though. Let's zoom in on them. <laughs> All right, so you have a five-armed crinoid. You can see, oh, there's a pink one next to it. He's got one, two, three, four, five, ten arms. Yeah, ten. Ten-armed crinoid right next to her. He, he was blending in really well. I didn't see yeah. him until right up close. A lot of camouflage mm -hmm. here. They seem really great. Awesome. They seem pretty happy. Mm -hmm. They seem, I think these brown ones are the most abundant macros macro biota that we can yeah. see um, in this area distance, for sure yeah. yep. thank you pilot no problem coming away down five 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 copy that you can see the top of this feature here and as you can see on the kind of the horizon of the seafloor um, more we're seeing a few of these small coral thickets and colonies um, spread out a little bit, and um, they're quite random in distribution. They don't look like their specific um, location to um, any specific area or parallel to anything in particular, but now we're coming on more of an area where we see a lot more sediment than actual coral rubble, and you can see that by the blanket of white that's coming over. A lot of this sediment is fine-grained, composed of a lot of uh, calcium carbonate material in that they are uh, broken up skeletal fragments. They are the remnants of those four minifera that swim around in the ocean, and when they die, their skeletons just fall down into the, and become part of that marine snow and fall down onto the seafloor. Uh, we also have various grain sizes because of uh, the karst features that likely is the underlying um, sh uh, bedrock here, the structure, and part of the current systems help erode that and change the overall morphology and breaks it up into smaller pieces and forms this kind of blanket of white uh, material over the coral colonies and um, any sort of material that we're seeing here. Can you define karst for me? So karst is a form of calcium carbonate rock that has been um, altered in some way, shape, or form by erosion um, or um, different kinds of uh, water that comes through. So water has a certain chemical structure with salinity, temperature, oxygen, um, and overall saturation levels of different elements. And when that changes, it can Blast either erode the rock or Copy change that. the actual internal structure of it. And it's now more, bridges, karst is like mainly to referred to as any sort of um, limestone okay, rock, this calcium bridge. carbonate limestone yeah, rock that has been some good. way, shape, or okay. form altered. Okay. Okay. Bridge, Thank you. ma'am, and uh, just to confirm, we no are problem. on A-frame, right? The rotation is A-frame. Okay, roger that. We're ready for that heading change. Okay, coming left five degrees. We'll let you know when we're setting. Roger that. Thank you. We're at about a hundred. I'm oh, sorry, eight hundred and twenty twenty-seven meters underwater. And um, we're still heading up this slope. Um, we're about eighty-eight miles from shore on the Blake Plateau. So our headings are trying to now cover, since we're at the crest of this ridge, we're trying to cover some of these um, 
little crest features that we're seeing along the ridge. And this is actually now we're right in between some of them, which is probably why we saw not so much coral rubble, but more sediment features. Um, and now we're, we're, it looks like we're going, we're moving um, a slightly more upslope again. And we're starting to see more of that coral rubble again. And um, still having some structure of the, the original reef system, but for the most part, mostly broken down and eroded um, for either current systems or some sort of biodegradable material has then impacted them as well. Um, if we're at the highest point, I'm very surprised we don't see car reef up here with all of Nav the bridge, uh, broken up rubble we're seeing. Yeah. I'm not really sure where it bridge came now from. Received. Thank you. Yeah, so a good Ship indication of that. Ooh, Ooh, what do we have here? Siphonophore? Ooh. Nice. Let's move a quick video, but if Looks you want to... Good. Cool, he's fast. Yeah. He's fast. I think that might just be the... Oh, so this is actually a colonial animal. Yeah, oh. Video, I'm having trouble keeping... Ooh, oh. There he is. Oh. Let's grab the horn. Okay, to zoom a little more. Um, yeah. He's almost transparent against right. the seafloor. I can barely catch him. Right. Oh no, is he going to get caught in there? <laughs> uh, video, come on out real cool. quick. Cool, Roger. So they have um, cool. different cell types, I guess, or different structure types. So there's a bell in the front, which is helps them move forward, and yes, then they have um, some feeding, some feeding sections, and some um, stinging All sections. Right, you can come back in. Some reproductive sections, but they're technically a colonial animal. Yeah, it's pretty far as he Oh my gosh, he's super cool. I have eyes on you if you want to. So you can see the bell moving on the left side, right? So that's how he swims. I say he. I mean, it could be right, female or both. It's almost like he's just dancing in the current. I'm surprised he's so. All right, but uh, let's let him go. He's kind of like most plankton. Away. Thank you. It doesn't really control where it goes. You know, it just kind of goes yeah. with the current. But he's very active and able to move himself around. Yeah. He just came to starboard a little bit, not much. Yeah. That was awesome. That. Right, so as we were discussing earlier about um, where did potentially all of these coral fragments and ru coral rubble come from? Um, and why don't we see the live reef at the top where potentially they may have come from? Well, we can see based off all of the dark colored coral fragments that they have been here for relatively uh, quite a while, maybe a, a few hundred years or so, um, based off the amount of uh, ferromanganese crusting that you see on the coral skeletons and that's what gives them that dark color look whereas normally they would be uh, more of a white colored skeleton if they hadn't been encrusted on uh, with this and that comes from the ocean chemistry that's within that's surrounding the coral itself it starts to encrust and and deposit a lot of this iron manganese onto the coral skeleton and we start to see a lot of these structures and over geologic time we can start to see the breakdown of a lot of these larger coral reefs that were once thriving but because of some sort of sea level change um, over geologic time and we're talking hundreds of thousands of years um, that certain current systems with the sea level change start to get shut down or restarted and that either can make or break where the coral skeletons can actually live. So these corals usually prefer certain water temperatures ranging between 1 and 11 degrees and with uh, variable oxygen and salinity uh, ratios and when all of that, when their specific needs are not met, yeah, they sure. all die off. Not trying to rush and you. There's not many on the yeah, When the those, the potentially the currents yeah, after a certain yeah. amount of time, maybe yeah. if it is related to those interglacial and glacial cycles that we see ahead, in geologic history, yeah, maybe when one of those cycles returns, uh, 
we Starting start to see then regrowth uh, that could current get comes back to what is needed and, and the original actually, status of interest? the, the coral grows. Oh, that is interesting, actually. Yeah. 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 Come on in. Roger that. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. And um, we okay. see that different okay. corals okay. then come back and we can actually determine the overall reef structures and we can date these corals to see over how long they've actually been deposited at this feature or not. And this coralomorph looks pretty happy. We have some ophioroids around him and some more crinoids. All right, I think I'm stable. Uh, whatever you need, feel free. Roger that, thank you. He's found a nice solid place to sit down. Yep. And more of that mucus material, gelatinous material around it, which could either be uh, from a previous hair. organism, a mucus yeah. that was previously expelled for um, collecting any um, food. food or or material to try to eat, or it could be some sort of um, mat structure. Uh, we're not very sure of what it looks like. Now, this coralomorph looks slightly different to ones that we've seen before. So why are now the ridges slightly lined with some darker coloring? No, I don't know. Uh, maybe somebody out there has an answer for that one. I, I'm not sure. It might just be a morph. The morphology of him. This maybe. particular guy. Or maybe it could be part of the detrital mm -hmm. food that's being collected. Maybe it just happens to be a good spot for it. Mm -hmm collecting almost more than it can eat. Possibly. You can see his mouth a little bit on the right. I'm sorry, the left. You can see the mouth opening. There it is. Yeah. It's, uh, that's where it, it will collect food in its um, tentacles and then put them in his, in his mouth and eat it. And they actually have a one-way one digestive system. So, comes in and out yeah. from the same orifice. Yep. <laughs> Aren't you glad yeah. you're not a coralomorph? <laughs> Today I am. <laughs> and do you know why it has such a wide base? I I don't not really sure. I would guess because it makes it more stable. So you know, just the way they grow, so that it doesn't really get ripped up off the ground really easily. Because um, yeah. that's what it uses to stick there. Because they are modal. They can move around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so they just, you know, like right, an anemone. Cool. All right, great. Thanks, Lydia. Thank Thanks, you, Pilot. Pilot. Mm -hmm. And we s are continuing still to see a lot of these crinoids all along the surface. Still looking down, 5 0. Copy that. We'll yeah. come back to center. And we still got coral rubble here quite a bit but we're not seeing more a lot of still that um, framework structure really anymore we're starting to see it more broken down and more sediment draped upon over it again with a um, cusk eel you think that's right on the base of the screen there and I think well we just passed what I think was a, a flying crinoid before um, that was Swimmer. on the left hand side I don't know if he settled down now or if we just missed him overall. Uh, let me know if you see him. Um, farther up now, if you're going um, dead ahead, I think he was. Or I don't know if maybe he settled down already. Yeah, it was that. just on the corner. Yeah, I think he landed on the ground. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm, not I'm looking at him. the replay. Looks more sandy here. We're losing our coral rubble. Yep. And this is now at the um, really at one of the base of those small little crests that are at the top of the ridge. If you want to look at your um, camera three, I think it is that quad view where you see the bathymetry map, and that's that colorful map that has that color scale on it that says. Um, from negative about 230 meters down to 280 meters. Um, you can see a little bit, uh, we're at the base, just south of the base of that um, crest little feature that's there. And that's probably why we're seeing a lot of this more um, sediment deposition rather than the actual coral rubble in this area. So 
Coral Rubble well can only go tra be transported so far. So um, sediment, these finer grains are a lot easier to transport and be carried by the current system and also deposited. So um, those coral, large coral rubble features can only travel so far. But we are still seeing some. So it's still, they, they are being pushed by the current system, but we're seeing a lot more of now the sediments over them. Which direction are we headed? To the um, south, right? Yes. Now yeah, bridge move complete. Okay, with the ridge system. Bridge and Aversey, thank you. Last move just completed, guys. Copy that. <laughs> Looks like there's a, some sort of an anemone or coral under the screen. It just went off. But... My head to uh, might just or? be another kind of. Yeah, copy All right. Now Roger. keep moving. Copilot, thanks. Uh, I'm sorry, pilot. What was that? Sorry, I was talking to Copilot. Oh, okay. Oh, you just asked uh, if you wanted to turn his head. Okay. Yeah, sh ship has stopped moving. It looks like you're still swinging a little bit. All right, yeah, copy that. We'll wait a couple minutes and then. Call on another. You have another um, okay. cutthroat eel, maybe? It's fairly sandy here. We're in between these two mounds, so. But we're still seeing these crinoid guys. These guys don't look like they really um, depend on any sort of firm substrate like coral or anything. They look like they can dig their kind of rooted tentacle feet into um, the sands and everything. And if we look here, actually, we're coming up on, a, on this wide sand patch here. And you can see a lot of these ripple structures um, corresponding to the actual currents that we're seeing here. And you can see that... Um, the ripples are going in multi in very different patterns. We're along that small little um, ledge that we're seeing right um, on the right hand side. We start to see that they're perpendicular to that ledge and that's indicating that the current system is following along that ledge and forming those ripples. Whereas further out onto that system, we're seeing them not just parallel, but then also again, they change direction again, which again is indicative of how the current can actually maneuver around these sediment substrates here, forming the ripples. And that's a good indication on how fast the current goes and in what direction the current can flow as well. I can't believe you just made sand sound interesting. Sand <laughs> is interesting. You just have to know where to look. <laughs> That is a rarity, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually quite interesting. I mean, five years ago, I would have never thought of sand in that manner also. Um, during the course, I have an undergraduate degree in biology, and um, I didn't know I was into geology. Mm -hmm. I started at a lab in, in the geoscience department at the university, and I kind of fell in love with the people that were there and what I was doing and I started to slowly realize that how much of my biology is useful in the geologic world mm -hmm. and with that I went to um, my boss and at the time um, the, the lab manager and I said look I would like to pursue <laughs> a graduate level course okay. in geology mm -hmm. and they said well what do yeah. you know and I said like nothing right <laughs> now, so. and they said come along we'll teach you so um, it ended up being right my total transition into move. the geology Distance, department and starting my PhD in right. geology and um, frankly I had a lot to catch up on yeah. 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 Um, but it was a great maneuver on my part and now I get to explore this whole world where geology meets biology and Studying the coral framework systems and how they change the morphology of the seafloor is just one of the coolest things that I think Ladies can ever be studied. So I get to actually relate both of my fields of interest together, behind. and I think that's so something that I would... I'm so glad I came upon, and I hope spot. to spend my whole career yeah, so. doing studying things well, and being part of, you know, <laughs> expeditions like this one where we're yeah. getting to see for the I mean, first time what you, life is yeah, like down here. Below. 
the main part and of making it, sand so. sound interesting. <laughs> and making sound sound though. interesting. Yeah, it's blowing us away from the ship. Makes it easy. Yeah. Roger, watch it. I'll check into it. Thank you. Thank you. On the video feed, I'm sure you mean? Yeah. Okay, Roger. And again, we're approaching those lovely sand ripples, which are able to tell us the overall current direction and speed that the current is going in. And you can even see on the slightly northern portion and then that southern portion, there's almost ripples that are coming together and joining down further um, down slope. And we can then estimate to see again how these current systems are forming. And it's almost like its own little channelized system at the seafloor. And these are minor features that we're able to see. And if they go along long enough, they can actually be preserved in the rock record. And we can then determine what type of feature and what type of area we're looking at based off just the sand ripples in the rock record alone. Um, Shannon, if you can hear me, um, Shirley's requesting a live fleeter mouse screen. I'm guessing in on screen three, if we can do that. We're getting a phone dial tone. Well, not sure if that was resolved or not, but... Here we still have a lot of those crinoid systems and we're coming upon some more coral rubble at this feature rather than those that we see before. And just to make then a direct comparison to those ripples that we've seen, now when we introduce more coral rubble to the feature, you start to see a lot less of these ripples. And that's again because the coarse and heaviness of the coral rubble prevents the sand being um, deposited and those ripple features from forming because it's holding on to the sand. It's making it too heavy for the current to really have an impact on the overall structure of the seafloor. I think I'm seeing some Thalassia detritus, which is uh, seagrass, but I'm not quite sure. If we can get down tighter so I can see some of these brown, yeah. long yeah. thread-like items. That's that. not a crinoid. <laughs> Yeah, that, I don't think right. <laughs> this one is. That this one, one is. in the center, yeah. It's kind of like very right bright. Here. Yeah, just anywhere in there. I'm seeing them kind of scattered about, so I'm just trying yeah. to see if I can get in. And there we go. Calm down a little bit. Yeah, what's that? yeah so you can see and it flicking around in the in the wind, wind, in the current. <laughs> Absolutely, probably. Oh, nice. Yeah, it looks like Thalassia to me. So. Hold Amazingly, it. this you can see these brown, um, br brown flat pieces are actually a uh, seagrass in the upper oh, yep. left hand upper corner. Left. It gets me kicking up some dust. Watch yep. it. No worries. Great representation yeah. of how fine the sediments are. There's this, this uh, sea brittle star again. We saw him earlier. He's very uh, soft, it looks like. Right, yeah. I'd wide. like to pick him up and give him a little squeeze. <laughs> Yeah, you can come wide whenever you're set video. Yeah, so these brown, these brown that, stems are actually a seagrass yeah. from oh, the surf, set. from, you know, really it's shallow floating. water. Yeah, that's floated all the way down here. Bridge Nav received, thank you. 
Look at that. This There's actually quite a bit of it. Pilots just completed the move. Understood now. Thank you. Thanks, now. And there's another, like, cusk eel or some kind of fish. I think I'm just starting to peek out there. You got some smooth sand. There I am. I'm going to go after that fish I can uh, adjust. Any interest on fish on screen? All right, keep moving. We're back on that rippled sandy area. Generally, now if we'd like to keep the ROV as the main vehicle. Oh. Yeah, it was the boat. That's why I was changing it. You want the ROV? Uh, I think. The ROV, yeah. Sometimes for okay. yeah, sometimes for recovery. People switch it to the ship, so it like um, adjusts with the ship. Yeah. Okay. I was using the. I did the sled just so we could look at. You know the distance and everything because you're just about to waypoint five yeah so if you so select so. the waypoint five you yeah. can see the sled's distance away from it on the data display number two true yeah okay yeah so mm -hmm. we, we like to keep the rv yeah. as uh, the main That's just the main. so you can easily drop points if we take samples or yeah okay good point anything on that note it was the boat was the only problem so i was trying to change it back yeah, yeah, I got you. This morning. Do it the ROV. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, because it looks like on the next move we'll be pretty much over waypoint five. So, which looks like you might be getting close to ready for that, huh? Uh, yeah, let me get back to center. We can probably get another one then. Not rushing. Better. Again. Now we're, I think we're, we're about ready. there. Ready to go? Ready. We're coming up some ready. patches Bridge of some now. denser coral rubble and ready then now. also some finer grain yes, sediments. Ready for another move? We're seeing uh, um, we slight changes okay. in these Distance, from meters, small patches of, of the more dense material versus of more of the sediments. Oh. And um, coming up upon, we have even more of these sediment ripple features. Roger that. Thank and you. We can start to see now. These are are a little more um, more established, if you will. Um, they have some deeper curvatures around the actual waves themselves, sediments in those trough areas versus the crests. And this, again, gives us some really good indication on how the current is moving, how it's forming, and why are the ripples in this area versus not in the other area. And um, that's due to a lot of the coral rubble that we're seeing. It's preventing the ripples from actually forming. However, if the current is strong enough, we do still see some of those ripples form in between and alongside the coral rubble patches. There seems to be a little bit of some dead fragments of some coral there. Yeah, it looks like we might have some recently dead lophelia. Watch lead nav. Yes. Go ahead, nav. Uh, just want to advise, we're coming up on waypoint five. Uh, should be right over it on this next move. Just wanted to update you. Okay, we're good. Ooh, is that a stocked crinoid that we Ooh. see there? Yeah. That is, there. I believe, a Nadaria, but I forget the name of it. So if we can zoom in on this flower-like thing. Yeah, that sounds would good. be nice. Give me one second. Yeah, this is a type there. of um, soft coral. Oh, so it's not. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a soft coral. Mm -hmm. All right, Peter, you want to do a partial for me? Sure thing. Center out. Yeah, hold that, please. 
Right next to also some dead seagrass that you were mm -hmm. mentioning earlier. Yeah, the Thalassia. With a cusk eel coming into view. Anyone at Harbor Branch remember the name of this guy? All right, video if you want to come on more. I'll center it as you go. Roger that. And yeah, just let me know if you want any specific views other than what I'm doing. Understood. Thank you, Pat. Let's just take a bit more zoom. Sorry, video. Kind of crept up on it. No problem. I'll come out of the hair. You can rotate down there. Awesome. <laughs> no one in our branch knows the actual scientific <laughs> name. Well, good. That makes me feel better for not remembering. <laughs> but it looks really cool. Very mm -hmm. kind of translucent. And it's just another indication that maybe under I'll the substrate there is something part nice that it's mm -hmm. grasping onto yeah, or maybe um, it is using a lot of the sediment there just digging underneath in order to hold itself against the current umbelula umbelula scott did i get that i pronounce that right that's um terrible umbelula umbelula yep. is what scott francis said focus on the head Yes. Close enough. Deep. Close enough. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't try that one. Oh, it's a sea pen. He's the type of sea pen. Oh, Am okay. I seeing um, these dark spots? Is that it's is that its intestines or it's like um, it has a esophage esophageal like structure? Silly eye, hairy. It's a little hairy. Yeah. On the stock there. Oh, he said it's anchored in the sediment. Yeah. So he's anchored in the sediment. That's okay, cool. so he's not using a hard substrate if under him. Come right, just a touch if you have the yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. But yeah. Usually, no sea pens are more of like a long stalk with the tentacles coming off the side, whereas this one is a long stalk with the tentacles clustered as like a flower that's at the top. Cool. So that's kind of cool. Oh, Scott's calling in, so we can talk about this guy. I'll just kind of follow it as Roger. it drifts. Mm -hmm. Wait on that for a second. But it's really interesting. How many tentacles does he have on each one of those? Uh, maybe ten? Eight? I'm counting six. Two, three, four, maybe eight. Can't tell it's moving. Eight. Scott says eight. Okay. Oh, but the octocoralia, right? So that was, that makes sense. That's it. Yeah, right. that's an octocoral. That's eight tentacles. Sorry. So it's not then a sea pen. Uh, we're no, it is a sea pen. It is a sea pen, but not yeah. yeah. okay. Octocor 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 Octocoralia. They're in the sea pen. Or in the, the sea pens are in Octocoralia yeah. versus uh, Hexacoralia, right? Which has six tentacles. Yes, like Scott, did that just. Is that you? That is me. You covered it all. You're doing a great job. Okay, good. Yeah, you can see the left end it has an inflated bulb that it used to anchor itself in sediment. So this is an interesting subgroup of the Hexacoralia that are all uh, necessarily adapted to okay, live so in soft them. sediment. Um, and so if we were to we are stuck. have this kind of stuck and tug it up, Copy what that. you'd see is oh, this to inflated um, structure uh, right, down let's there. Let's take the our last that views. That's right. Um, and you're right about this being a fairly unusual sea pen. There's a fair amount of diversity in the sea pens. Uh, but this one okay. grows with these very yes. long um, axial polyp, and then all the polyps are clustered at the end. And pilots, that's awesome. right over yeah, waypoint I said five. it's the genus Umbelula. In fact, we already know that there are many species of Umbelula that aren't related to each other, here, and that's still being worked uh, out. More we have a hard time now. distinguishing them in, um, one, two, well, in situ. And most recently, uh, there was one group yeah. split off of the Porcupinella. No, no, no. One ninety six. One ninety six. Two hundred. So it's growing south. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of comes back a little bit. And the dark, the dark area the, uh, inside each of the polyps so um, stalks is the the pharynx. Is what you said. Is the pharynx right? So. Exactly. Yeah. So you were the intestine. So mm -hmm. basically, that dark colored area is a pharynx. You can think of it as the fur. So the mouth would be just at the end of that in the ring of tentacles. 
and then there's that long tube that extends into its stomach. The stomach mm -hmm. is actually called a gastrovascular cavity. Looking at what they're trying to do, it's like open. he's trying to get to these high Everything points. Everything goes into the mouth, whatever's not digested, yeah. has to go back out that same opening. This one. Yeah, so. uh, yeah that, that tube, you can see that in all the optical polyps that we look at. Theoretically, you should be able to see that structure. It's just some of them, they're more pigmented than others. And right, in nice. those polyps, those polyps Sounds are good. really tall. Yeah. That pharynx is actually quite long. They're not always that long. Awesome. Like from Interesting. And do they all usually have a the long the stalk like this, the one we had just yeah. seen? Uh, the genus Umbalula, yes, it does. In general, you um, probably I still have I a little bit of swing. All C pens, and of so. course, when I say all, there's going to be an exception. That but all C pens good. do yeah. have an internal axial rod. So they do have an internal skeleton, but it's unbranched. And Swings the way that the C pen morphology is described, minutes. it's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, this must there's be actually the one current. giant polyp. So what I described <laughs> is a peduncle, that swollen part, is actually part of one polyp that's embedded in the sediment and it has the axial rod in it. And then all of its brothers and sisters are budding off it of that polyp. So all the, the other polyps like you see are arising from that one giant one. Oh, wow. Uh, that gives it support, yeah. And wow. I see that there's a question in the chat room. Uh, is there chitin in the peduncle? Um, no, I don't believe there's any chitin in the peduncle. It is the same soft tissue. That skeletal rod itself is protein-based. Uh, there may be some calcium salts embedded in it. Uh, there's still um, questions to study about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically the uncle is being inflated with seawater. There are some polyps that we can't really see. They're called siphonozoids. They're miniature. They don't have tentacles, but they're responsible for pumping water into and out of the colony. Mm -hmm. And so you can control the size of the binocular. Awesome. Wow. Cool. Thanks, Scott. So we're making our way to waypoint five. Is that correct? So we're at waypoint five now. We're actually just passing. Um, so now we're heading to waypoint six, oh, we which is our to south now. Of the that, you know, if we were to correct. get to we yeah. just rocky habitat, five. I don't think we will on today's dive, but in another dive down here. I think, and we uh, saw a sea uh, pen that was living on the rock. Yeah, I think you're really interesting. stabilizing. Uh, some, it's jumping well, seven around years ago bit. now, I think you're pretty much over five now. Pen were so if you're ready for a move, rock pen, uh, you want to go ahead and make that change to 200, though. Yeah, so Sirius is facing 200. Yeah, set to go. And it's I think we're all set. Only a okay. Specimen that was I will on the cruise that, get it uh, in. I was on Bridge in 2009 in the Bahamas. Good enough. So Oops, stand by. Never mind. Here. Ooh. Um, and we would love Roger to be able that. to augment Trails. that one specimen. Interesting. We'll definitely um, keep an eye out for it. Is it a relative of this? So we would be expecting to see the like the flower-like structure at the top, like or is it a typical sea pen with the... It's a more typical one. Okay. You would see polyps all along the axis. And, but it would be growing on rock as opposed to like the soft sediment. Yep, exactly. And you okay. can see that peduncle very clearly. Um, I, I think of it as a, it's like a plunger, like a toilet plunger, mm -hmm. where that peduncle is now suction cupping itself to the rock. Oh. Awesome. You'll um, know it when you see it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> keep an eye out for them. Yeah, let me, let me double check. Pilot, if you would like to give some specs about the ROV to discover, that would be a great time to do so. Um, yeah. Sounds good. So, I think, yeah, I heard this mentioned before. Um, D2 in person is usually a lot larger than most people think. Um, D2 is about, yeah, 9 feet tall, maybe 12 feet wide, um, or 12 feet in depth, maybe 8 feet wide, and weighs about 10,000 pounds. 
Um, so D2 is very heavy, um, but in water is actually buoyant, a few hundred pounds buoyant. Um, so D2 actually floats in water, even though uh, she weighs about 10,000 pounds, and that's due to syntactic foam that we use on D2, which is the large um, white top portion that you can see on D2, um, especially from the view from the Cirrus camera. And the syntactic foam is still um, in air. It's still very heavy. It's made of three blocks total on D2. Um, I think the largest one is maybe about 1,200 pounds. Bridge, nav. Uh, but in water, uh, it floats, and that's how we're able to uh, keep D2 buoyant. Um, Bridge nav, go ahead. Yeah, D2 is you, too. Were you requesting a position move? Manipulator arms. Um, yes, when you're ready. Uh, 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 starboard side. Okay. Just, just let us know. Each uh, seven right. functions. Uh, that's what we use for, obviously, our sampling. Go ahead, on scene. Yeah, go ahead and give it to me. We have full muster. Okay, Roger that. Um, let me confirm with the pilots if they're comfortable with that move now. And uh, we'll, okay, I'm getting confirmation. Okay, yeah, if you're so. ready for the move, uh, here it is. 30 meters at a bearing of two zero zero at a speed of decimal two knots. All right, I'll set that up for you. Okay, Roger that. Thank you. Great, thank you, pilot. Okay. We um, we'll yeah, get that move in. No okay. worries. You're pull getting pulled on. Yeah, if you want me to keep talking, I can. I just wanted to wait till the comms are free. Sorry, uh, guys. No, you're good. Dang. You were speaking about the two manipulator arms that we have. Yes. Yeah, so you were discussing about the manipulator arms. Oh, yeah, so we use... Um, sorry, I was lost in thought. Uh, two manipulator arms. One's a Schilling Orion on the port side. On the starboard side is a... Um, from Craft Tele Robotics called the Predator. Um, the Predator is a little larger, um, and the control that we use is actually a miniature version of the arm itself for the right side. Um, so when we sample using that manipulator arm, uh, we actually manipulate it with our hands up in the control room, um, and it kind of mimics. So the way you move the uh, control arm is mimicked by the um, the manual is considered a slave arm because it copies what the master arm does um, so we're able to get really fine control uh, with the craft arm um, it's able to lift about I think fully extended about 200 pounds um, and it has a reach of about I think six to eight feet so it can fully extend out and then pick up a 200 pound load um, so it's very strong what do you say? You have a skate up there, it looks like. Uh, to your right. To your right. right. Oh, okay. And then, uh, but it, we have fine enough control where we've practiced, uh, we've actually been able to pick up eggs um, <laughs> without destroying them. Nice. So we have really fine control. And then the Orion arm on the opposite side, on the left side, or port side, um, still has seven functions, still equally as strong. Um, but we don't have the same controls for it, so it's not as ad agile, uh, but still very functional. And then we use the combination of those two arms to collect uh, biology samples and rock samples. We have uh, four compartments for biology samples, and then we have two rock boxes. Um, all up front on a drawer that can actually extend uh, from the vehicle. Can we look at 6 o'clock while yeah, you I continue we to describe? <laughs> Getting there. Your amazing machine. I believe this is Bentho Betas, which is an electric. All right, video, you want um, to come in partial for me? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, hold Maybe that. some fish That's people great. out there can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but I believe this is Bentho Betas. All right, video can come in more. Could be correct, correct, though. Either way, it's definitely a ray. It says stingrays are actually related to sharks. He's got lots of spines on his tail. Okay, I'll take a bit more soon. Yep, whatever you need, let me know. You guys can hear the, um, they're doing drills. 
Did you tilt down just a hair at the moment? You got it. Perfect. Then could you tilt up slowly just uh, towards his tail? Yeah. He's got lots of sharp spines. Take a bit more zoom. On his, on his tail. Do you want to center on the tip of the tail? Sure. I think I'll zoom a bit on the tail. Likely these yeah. are um, venomous spines. Most stingrays have venomous spines. Uh, they're usually located at the base of the tail, though, so these are extend all the way out to, back to the end of it, yep. to the head. But I certainly wouldn't want to step on one. I'm going to come out to keep them in frame. Okay to zoom? Uh, yeah. Cool. Try to keep him centered as he goes. If we have any fish people out I'll there, feel to free to frame. correct me. Oh, I think he might have found something to eat. Sorry. Oh, I think he ate something. That? So their mouths are on the bottom side. You can't see it. Uh, you can only see it if he was to pick up. And then he's a perculum, which is where the sand is coming out of. He must have gotten something to eat. Oop. <laughs> Munching away. Yep. I don't know what it is. It seems to be hard to... Yeah, but so. so that's where he's intaking. He's intaking water, right, to flow over his gills. And let's see if we can. If if he picks up, we can see his mouth. But it looks like right now he's got something to munch on underneath underneath him. We should be just about completing that last move. Copy that. Uh, it's probably time. Okay. Whatever it was, maybe it was a good snack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for It's video. gone. Okay. <laughs> I don't see any remnants. All right. Full I, I know the bridge is still kind of busy, cool. but I'll, uh, I'll get an update here in a second. Yeah. Now, nice. do we know exactly yeah. what species that was? I thought maybe the right, genus bent the betas, but I'll now that I look at it, he's not quite round yeah. enough, so I'm not really I'll sure if that's going. what he is. Um, and there's no fish people online to correct me, so. Uh, Bentha betas is an electric uh, electric rig. Oh, nice. But I'm so pretty sure they're more round the and yeah, bulbous in the head. Nice. We got some kind of lump here. Could be a sponge, maybe. Uh, is that? You want to peek? Yeah, this white one at six o'clock. Might be trash. Bit. I don't know. Let's hope for sponge. Yeah. Uh, video, you want to do like a fabric, maybe. partial? Mm. Sure. Yeah, it kind of looks like. I'll come in quickly. Just for some we have. <laughs> Is it a trash? Is it a bear like underwear? <laughs> yeah, it looks like a waistband. Of <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, all right, mm. you, you come on. Nice. Thanks. Very good. Yeah, it's looking like the ship stabilized. So I'm looking down to six five. Six five, copy that. Oh, you're still still, still good. pretty in tight. Okay. <laughs> Scott's calling it a boxer yeah. brief sponge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you'll probably 
You're swinging pretty quick. I think that I was think a first for me. The current. Yeah. <laughs> so. the current dro did, it did drop a little bit. Yeah. Um, or actually, a lot compared to when we where were at it was the peak. up here. Yeah. You're down behind the peak now. So, so. It eventually it might pick up again, but. Yeah. Cool. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Scott said. I think for me it was a first as, first as well, which I give thanks. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I don't even want to know. No. <laughs> Going through a quick change here. <laughs> Shirley said it could have been a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope it can just degrade. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> oh, too late, Shirley. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think we're headed to waypoint seven. Is that is that the case? Um, I think it's we were on we're our way to waypoint six. So we're still six. on our way to six. Yeah. Okay. Our waypoints are. We try to target the top of these mounds. Yeah. These little Great. rounded areas. Which, uh, if you want to see what we're talking about, you can click over to feed three. Um, in which case, you can see all of our um, our location on the ridge. Um, the data with regards to the ROV, uh, depth and such, and uh, the live feed um, detail. We're about a quarter of the way um, to waypoint six. Um, let me ask. Hey, hey, Nav, how much further till we are? Um, how much further do we have to go? Um, well, we're headed towards waypoint six. Um, if you're looking at high pack, uh, you'll see that right now we're about, say, 90 meters from waypoint six. Okay. How about to the end of the dive? Do you know how far we are? Uh, uh, Time-wise? Um, I think she's looking for depth. I mean, distance. Oh, okay. Uh, so waypoint six, and then we have waypoint seven. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that that's all... Uh, we have. One. Okay. And so we got 100, so about 200 meters. 200 meters, okay. So, yeah, about 200 meters. That sounds good. And hopefully we'll end on a high note. We're going to be at the at the crest of one of those smaller um, pinnacles at the ridge here that we're looking at. So right now we're still in between um, those two, which is probably why we're seeing more sediment than actual uh, coral rubble. Yeah, and, pilots um, is an update. You heard 200 meters. Um, yeah. It's about an hour. We're not seeing a, a lot of those speed. framework structuring corals, and, uh, but we, um, we do still see the, a lot of the hours, rubble. 45 minutes and about uh, quite a bit so of good. those crinoids we've been yep. seeing Plenty throughout the time. dive. Yeah, we have the current coming right from behind us, right? Uh, yeah. And uh, feel free to and lose the skids whenever you'd like video. Roger that. Thank you, brother. It's looking like y'all are stabilized, too. Sorry. Yeah, we could probably go ahead and get another move. Yeah. Okay. Can you slide right. along? Roger that. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Same. Same. Any interest in the, uh, the any, waste? Anything growing in it? Uh, we can take a look. Yeah. Video, you want to do a quick... Looks like there's something. Sure, there's a brittle, couple of there. brittle stores making at home. Just to confirm, you want to go ahead with the move, though? Yeah. Okay. Bridge snap. Go ahead. Okay, to zoom. Uh, yes, y'all ready for another move? Standing by. Yeah, we can do those wonders. Okay. With some right. distance, 30 meters, it. a bearing of 200, and a speed of decimal Maybe thinking it's a coral. Yep. Copy, we'll do. Okay, Roger that. Thank you. 
blowing up, probably in our thrusters. Yeah. Okay, go for a bit more zoom. Sure. If, let's wanna Could you tilt down just a hair pipe? Coming down. Perfect. Maybe just a touch more. Come down. I don't see anything in it. Generally, there's a little fish or some other creature. We've got a tiny little crab up here. He's cute. He's at noon. Okay, I'd like to take a little more um, zoom on the... These ophioroids are probably ophiothrax is my corner. guess yeah. on the... Cool. Um, Let me know if you want me to adjust. We tilt down just a bit. Tilt down, coming down. Get those ophioroids in there. You want to dive further? I don't think this yep. bottle's been here very long, but... Hold in there. You want me to is come over to the right? Let me just hold this one for a touch. Okay. See the little, um, yeah, in um, inside the bottle. Those almost looks like pteropods, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Go shows. ahead to come yeah. over to the right. If come and over. we're looking on the, the left-hand nice. side of the bottle right now. Oh, it just got out of um, screen. But there were some, like, bubbly-looking shells there. inside the actual um, glass container. And those are known as pteropods. Let's see. Sorry, pteropods. And oh, those I'm are also skeleton producing a zoom on um, the bottle little bugs that swim around in the ocean. I'm using the term bugs loosely. <laughs> they're they're um, a, they're a, um, they call them a sea butterfly, oh. right? So they're yeah. they're a, a mollusk or a yeah, gastropod, yeah. So they're of that origin, and we actually see quite a few of those in a lot right. of the loose sediments that we have around. Mm -hmm. And you can see even now in this close-up um, all of the sediments that are here. So we are seeing a lot of the like round bubbly grains or probably these foraminiferas. We're seeing a lot of the sponge spicules all around, um, some even like little skeletal debris from other fragments and what have you. So it's actually quite lively. It's not just like, okay, there's sand. Um, there's actually a lot of skeletal material and a lot we can learn just from the grains themselves of how the currents were transporting them, what they are, what was alive at certain points, and why they are even here. Can we tilt to the left and just see if there's anything inside the bottle? Coming over. So yeah, you can see the real sharp looking texture inside the bottle. That's the pteropod shells. Yeah, the broken up ones. And mm -hmm. there even seems to be just a few intact there. Um, right in the center okay, now, inside them. the bottle. Go ahead and that little shells. bubbly shell feature right in the middle. Mm -hmm. We got a squat lobster at noon. Those were those shell fragments we were talking about earlier, and then even some other gastropod shells within mm -hmm. it. So, um, okay, I'll frame it not up. sure how they got in it, but it seems to be quite a coalescence of, of a lot of pteropods and gastropod shells in there. Um, and yeah, they look really great. Where did that little squat lobster go? Oh, he's I right think, there. Yeah, he's right there. I like noon. Okay, video is clear. Did you have any interest in that squat lobster? It's okay. yeah, just to look at. It's okay. Okay, coming up. Which, uh, uh, so it's uh, almost center right, right there. there. Oh, it's attached uh, to the little. Uh, of course. A little rock. Yep. Okay. Oh, he's Six. so cute. Wow. Is he a squat lobster? I don't I think so. Oh, I have to see him move for I sure. But So a full lobster, their um, abdomen, right? Is that their abdomen? It's fully extended. Mm -hmm. And in a crab, that it's part is actually okay. tucked yeah, all the way small. under and uh, almost sealed there. Coming up a little. And squat lobsters are in between, so they actually take that really long good. tail and and press it to their, to their uh, abdomen or, or extend it out. Video is clear whenever. Pilot's clear. Perfect. Watch leads, are you all set? Oop. All right, we will continue. All right, coming forward. And coming off. Okay. Assuming to lose this, it's just a hair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. 
So nav, bridge. Bridge and nav, go ahead. Uh, it looks like the position move is complete. Ah, oh, roger that. Thank you. So we're coming up on a lot of um, sand grains again, and we see some of white little guys right, sticking up out of the ground. Not sure word. entirely what yeah. they are. Um, Maybe some little coral pieces or so they'd like to come back some other sponges or contour. what have right you. Right here. Between, yeah. They want to go so for folks following along on shore, okay. uh, like we've spent... So it's okay. been a pretty good chunk of time up here on the top of this yeah. uh, escarpment so feature. Kind of take, uh, um, looks, looks like, like we, we actually may yeah. try and go back uh, to, the, to the to the sort of the yeah. crest of this okay. escarpment. So we're, we're pretty well into it, like about uh, 80 meters it's into about it. And go back to the crest of the meters, escarpment. We were roughly. seeing more of so those uh, coral rubble and, and relic skeletons and some of those standing skeletons, even though they looked like they were past their prime. Um, yeah, if anybody really feels strongly meters. about That's staying so on top of these smaller heavy. mounds, uh, uh, please let us zero. know either via the telephone or the chat room. Do you want to move? Otherwise, um, we felt uh, like where those surface. relic standing skeletons were may, may have been a more okay. uh, rewarding um, site for us. Well, just um, and, and we feel we we think the next mound here is probably just going to be the same. So when you guys get in line, although you never really know, let me know. Okay. Sounds good. All right, swing it around. Copy that at 220. Pen to a 250? Yes. yes. There was some um, white looking Ooh. object up on the top of that Stand on the left hand yep. side. Nice. Further up. Yep. Right at the top. Unless okay. those are yep. uh, still reminiscent of those uh, boxer reef sponges that zoom? we were looking at sure. earlier. Looks like trash. That might oh, be still some rubber trash. gloves. Or a trash bag, yeah. Looked rubber gloves, very yeah. Very suspicious. You're right. <laughs> yeah, looks like trash. Okay. Look for to come out. Thanks, pilot. Oh, oh we do have a starfish, though, um, off to that left hand side there. Okay. Let's mm. come back, Let's frame that up. Oh, yeah. Well, we're locked. Okay. Are you comfortable with me moving over your co pilot? Yeah, I can. We're stationary, so I can go wherever you need. So it's good. Yeah. And I think that's the first starfish that we've really um, seen so on this dive. That's not an Ophiore. Copilot, you think I should just put a drop there as a note? Just so we have it? Is it worth it? Or? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Cause it'll track like the path. We'll just head that way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anyone on shore have any indication as to what kind of um, starfish this is? I bet Chris Mond does. All right, video, whenever you are ready, feel free to take it. Roger, Pat. So this is a biscuit star, right? So or a cookie over. star. And it's a uh, goni asterity. That's the best I can get you. Well, thanks. That's that more than I had. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> goni aster, maybe the genus. Do they normally look so pale, or? Yeah, they range in color. Sometimes they're uh, okay, like a bright pink. A Sometimes okay. they're white. Just about on the I don't know point. if it's a different. Um, species or just a different color morph, but they're super okay. cute. They are. I mean, if a starfish can be cute, I guess. <laughs> it wasn't Patrick. Well, we all love SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can see his two feet blowing in the wind under, on his underside. In the current. Mm -hmm. Wind, yeah, current. <laughs> That's what I meant. He's quite um, almost scaly on top. Is that 
for a specific purpose, or do we not know? No, I don't know um, that much about them. But most starfish have those like scales, right? So I know yeah. there's some people out there who are really yeah, good at starfish. Match, but but sure. but just the difference in size versus on the edges mm -hmm. to the interior, it looks really interesting. Yeah, it's got a really cool texture. I wonder if that has anything to do with the muscles or underneath to try to get them to move or... Yes, yeah, so they have a, a the hydroskeleton, right? Like water-based skeletal system. But I, I honestly don't know what the point of their physical texture on the surface is, if what purpose that serves mm -hmm. um, in any starfish. I don't because a lot of them have that really cool texture, right? So okay, video is clear. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Our watch leads clear. Yes. All there good. Thank you. Coming back. Come out. All right. Yeah, and just to be clear, we're coming over to a 250 and starting to head a little more southwest, correct? Yes. Right. So now the plan is we're going to That's change right. direction. Okay, I'm going to yep. start coming to We're going more starboard. towards the shelf break, the, the ridge that's there, mm -hmm. um, because we tended like to we see more of the overall framework five. systems of corals yeah, um, in that location, About despite, that. like Mike that. said, being coming maybe around. slightly past their prime. But um, we might get more, um, frankly, a little more action on that edge. So uh, we have now made the decision to follow along the ridge edge. Okay, 250. All right. If we have not called in a move already. No, I, no, I haven't. Feel ready? free to go ahead and get that started. Yeah, so in order for okay. us to, if you can hear the pilot go chatter, in order for us yeah, to move in a new direction, we have to have the normal. ship we'll actually okay. um, reposition Brave itself now. so that Go ahead. Um, Sirius uh, can yes, then float ready for a move? Sure am. And then okay. D2 can float along behind. 30 meters at a bearing of 250 at a speed of decimal 2 knots. 30 um, meters, 250. There was something floating. Yeah. I'm not sure what it's off Roger screen that. now. Thank you. There seems to be quite a lot of that Thalassia seagrass down here. Yeah, I'm surprised how much there is. Yeah. Considering we're like, I don't know, 80 miles <laughs> from shore, 88 miles from shore. So, I mean, that's, and seagrass only grows a few meters down. So it's, you know, we're pretty far away. Yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't degraded yet. Mm -hmm. We have a delta. Just as we, uh, it's pretty cold here, slope. though. So that's pretty uh, common, yeah, right? Where yeah. stuff degrades much slower than. True. Maybe it, it comes here to degrade over time. Giving some sort of life to a seamless, empty horizon. Except for those crinoids. We're still seeing a lot of these crinoids. They seem to like this location here. We also have a couple of white stalking things. I'm not sure what those are from this far away. Oh, so Scott suggests maybe it's hurricane related where it was ripped out during the storm and then has passed over into like the current pulled it over into this deeper spot. That is a, a, possibility. a great possibility, object. considering also that um, how Dorian Gosh. impacted the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. down a little bit more. Could either be from that so. uh, more eastern location or um, western. It, um, Scott, so. yeah, even though it is oh. conjecture, it's, it's actually pretty likely in how it uh, affects us. We know that these current systems really reach um, high quality or yeah. high quality, high intensity winds and can rip up quite, and well, right. as we've really seen, we can, it can gotcha. do quite a lot of damage. So even um, with the seagrass so shallow, it can absolutely tear up some and, and bring it over. And maybe even from the Florida coast, it was um, just, they died off and are started to travel then in the currents and sink down. And that was a white madripoora coral, really small one. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think that's what probably a lot of these white spots are. I got something in the water column, but it might just be schmutz. <laughs> Dead nothingness. <laughs> snot. Sea snot, we call it. Sea snot. <laughs> is that schmutz of interest? or hmm? Is it schmutz of interest to look at? No, it's no. okay. Understood. It's just schmutz. I'm liking the terminology. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a schmutz expert out there, but I'm definitely not one, so... Yeah, the current's definitely picked up. Yeah, something, something white here. That, Lee. 
Poke it out of the sediment. You want to do a snap zoom as we come over it with you? Sure thing. Thank you. Okay. Feel free to come in. Yeah, it looks like newly dead lophilia. Where the heck is this stuff coming from? <laughs> I need to find this reef. <laughs> it's making me feel crazy. I mean, there's a possibility it's been buried there, right? And then there's no way for stuff to grow on it. Correct. That's why it'd still be Correct. white. Thanks, and it's in this really soft sand. Correct. So maybe it isn't new. Maybe it's, you know, newly dead. Maybe it's pretty old. I get, pull it up and look at the how degraded the coralites are, which are really sensitive to to being, you know, beat up. Yeah. Over time. And it's highly possible. I mean, anything within just a few centimeters under the yeah, sand likely won't get that same that um, iron Cups manganese encrusting that we yeah, see on the surface back. here just because of it's been buried. It doesn't the have direct access to the, the water column. And over time, yeah. the currents, as they change, these ripples do move with the currents, um, much like your your sand dunes in in desert areas, they do move with wind. These current systems and ripples move with the current, and it can expose new stuff that hasn't been exposed in quite some time. So despite the coral maybe showing that it's very white in skeletal systems, it might not be. So but that one did look pretty new. Usually you still get to see some sort of dull yellowish tint on them if they're not, but who knows? There's lots of thalassia detritus. And now, now we're seeing these Getting like the black coating on the that last move. on the uh, coral rubble again. Right? Um, it's pretty calm in here. Yep. Copilot degrees, we can probably just keep moving. We have some distance Mostly to sediment, travel though. before. Yeah, yeah. Seems definitely to be some distance. Pretty, good. pretty steady. I see area Soma in the far distance at like uh, 10, 11 o'clock. They're quite common out here. Still with these brown crinoids. I wonder when Chuck will be back. He can tell me what they are. <laughs> you want me to see if we can just tack it on and keep moving or? You can just keep going individual moves. Yeah. Case okay. you come across something. Okay. We're at 829, 830 sure meters underwater. Look, looked like you were getting pretty far out. So. Off the Blake Plateau still. still. Swing. For those of you who are just tuning yeah, in. I think it's generally better um, practice to call we it We started individual. this dive on the base of a ridge okay. at about 870 meters deep, and we came up a, a fairly, uh, well, about a 30, 45 degree slope. And feel free to, uh, uh, most of it's covered in like this Lophelia coral rubble. Uh, we have yet to find an actual like. reef that these sh these rubble pieces should be coming from. So um, I'm not sure where it is, but we haven't seen it yet. Uh, it is likely here, though, I'm hoping. Um, we've seen lots of this crinoid or here, this brown star-shaped item. Critter looks like he's the most dominant species out here. And it's fairly flat up here on the top of the ridge. And this spot, we are headed back to the uh, the break, the crest front. Hopefully looking for a little more uh, life. A little action. Mm -hmm. Overall, what we're seeing here, though, is actually that yeah, we're learning a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that the tops of these after. mounds are dedicated to reef structure systems. So we saw some more closer to the ridge edge, um, slightly on the break of, of this where the slope meets the crest. And uh, we saw more framework structures in that specific area rather than directly on top. So this tells us that, you know, it's not always the top that it has the most action and, and has the most life or is the most beneficial to these reef systems. We 
We are at the highest points, right? We've hit the highest points in the area. Yeah, at waypoint four, mm -hmm. if I am correct, we hit quite a, a high there. Is it 815 or something? 8, 825 maybe it was that one. Maybe, I'm not entirely sure where that one was, but we are currently in between these two ridges, which is why we're probably seeing more of the whole rubble effect and also some more sediments that are um, cascading over the coral rubble in this area. We're seeing a lot of the thalassia grass. And these crinoids seem to be just pretty happy anywhere along this entire trek that we're looking at here. Bridge now. Go ahead, Nav. I uh, just wanted to confirm. It looked like we were stabilizing off that last move. Yes, that move is complete. Ah, uh, okay, received. Thank you. Yeah. If you could do a quick little zoom here on this white oh, object. That would be great. Okay, so the last move is complete. Excellent. Oh, what's this white thing? Yeah, looks like a shell of some sort. Yeah. Or a gastropod. Mm -hmm. We oh, are. Oh, he's cool. Oh, look, he looks so happy, too. I can uh, set up for a better view. Okay. If you want to come out a little. Of course. Thanks. I'll uh, come full away. Sure. Just with this current. Usually when we see shells, they're hermit crabs. Yeah. yeah very rarely do they have their uh, original occupant inside. He seems to be pretty happy along that crinoid. Okay, go ahead and come back in. Nice. So you can see his proboscis sticking out the front. Coming over so and up. So that's what he uses to that. eat. I'll hold this for um, It's a long, <laughs> a long um, thin area that's to towards the right. And then his foot Holding is there. the soft tissue that's on the that's towards the base of his um, shell. He's very beautiful. I don't know what kind this is. See if we could tilt up just a hair. Coming up. He's just pretty interesting. His shell's really clean, which oh, makes me think there's a possibility uh, that that down. tissue or Quite. his mantle actually comes up over the shell normally to protect it from shell. getting, <laughs> you know, worn down or covered in ebby biots, you know. Maybe. Christy yeah. says, um, Plinthaster dentatus. Take a little more zoom. Um, sure. You want me to come down a little bit? There or? has been a photograph yes. taken oh, recently no, uh, that's Max right from there. the okay. Puerto Rico dive by the Okeanos in 2015. So yeah, maybe this is um, just a tiny related to it, you want me if to come not down? the same species. Just a tiny bit. Okay, just, just to get the um, edge of We well, could definitely it. look it up later to see if yeah. they are the same species, and we'll get back to everyone. But he looks really cool. Do you know what they generally eat? Do they Are they looking for organic material or coral tissue or anything in the, just collecting on the ocean floor? Um, yeah, I don't, I, they have a rag, well, they have a radula, right? Which is this like abrasive mouth. So they usually go around scraping things. That's okay. usually common. And I'm, I'm corrected. That's not his proboscis. That is his, um, that is his siphon, which actually draws water um, in. Yeah. Likely yeah, he's I, a predator. I'm, I'm here on call. I don't know why I just didn't say this. <laughs> oh. Um, so a, a snail like this, this is probably what they would have called the neogastropods. It's a pretty evolved uh, snail, pretty evolved gastropod. Um, and you can see that tube that's sticking out. It's the siphon. And basically, um, it has gills inside just above the head that are silly and that generate a current. So it pulls water in through there. And just in front of the gill, there's a little structure that you can think of as our nose. It's uh, sniffing chemicals in the water. So generating that current through the siphon, A, brings in water with oxygen for the gills, but B, it can use to sniff around and hunt for its predators. So most of these snails are predatory. And then as you correctly stated, it has a radula that it could use to help uh, feed them. Scrape. And the proboscis that you're referring to we, earlier, this may have one. Um, the proboscis could be inverted to help it feed on whatever it's finding. Yeah, it seems to be extending something towards the right. Do you see that? Us, yeah. Is that the foot or there might be an antenna? I'm not sure. I can't tell from this mm -hmm. angle. You can see little eye spots, though. Yeah. 
Is the the shell generally this color? Do they keep it pale or? Yeah, I, I don't know for this particular species. It's definitely very interesting. Almost, he looks almost like an elephant with some yes. tusks. <laughs> A, little, a tiny yeah, elephant so, tuck. So that I would agree, Steph, if that's what you're referring to, that would be the proboscis. Mm -hmm. it looks like that sort of elephant trunk just uh, at the end of the Yeah, room. sticking around, yep. He does look like a little elephant tucked inside his shell, huh? Crinoid is really It's annoying. cute. Yeah. yeah I know, it's really <laughs> I want that crinoid to move. <laughs> I'm going to get a picture of his <laughs> face. <laughs> Thank you, Scott, for clearing that up. My pleasure. Okay, pilot, I think we're good. Thank Excellent. you. Roger. Video, are you clear? Yep. Cool. All righty. Feel free to come out. I will come off the bottom and we'll continue southwest. Sounds good. And then whenever you're off. set, look uh, so cute. Yeah. I do another move. Uh, yep. I think we can call that in now. It's just a quick little turn for me. And yeah. You okay. can see how tiny he was. Though. Okay, yeah. coming off. We'll get that move in then. Probably sure, only about five, you. seven Bridge meters. Nap. Seven meters. Nap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ready for a move. Yeah. Distance, 30 two. meters. Bearing of 250. At a speed of decimal two knots. Thank you, video. Nice shots. Thank you, Three zero meters, two five zero degrees, uh, speed Thank point nice. three. From Noah Gorgonians. We'll roger that. Thank you. These um, like uh, light colored sea fans. They're an individual colonies, little tiny thickets, or um, kind of populating the seafloor that we're looking at. Oh. Can you look at three o'clock for yes, me? I think I There's a white for. bushy thing. Yep. Next to a you yellow do bushy a thing. Quick zoom. Absolutely. There's Africalistes. Ooh, yeah, this is Africalistes, which is a hexactinellid sponge. This is the type of glass sponge. Yeah, Holding sure. pressure. Yeah. Right. Come back um, our biomedical research department really has found this to be very uh, bioactive. And is this something that we'd like to get a, a better view of? I, uh, I can try and figure out a way to. Yeah, if you it can, it's a sure. really interesting species. They're pretty common out here, yep. so we we know what it is. But Coming if you want to get a good look, I think that's on our target list, isn't it? There's also a yellow. If that's on our target list, we might want to grab that guy. Okay. Uh, branch. Um, do we want to stop call that move? Stop the ship, yeah. Okay. Easy stop, though. Sorry, say that again. Let me look through my list. Check the ship go a little bit. Okay. Okay. Pretty far out. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay. Hold off on it. We'll hold off. Okay. Now, if we do grab him, he's going to be very, very, very delicate. Okay. So he will crush and collapse. Understood. But let me just double check my list before we. Yeah, Africalistes Beatrix. Um, Shirley, please um, confirm this is okay. definitely Beatrix. Yep. Okay. Before so I decide to pick this up. We can go and set up. Uh, yeah, it, it is. So. Um, so just wondering why you need this. Is this for population genetics? Yeah, this is for the Aspire um, sampling plan. They're wanting it. It's on my okay. list. It is. Okay. Yeah. So if we can stop and collect this and guy. It, it, sure. Um, it is really fragile. It's going to crumble. Yeah, it's it's basically like picking up shards of, you know, fine tubes of glass. It's going to be really, really Do fragile. Do we think Do using a suction sampler intact, instead? Or should we just suck them up? I don't know what they were wanting to use it for. It's genetics. If it's for genetics, we just, we just need it. It doesn't really matter if it's intact. If they want it for... Um, yeah, if it's the Inspire program, yeah. the idea would Zoom be in a little bit more on it. You could even maybe just use the suction sampler. Just want to suck yeah, it up is good enough. Stop the ship. Yeah. Yeah. Stop the ship now. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So Bridge now. Pilot, if that's the easiest for you to do, do. Um, sure. whatever works for you. Uh, yes, sir. Can we right. bring a uh, ship to an easy stop here? Easy stop. You got it. Okay. Thank you, sir. They say... It. Yeah, it's going to be very fragile, but we don't need it to stay intact. So if you guys want to suck, suck it up, that's want. good. Yeah, that's if you're more comfortable using your arm, that's fine too. But it's gonna, it's basically yeah, going to crumble and collapse as soon as you touch it. Closer to you. Do you want me to? So. I, I have an enjoy lock right now. Set up for a sample. I can bring it over a little bit if you'd like, video. 
Oh, get sure. A, okay. Yeah, we should probably get a little yeah. close-up imagery. Sure. Yeah, this is going to be jiggle, sample so number one. Stand by one. For this guy. Yep. I'm very excited to see this suction Bridge sampler Bridge now received. Thank work. you, sir. Yeah, right? This is the first time yeah. we're going to see this on this cruise. going to hold there. Perfect. I can come up a little bit if you want to zoom in towards the top. Roger. Okay, uh, yeah, so I think we can go ahead and do, yes, drive one. Perfect, thanks, go pilot. No problem. And then. Okay, can we tilt down a bit to the base? Sure, coming down. You want it up a little bit, or? Just a smidge. Do you want me to yeah, zoom Just a touch up. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. As long as you're confident that we've stopped swinging. Yeah, well, I, I'm going to swing a little more, but. You, you still got it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put it in jar one. Is that the plan? Yeah. So. We have the current that's okay. going to be pushing it into us, right? We also, you know what? It might be it is clear. that we could come straight down on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I haven't done that yet, and it'd be kind Searching of a, server. yeah. We'll try it. I don't know. Try how, and how much mobility it has to rotate. We yeah. can see once we get out there. How my own hydraulics? If it matters, we don't need the whole sample, just a good chunk. So if you get a, a good chunk of it, I think that'll be fine. Okay, excellent. Going to extend drawer a little bit to get the... Yeah. Ready for that? Sure. All right, drawer's coming out. Okay, arm's coming live. Arm is live. Take this down ahead. Good. I'm just going to exercise a little bit. Yep. I'll get the nozzle ready. It's been a hot minute. This little How's that for you? looks good. This is really cool. Let's go. Do you mind a retract drawer we hold? Oh yeah, go ahead. Retracting drawer. Alright, drawer's retracted. Okay, coming out. So yeah. come from the side. Try to get the camera out of you if you want. Or mini yeah. system. Or is it, yeah, whichever one you want. Ooh. It's <laughs> definitely been a second. There we go. Yeah. And then you can zoom in on uh, the mini system right there. Yeah, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, one second. 
Uh, if we could come in on the maze just a little bit. Roger, pilot. Stand by. I'll tilt up slightly. Thank you. Center it. I have. That's a partial. Okay. So, what I'm thinking is um, I'll try and hit it. You know, just swing to the left as you're sucking. Okay. So, I'll start suction and then. Yeah. Yeah. So, my thought is um, so it's, it's fragile, but is it, is it flexible? Watch leads. It's gonna be really brittle, brittle. like okay. like a piece of like Glass. fine crystal, like okay. mesh. Yeah. Um, so we can get it close, and actually, let me just dip down a little but bit more. We really just need it for genetics. So if you if you if you beat it up, okay. it's fine. Understood. Um, I'm just trying to figure out if we took the suction on, if the tip will start heading in towards the nozzle, and then we can just kind of scoop it right up and in. So if you want to go ahead and put on suction, uh, start at 500, bring it up to probably around 900. That's about 500 there. Okay. Do we see the, I can see the indicator? indicator. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and ramp up. Ramp it up. Before I move it, I want to see if it's going to be affected by it. It's about 900 right there. Okay. A little bit more. <laughs> She's not moving at all. Stiff. You might have to. Yeah. Nudge it a little. Give it a poke. It's about okay. 1150 RPM. I'm going to come down a little bit further and try and hit it more towards the base. Yeah, and then if it's brittle, it might just... Yeah. All right, you still got suction? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to come over and tap it. Looks great. Nice. Okay, Good so job. I'm going to go ahead and leave the bottom. It's coming in the jar. Okay, and turn it's on suction. In the jar. We've got it in the jar. And rotate nice. it out of the way, please. Nice. Do we know which jar it is? In? So that's jar one. Jar one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So watch leads. That was just the the top portion of it. Would you like the base as well? Um, I don't think we need it, but okay. if you're here and you want to grab it, I say go for it. But okay. I wouldn't waste another bucket. Okay. So don't use two buckets. Do we so. want to bring it back to? What and do you if think? You're, yeah, about? I would just leave it because if you bring leave it back, it. you could crush it more. Right, leave it. Let's just All leave right. it alone. Understood. Yeah. Then, yeah, whenever you're set, I'll get the drawer back out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you want to bring the drawer out. And uh, if we could zoom back out full wide on mini Zeus, please. Of course. Okay, so that was suction bump one. Full wide. Correct. Correct. Nice job, brother. Yeah. Thank you. All right, drawer's coming out. Copy that. I think about right there is where you need it. Okay. This is where I always get messed up. Okay. So I think if you just wrist down, yeah. it'll be right there. First, you can see it on the map. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah, that's where it messes me up because it's actually wrist. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oop. And let it go. Nice. Okay. This is good. Retracting drawer. Great job, ROV. That looks like it was a great collected sample. Yeah, good job. Thank you. Do you want to pan over with the... Uh, oh, I think I got it. Got it. Coming off. Okay. 
arms, dude. All right, if you're all set, yep. I'm going to take back my camera. All right. Pilot's clear. You ready to continue? Yeah. All right. All set. Okay. Coming out of droid lock. Coming up. Ramping down hydraulics. Great job. On. Understood. Thank you. Very smooth. Spinning back to port. And we'll continue. Uh, Nav, if you want to go ahead and get that ship moving again. Yeah. Yeah, and about for reference, about right on top of you. Okay. Okay. 90 degrees, copy. That was a great we'll ice nav. I'll uh, continue spinning to Bridge nav. port, and then I'll push forward. Right. Good, Nav. Good, we're good. Yeah, ready we're for a move. On. Distance 30 meters at a bearing of 250 at a speed of decimal 2 knots. Three zero meters, two five zero degrees, oh, decimal to, two knots. When we, when we sample, we have to Roger stop that. and Thank make you. sure we're collecting all the all the relevant yeah. data. And a so lot of it's automated, zero. but we have to mark it on our computer system. So every, so the next people who come down the line in the data processing and, uh, know where to go for the photographs and how like, to process yeah. all this stuff. So when we stop to collect, the, the whole back deck gets really right, busy <laughs> back here on the on the back table. We get really busy and have to shuffle around and. Take notes. Oh, it looks like we're headed back towards the ledge here. Three, four, five, copy. So we are in the move, and it looks like where D2 is now, roughly 60 meters to the ledge. Understood. Sounds good. And again, we're starting to see now more of the actual framework systems of the corals still being preserved in this area, whereas before we saw just a lot of the broken down rubble in this area. So maybe we'll actually get to see um, uh, some more elite, uh, live reefs. Feel free to zoom past the skids whenever you'd like, video. Watch for that pilot. Thanks. Thank you. And just for your awareness, watch leads um, where we are going downhill. Uh, things will seem to be further away than mm -hmm. normal. Just where we have, um, you know, 12 feet of D2 to deal with behind us. I think you're okay, thank you. Yeah, cool coming over. Yeah. Coming over and back. Oh, we got a swimming crinoid coming oh, through yeah. the screen. Coming across the take screen a quick there. Zoom. He is on the move. Now, if you were tuned in earlier, we zoomed in on quite a few crinoids and we discussed their overall morphology and that some Can are stocked and some are not stocked. Sure. And underneath, they have these. Um, tentacle feet, which you can kind of make out here on the screen, where they can either attach Jeez, or detach themselves and just Ooh. kind of hop onto <laughs> the next spot and go swimming wherever they feel right. necessary, or Let's let them go. or maybe just going along for the ride. Oh. Yep, someplace cool. safer. Bye. Yeah, I think uh, going along for the ride there is an important aspect of that because they can't swim that fast. So <laughs> I think that's a good indication of the current flow here. All right. Um, they can certainly swim to move up and down, and it must be being carried yeah, from uh, right to left in the current. That is a great observation, Scott. It's another good indication on, on the current systems here, and you can see partially with the marine snow that it's just, you can kind of make out above the horizon of the seafloor, it's just what direction it's overall, the, the current system is I'm going in, and roughly how fast, and that crinoid definitely was okay was moving yeah. along quite, mm -hmm. quite fast, yeah, so. Fine. Can you guys swing to 3 o'clock for me, just off screen? Coming over. Thank you. 
Looks like we have some possible sponges, white sponges up here. If we look up slope. And is that maybe a rat tail fish? primnoids? I'm um, not sure where you're looking. I missed him. Right oh, yeah. That left. definitely looks like a rat tail to me. Uh, Lamanema, maybe. I'm not sure. No, I'm probably not because the tail's not right. Oh, so. okay. Again, I'm terrible with fish. <laughs> you need a fish person here. <laughs> looks like we've got some of these white um, fan sponges, possibly Ficalia, but I can't see this far away. Um, we also have some white primnoid gorgonians. And again, this um, broken up either dead coral rubble or standing coral, dead standing coral, which is looks like Lophelia to me. Uh, it's pretty old, been here quite some time. I'd like to go ahead and come in on the sponge. Yes, yeah, so we're going to zoom in on the sponge. Thank you. Partial. Come what do you think, little. Shirley Ficalia? Hexactinellid? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's, it's probably a hexactinella, but okay. I'm really not sure. There's a couple of sponges that look very yeah, similar. So it could be hexactinella or a demo you. sponge. But this is similar to the one that we saw uh, earlier yes. that was kind of plaguey. Yeah, it has that see. fringe sure. margin. And, uh, just leave me around. And then it's got some you. soft corals growing on top of it. On its, on Move its is complete. Part, ship part. stabilized. Cover that uh, now, looks like you. it's also been snacked on at the base. It's still down to the base. Sure, fish. coming down. Yeah, this is tore off part. Look at that. Looks okay, like tore up or a little further. Just being little overgrown further. with that Copy. bacterial Come matting down. we've been seeing or whatever oh. that perfect Holding stuff is. <laughs> mucus, yeah, the feeding mucus, whatever that is. Whatever that slime stuff is. I guess it's officially schmutz at this point because we yeah. don't have a name for it. So, Schmutz is a good term. <laughs> What's also interesting is right on the, the left-hand side, that kind of grayish-looking mm -hmm. tissue. I, I would can't assume. can't make it out what it is. I would assume that's some kind of sponge. Okay. You want to pan over to the gray? I don't see or any um, zoids yeah. or anything that would make me think that it was a, that again, uh, pilot? Would you like to tunicate. pan over to the left slightly to oh, the sure. Which would be the only material. other thing I could think of. All right, coming over I think, a little. I think they're talking about the little bit right there that's on screen. Okay. Camera set to 7-0. Yeah, Understood. so that looks Holding like that's what we'll see. Understood. Thank you. Good science, like the well, I'm, not, I'm not sure where we are in terms of collection, but this is a sponge that we've seen pretty regularly, and I think it would qualify for the criteria that are with a, uh, with a criteria that are used for to collection. To back to um, the since we really don't know if this is a demo sponge or has that to know it has yeah, been common, be uh, my suggestion would be to collect it. It would be okay to use suction to collect it. We can identify it from fragments. So you, th you want, you want to collect this white guy, this white sponge here? Thank you. Not the gray one at the yes. bottom. Okay. Ship stock. Yes. Okay. Right, correct. The one that's kind of platy with a fringed margin. And just because it's a common, really common species, and we don't have a clue what it is, correct? That's that's what we're. Yeah, that's the reason. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, if you guys are in a proper position to collect this guy. I believe so. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, we can um, go ahead and do that. You can suck it up. Um, we're going to end up probably getting four subsamples, it looks like. Um, Not opposed to that. So, so I think this one may be... Try and grip it with the manipulator so towards the base. I think we and then you might be able to get base. some other oh, is that full um, epibionts as yep, well. Yep, Okay. Um, guys, can you hear the phone or no? Can you hear them talking uh, on the phone? It very quietly. I, okay. I get the, the gist of it. So um, Shirley said if you use your manipulator arm and get towards the base and just give it a little twist, you mm -hmm. might be able to keep it intact. Okay. And in which case, we'll be able to grab those two um, soft corals that are on top, too. Understood. And we'll make those subsamples. There's also an Afrocalistes at 3 o'clock. Um, but I think since we just got one, we don't necessarily need another one right here. Okay. All right. Um, before we before we take the sample, would you like any better video? video? Or are you happy with what we got? Well, the video is happy. Okay. We will go ahead and take a sample then. Uh, it looks like you can open drawer fine. Do you have a preference on boxes? And Shirley, um, you want me to call this just let's peripheral? Uh, let's go out, we don't pick know it up, if it's see a what it looks like. Demo. So what I'm worried about is if we grab it by the base, 
We still have quite uh, sure, a bit of current pushing back so towards us. To, to I think if we grab it by the base, it may be you know, yeah, so yeah, easy us. just to drop it right into the port side. Okay. I'd say port side first. Um, but if it comes up easy, we could maybe go into starboard yeah, to save the good. pilots yeah. later on. Um, all are open. And pilot, okay. it's been made very aware in the chat room that it is very fragile. Very fragile. I oh, gotcha. Understood. And then I'll put your. It will be gentle. Use this up. Thank you. Okay, arms coming live. Can we get lasers on real quick, just so I can get sure. a size? Lasers should be on. About ten centimeters right about across. It. Right. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I can't see the lasers yeah. very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. You're on it. All right. Perfect. Lasers coming off. Oh, was that enough? Yeah, Sorry. that was good. Thank you. Okay. Arms coming live. Yeah, I see that I'm going to commit a little more. The issue is I don't really have the, I guess I have a little more shoulder. This may be like a reach around one. Do you want to center up uh, minisys? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. That's, we're getting in a good position with that. Okay. Okay. What do you think about? I think, um, yeah. Can we get a, do a zoom on Mini Zeus? Uh, can we zoom on Mini Zeus and on Main Zeus real quick? I think that's pretty good. I think uh, I can get in there pretty. Yeah, get in tight like that. Yeah. And then I'll hold it. If we could zoom in on Mazus, please. <coughs> Video. Go ahead, pilot. What was that? Go ahead, if you don't mind zooming in on Mini Zeus. Of course. Part. Okay. I think it's something like that. It looks pretty, pretty good to that me. Looks, yeah, I think it looks good. All right. And we're going into port side. Yeah, I'll ready to extend whenever you're ready. Okay, coming out and snipping. Trying to keep it nice and low and tight. Yeah. Coming in on the draws. Okay. Seems pretty fragile. Okay, if we could zoom out on mini please. Thank you. And if you could follow it over to the drawer as you come out. It almost looks like the light's coming through it. And drawer out, please. Extend the drawer. Still good? Yep. Feel free to come out all the way. All the way. Okay, we'll go for port outer. Yeah, it's a big item. Yep. So that's um, port outside bio box? Oh yes. Okay. There we go. Okay, opening up the drawers. Yeah, it's sinking. Okay. I think it's all clear. Yeah, we're good. 
It's it's resting at the bottom. Yeah, there's there. a little bit in there though. Gonna rotate. You see that little bit left? Not really, but okay. I'll come back. I think 99% definitely is in the place of that. Understood. Go Not ahead. Yeah. Drawer. Nice job. All right, we're good. That's a little bit of snow. That's great. Thank you, RV pilots. Coming off with the arm. Let me stood. Another successful sample collection. This All right, time. pilot's clear. Video and watch leads are clear. We'll go ahead and take off and continue on southwest. We're clear. Is there anything else in this area that is of interest? Um, the Africa listies, but I'm not sure you want to collect them so close together. And that was the one that we just sucked up before okay. yeah so there's one at, there's one at three o'clock right in front of you sure um, i'll come out of joy lot we'll come over we'll but i'm a nice not view of that yeah I'm not just for video sure. purposes yeah yeah right. okay if you want to come in quick video i'll try okay. so uh, this current's pretty oh my bad you standing by yeah thank you It's easy to forget about the current when you're not as. Okay, go ahead and do a quick scene. Roger. Yeah, he's small. Huh? Okay. Holding partial. Yep. Quite pretty, though. Why are those bottom tube-looking structures longer than those at the top? I have no okay. idea. I'm pretty secure <laughs> here if you want to take a little bit more. Video. Maybe our sponge ladies can tell me. Um, Chris and Shirley are both sponge call, experts. Um, they might have a better idea of what the purpose of growing sure. like that is. Maybe it's being inhibited by the rocks to the right or to the left. Maybe stabilization purposes. It could be stabilization. I honestly have no clue. Oh, Shirley's not sh entirely sure either. Yeah. Well, that makes me feel better. So. <laughs> They're just attaching to the rock, top. likely. Coming okay, kind of like um, mangrove, like mangrove roots, right? Where they kind of grow kind and of stabilize yeah. themselves. Right? Okay. He's pretty cool. We're good Please. whenever you guys are ready. Okay. Roger. Whenever video is clear. Mm -hmm. Video is clear. All right. Looks really cool that you can see all the way through with the mm -hmm. highly porous so structure. We're take off, come back to port. And, uh, right, exactly. We're getting Scott, pretty close like, to that like edge now, so Understood. next move will probably put us really, really close. Sounds good. Okay, you got me at nine zero. I'll turn. Yes, sure. hi, Stephen King. Hi. I have never yeah. seen also this outgrowth uh, from the surface going to the to the base, but it seems that it might be reinforcing. Uh, the attachment response. Really, really neat observation. Okay, oh, coming nice. back to a 250. Yeah, I, I want to follow up on that. I, I haven't seen a sponge grow, or that type of sponge have those sort of outgrowths. And we've seen once in a while, rarely, but once in a while we see some bamboo coral colonies that'll do that. And it seems to be in occasions when the colony is tipped over a bit or the rock that it's on is dislodged okay. and yeah. tipped, and really somehow there's an opportunity for some for tissue to grow down okay. and intercept the rock, uh, and it uh, appears to you're probably develop getting a second hole tether that, link there, like pretty there, close so, to the edge. So, um, but we'll get the move in, and we'll see where we're at. It's an interesting observation yeah. that Understood. some animals yeah, we'll probably want to get a serious uh, out and out and it anyways. Yeah, okay. They can change their Bridge overall now. morphology to match the conditions that they're living in. Yeah, then you can just right, and that's probably pretty common in sponges because you'll see two of the exact same species look totally different in two Doing different spots and thing. vice versa. Yeah. Two totally yeah, similar uh, species ready for totally move. different. Distance, 30 meters, two different bearing spots. of 250, so speed them. of decimal yeah. two. Yeah. We want to turn back, though, uh, counterclockwise. Another one of those pink crinoids. Roger that. Thanks, sir.
And based just off the how it's flowing, I mean, this current still looks like it's either increased or something along those lines. I'm not sure what what happened, but we're definitely seeing a little more movement than we did prior. So I believe we were in the uh, the lee of that mound that Waypoint Four was on, where the the current's coming from the north heading south. So we were in a relatively protected area for a while there, and as we came off that mound, we started seeing more and more. Okay, thank you, pilot. Four or five, right? And that might then lead to potentially some more reflex structures leading above. If there is a good flow of current, that means there's a good yeah, flow of, of food. You got me at four or five, so right? we're looking out yeah. for those corals. Okay. It's like you got a ledge there kind of in front of you, right? Yeah. Okay. We just don't have the reach quite yet. Looks okay. like we're traveling we through our own moving. dust ball. So. so my thought is that I'll come to a little more to, to port and you'll kind of go over me? Or should I come to starboard? Um, yeah, you can come to port. Yeah. Okay. And then I can, I'll rotate also to port. Yeah, and you uh, you rotate as you come past me? Yeah. Looks right. like we have a and small we'll primnoid gorgonian to the right. Sounds good. And then go from there. Possibly. We got a, maybe ophiroid to the left. Yeah, looking at it, it looks like probably got one more move to get Cirrus out there. I guess it kind of depends on how far, you know, the sledge is. Yeah. And we're looking to ride this Yes. South. So what they want to do then is once we get to that ledge, they basically want to take and basically about what we were doing, say 150. Does that look like an eye to you? 158. Uh, I think looks like a start, skate. Uh, yeah. I wonder what that dark feature up ahead is. Looks like mm -hmm. a skater array. Could be a sponge a blob. Do you want to zoom in real Another, quick? Well, sure. What are we calling a smooch? A smush. A smush. <laughs> yep. Oh, no. Schmutz. Uh, Schmutz. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, might be yeah. Bathobatus. This is probably Bathobatus. If you guys can get a good look at him on your dust cloud clears. Yeah. Um, so I'm at the, the very edge of my tether right now. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, try not to disturb him very much, and he should be. Yeah. That's oh. Bathobatus. Oh, no. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Definitely. So this is the electric a eel. Bit. Yeah. Go ahead and take as much or as low as you want. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think we might lose it's him okay. here in the dust. No problem. Uh, here. Uh, we still got I'll him just up. a bit. Yeah. Man. He's in the it's dust. a really interesting tail structure he has right. there. Right. For Looks someone like he's landing. We'll come back and Watch. find him. Yeah, the hand actually has like a caudal peduncle, right? Yeah. So like an actual tail, whereas most yeah. stingrays and rays have Coming just that long, it. thin, Coming you know, they don't really yeah. use it to swim yeah. like that. And that he uses uh, electricity to shock his food. Eat it. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Does he normally hunt for fish or crustaceans, or yeah. is he looking for something right underneath the the first maybe centimeter there, or two of yeah. sand? Yeah, I'm not I'm not really sure what they eat. I, I would assume most of them are yeah yeah subsurface or sub you know subsurface um, hunters. Yeah, hunters get in there and dig around and then shock it and eat it. These are the ROV scour marks, correct? I believe so. Um, they don't look that deep, though. It, we were just in that area, and there was a yeah. significant amount of sand, so it had to come from somewhere. Yeah, we did just collect here, so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they are from us. So 
getting pretty close to the end of that move. Yeah, we can probably keep calling them until I can get over this okay. edge. I get the latest update. Yep. So. Do you agree? Nav bridge yeah. complete. Bridge nav received. Thank you. Probably one more, and then that'll give us enough room to get in the configuration. Yep. So you just want to go ahead and go with the next move? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'll do one more. Go ahead and, and get then, in. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll be able to spin serious around. I just kind of want to stay in this configuration so I can oh, actually see more stuff. shots, huh? Right oh, right yeah. There. Bridge, Nav. Go ahead, Nav. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get another move in. Same one, distance 30 meters, bearing 250, uh, speed decimal 2 knots. Range 30 meters, bearing 250 degrees, speed decimal 2 knots. Roger that, thank you. Base, know the direction of travel and stay. Yeah, no, it looks like we got another um, hexactinellid here at uh, four o'clock. It's really small. If we can, if you guys aren't on the move, if we can get a quick zoom uh, at three. Yeah. yeah cool. All right. Now around center center yeah. screen. Go ahead and do a quick zoom video. Yeah. Good eye stuff. Kind of slowly. All right. So I would sure. probably call well, this something along the lines of feria, uh, okay, maybe. Um, to take more my harbor branch here. ladies can help me if I'm wrong, but it Come looks like a hexact anelid to me, which is a type of sponge, glass sponge. Very fine. Coming over a little. Maybe you plectella. Yes, we would use an exactinelid. Mm -hmm. um, maybe farida. Family farida. Which one? Farida. So we're not sure it's a barrier per se. Okay. Um, there are a lot of others that look like that. Yeah. Thanks. It's funny how its morphology is almost shaped like a coral, right? With like yeah. a little. I was going to maybe suggest if it was a soft coral, but. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely it's definitely a um, hexactinellid. So if you were to pick it up or touch it, it would just crumble in your fingers. And right off to the left there, we see one of those shells of the pteropods that we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier that were seen in the um, wine bottle, Coming potentially, mm -hmm. um, yep. that was observed oh, earlier. Here now you can have a slightly yeah. clearer view of it, and it looks, uh, they're like little over. like sand, little butterflies that swim through the ocean, mm -hmm. and then they leave this kind of skeletal structure behind, and they're extremely fragile, uh, and um, we there. see them a lot Pretty in the good. sediments, and they can range from a few yeah. microns in hey, size, that's micrometers, and um, all the way to this, yeah, which I'll is about a for, centimeter for or so bridge, wide. Yeah. So they can range and grow in, in variety of sizes, uh, and they make up, they can are exposed quite a bit, they make up a lot of the sand that we do see here. Thank you, sir. You back. Okay. Another good view of all the fine sediment that we are actually hovering just over. So this is another good indicator where Steph earlier in the dive asked if do you think just that there is a lot of core rubble underneath these okay, layers so and there's just layers of sand and core rubble South. on top. And well, Go when we had just reference. touched the, those sand pits, uh, when we made those forward. scour marks and stuff earlier, we could um, see that actually yeah. it really well, is the core rubble is just laying on top a lot of that well, fine grain sediment that we have there. So there's not a lot of mixed up material currently at this location, but just a lot of sand and then core rubble um, just really cascading all the way down through it, or over it, I should say, not through it. Nav bridge, ship is we have another pancake urchin. Mm -hmm. It's something I have you. learned today. Area Soma. I'm highly Roger toxic. Thank you, Bridge. They're pretty common out here. We've seen quite a few of them. All stop out. That is not, not something bad, anybody you. should be touching. <laughs> we have like another burn. one of those sponges at um, 2 o'clock yeah, next to it. The hexactinellid, yeah. Ooh. This current is something else. Yeah, it takes the sediment pretty clear. Yeah, which is nice, but. Coming More from like a five smudge. five. Schmutz, schmutz, schmutz. I will learn this word. Okay, <laughs> and um, so you're heading. Yeah, I'm like about uh, with the current pulling the tether. I'm like one six zero. Okay. Which I think is roughly the direction we want to travel. Sounds good to me. Yeah, there is quite a bit of that mucus. Yeah, when you're ready, um, we can probably go ahead stuff and get around a these bit. areas. Maybe like. We're seeing just patches yeah, of them. The 
the only Phosphorus. things that you can kind of see a little bit floating in the floating in the current it. system. Yeah, whatever that comes to. Do we want to do a little bit more cell so we get right on that contour line, or? Yeah. No. Yeah. So let me, let me cut a little bit. Like okay, so uh, Ken Sulak, thank you for chiming in. He wrote in on the um, chat, going back, looking at fishes, the like skate image a short time ago, which I call yeah. Benthabatis, which I think now I was wrong, um, is probably the black fin skate Fenestraja uh, like, like astropinna, a deep yeah, water species known like only from a few spot. specimens. Occurs 600 to 900 spot. meters in the Pan Caribbean to Bahamas region. I've seen these species previously in subsea images. I have not, I have seen. not seen. Thank not. you. Maybe the first such image of perhaps a rare skate. Very few skates have distinctly <sighs> black dorsal fins, increasing confidence in his ID. So that's interesting. Ooh, very interesting find. And we got nice Ken, please, if you see us form. misidentifying anything, please no, call no. in. <laughs> Correct me. I know nothing about fish. <laughs> I mean, besides the hangout near invertebrates, that's about it. <laughs> but that did seem very interesting. It apparently seems to be very rare as a fish goes. Hopefully we'll get to see him again. Maybe he settled around not too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did disappear in our dust ball. Another ophiroid at the base of the screen. Do you think you'd classify this as a as a bioherm, uh, where you have layers of, of one, biological and coral, and rock, and then, or no? I wouldn't really at this uh, point. Um, it's more of a it's more of a rock slope with coral on it. Yeah, versus like a built up. Yeah, I wouldn't call it definitely its own um, either bioherm or lithoherm by any means. Um, it seems to be that there was some possible uplift in this region or something that created the overall slope feature that we have on the bathymetry map um, that we're seeing, but. To classify it as its own kind of bioherm or lithoherm, I'm, I wouldn't really call it that. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, it, overall, there, underneath there's probably a lot of um, karstified uh, limestone, and um, that then the set sediments and the corals just started um, to being deposited and growing on. Mm -hmm. We're having a small change up by the ROV pilot, so just give him a second. And we'll be on the way again. How are we doing, video? Excellent. And yourself, hey, Pretty good. good. I'll be taking a quick break, pilots. I'll be right back. One, is that anything that's straight five, ahead there, that dark five, mark? Yeah. Oh, it could be. We should move him forward if we can. Awesome. Pilots, can we move forward here? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of space. Dark spot. What is that white thing? Yeah, this Come looks up. interesting here. Well, I think the ship's on the move, right? Um, yeah, but yeah, but yeah. yeah. It looks like we're starting color. actually to see some of yeah. that karstified under bedrock that's underneath. That looks somewhat exposed. When we get a closer view, we'll be able to tell better. There's something lower left, pilot, in the corner. Copy. Slightly so. pink in color. Yes. You can come in. Okay, coming in. We're waiting for the ship to move. Wa watch the shrimp. Ooh, a shrimp. shrimp. 
with eggs. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Found a good spot. Near that bulb sponge looking mm -hmm. thing in the background. A uh, video is clear, pilot. Yeah, you can come wide. I think I saw a coral up here. Yeah. That's full wide. Right. Yeah, I'm seeing white exposed. I'm not sure what it is. It's a uh, rock, maybe. Yeah, all of this white material looks like it's exposed um, karst that's in this area. And um, that dark thing right to the to the left-hand side is probably standing dead, maybe? Probably. Can get a quick look get at a it. A little bit of more zoom in here. Are you talking about over here, watch the upper left? At 9, is that way the one? Correct. Yeah, so yeah, it's now dead center. Large. Yeah, okay. I'll approach it. Can uh, frame it up, video. Okay. It's like a possible skeleton of sorts. Gonna hold here. Yeah. Oh so. yeah. Looks like standing dead coral could be conglomerated with sponges in the middle. A little bit of madrepora, the little white coral that looks like a zigzag. At about six o'clock. Um, yeah, we've move got complete. some. Or is that a stylasterid? Uh, if we got closer, we could tell better. I have the more zoom like pilot. Because it looks yeah, like there's, zoom in. there's okay, polyps in. on the ends. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, just yeah. a teeny tiny one. Yep. We got lots of hydroids. With a primnoid? Is that a primnoid mm, coral there? Not positive. Scott might be able to tell you. But what's interesting is that the skeletal structure, I mean, dis despite how degraded it looks, it still kept a lot of its original framework. So it's quite a robust skeletal structure. Mm -hmm. I think we got a worm here, too, around uh, oh, yeah. 7. And then a, a, a single solitary coral at about 8 o'clock. I'm at the edge of the screen. It's pink. It's just oh, a little yeah. down. Right next to the Madripoora coral. Mm -hmm. We pan down a little bit. There he is. Oh, and a solitary cup curl mm -hmm. also right there in the corner. An ophiroid legs sticking out. Here's more of that schmutzy stuff. I don't <laughs> know what it is. It's a coral. Yeah, and some just smaller corals. Using the opportunity. Mm -hmm. All right, pilot's clear when video's clear. Okay, uh, video's clear. Uh, We're good. coming out. Crinoid. Watch, did you need a closer look at anything? No, we're good. You can move on if you want. Keep moving. Keep moving. Okay. I'd like to get a, a little better pilot. look at the white Thanks. bottom. Yeah. See how it's changed texture and color. Copy. So we're on this slope here, right? Still on, it's a... Yep, we're right at the side. ridge where it starts to go down slope now. And this is slightly different from uh, when we came up slope, and we didn't really see a lot okay, of this video. exposed Coming rock in this area. Hard substrate. But okay. here we Coming have um, see what, uh, this hard limestone that looks like it's been karstified. Um, and that just means somewhat here? altered. Yeah, hold that. See if they see and something. as you can see, it's highly porous, and that's usually how limestone forms. And not to mention a lot of the critters can erode and, and bore into the limestone, which is fairly common. And uh, we can even see that here by a lot of the different corals and um, possibly sponges that are boring sponges. Uh, they protrude and use the porous structure or create their own porous structure, and which then contributes to further erosion and degradation of the actual car uh, carbonate substrate. 
Yeah, it looks like we might have a white sponge at 8 o'clock at the very edge of the screen. Yeah, the nubby one. Yeah, it's got a um, tube sticking out, which would make me guess Ocean Appia, but I would defer to Chris and Shirley. You take more zoom. Okay, On coming that in. Guy. Almost looks like an udder. Right. So you're thinking about this roundish uh, bulb mm -hmm. with a projection that seems to have a top. I'll hold that for a and second. And this looks pretty much like a polymastia. Anthomastia? Uh, which means... Or polymastia? Polymastia. Polymastia. You know, like multiple nipples. Mm -hmm. It's the, the translation from the... From the Latin, mm -hmm. the Latin name. Okay, so it will be the family Polymastide, mm -hmm. and um, it's very typical to have this uprose uh, papilla. Uh, some of them with osteos at the end, some of them without them at the end, and this kind of roundish subradial growth. Mm -hmm. So I will say with high, high percentage, uh, we're definitely in the family and probably okay. in the genome. Of um, oh, as needles clear. Okay. And okay. So coming out. Perfect. Thank you. And then to the right, we had a couple of Nidaria. or soft corals. We have a crinoid at the bottom, probably primnoid or possible bamboo coral on the right. That's three. And then a field, field in front of us of coral rubble. On this newly, newly like textured, this what did you what kind of rock did you say it was? Karst. It's yeah. a it's a limestone, limestone rock where carbonate based where um, karst just That's means cool that thing. it has that altered features to it where it's not the original car, uh, carbonate that was either precipitated or deposited. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I consider that a habitat change, right? We're going from like this sedimentized or rubble cover to this exposed right limestone. Yeah. Really, you know, sturdy. And with that, we can see the change in biology. Now we're having a more uh, frequent, uh, slightly more robust skeleton, uh, skeletons, actual living corals now. And maybe it's just because they're being optimistic and using the exposed hard substrate. And it's a lot more firm ground so they can settle upon it and colonize and attach their structure so that they can grow rather than maybe that coral rubble might still be too loose for them to really colonize and be part of. Um, there's actually that coral up on the left hand side around 10 o'clock if we can on the far side um, if we can go over there that looks quite bushy and quite interesting. Yeah it's three. Copy. I really like the configuration of me looking at you this way, or do you want me behind looking mm -hmm. up slope and we can slide them together? Either way. Okay. It might have live lophelia too at like seven. Is the current. I'm just making sure. Yeah. All right. Good. So he's fine. Flying. Let's just take a quick look like at this. The the out of our face. Bushy, yeah. I guess, gorgonian or hydroid. I'm not sure what it is. Let's get in and look. Coming in for a landing video. Okay, you can come in. Quick zoom. I think this is the colony they were talking about. Boy. Well, Wait, it is. It's dead. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> dead standing coral, <laughs> covered in hydroids, and maybe being conglomerated with sponges. You know, sponge in between that pink yeah. stuff, soft. Yeah. So it's dead. With some oifroids. Okay, to take more zoom. What not yeah. around? It's what are these habitat? smaller guys down here? The more fragile ones. Primnoids. I would guess Baby primnoids. primnoids. Yeah. Scott can give us a better answer if we pan down. Some juvenile. Or John, if he's on the line. I'm not sure. He hasn't really been talking, so. Wonder which ones are talking. This guy, yeah, yeah this yeah. white fan. That oh. tiny white fan. Oh, copy. Center that up here. Yep, and I'd call these ophiorids and uh, ophiothrix by the spining on their legs. So they're brittle stars. We might have, have a, a tiny bit right here. Soon. Is that I what think? that okay. is? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's he's right. beautiful. He is. 
try to hold that. See these? What do you think those are? Um, well, I think those are just a different type of hydrozoan. Mm -hmm. Don't think those are forums. No, usually they're floating. They're not mm -hmm. usually stationary. The stalked thing. Yeah. Okay. Maybe a tiny hydrozoid or maybe teeny tiny crinoid. Mm -hmm. eh, unlikely. Yeah, it's stalked. I don't. Think yeah. We're too shallow for stalked. I think. Okay, <laughs> pilot, we're good. All right. Yeah. Did he come on? And then there was something Roger to that. the left. Yeah. Off screen. Potentially lophelia. Did you need a closer look? Yeah. What shape? From to color? that, no. If you can swing to the left a little bit. Yeah. There was a white standing coral oh. right there. Oh, this one. Yeah. Uh, There's actually quite a bit around here. So give me a, if you give me a good zoom, I can. All right, come in. Let's see if it's living. All right, so this is a living, I think. If we can get that zoom in, see some polyps. Yeah, if you get more zoom, try to get the polyps. Ooh, okay. Is that a soft coral? Off yeah. I'll frame it up yeah. a little closer. And then primnoids, I would think. Yeah, so that is Lophelia pertusa. We have one species of Lophelia in the area. Um, so all this rubble is coming from this. When it, This is what it looks like alive. And all, when it dies, it breaks up and turns into this rubble that we're seeing all over the, this all over the ridge. Yeah. But this is what it looks like alive. You can see it's coralites. That's where the polyp lives. That's where the coral polyp lives. And I'll take a little more zoom. And then what are these small features, the spiny features That's that nice. are attaching itself to the skeletons? I are those know. some zoanthids or that has oh, no. got to be it looks some really interesting. other nadarium, but I'm not sure what kind. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure there. If anyone on the chat or at home knows, please chime in. These are really interesting looking, and they seem to be um, kind of nesting themselves on parts of the skeleton where tissue has already maybe died off. I'm seeing some other encrusting stuff on it, so it seems mm -hmm. to attach only towards the, well, already exposed skeletons, mm -hmm. or... Yeah, I'm not really sure what it's attached to. It might be attached to this yeah. um, Gorgonian stalk or uh, hydroid stalk that's to the right. I'm not sure if it's attached to the actual coral. But it looks like maybe a pest of some sort or something. Not sure. Okay, pilot's clear when you're clear. Right. Roger. Thank you, pilot. Video is clear. All right. And then there were some platy sponges around that area. There's Thank also lo looks like madripora to the to the left. Of that. We got lots of clumping. Yeah. I hope you head to the left. Just little, yep. tiny thickets of little corals. Mm -hmm. Do you need a close-up zoom at any of these? Or uh, no? Yeah, please, if that, um, the one with the white coral on top. Upper center? Or yes. Okay. If I'm going the wrong way, just uh, <laughs> feel free to <laughs> let me know. You're good. All right. Okay, come in. Holding partial. Yeah, thanks. Would you say that's still Madripura? I don't. That's Lophelia. That's Lophelia. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was typing in the chat room. <laughs> no worries. And then up above it, we have again that soft coral that's there. Would we like more? Zoom? Can we get a maybe uh, a tighter zoom in to see yeah. if this yep. one is alive or if it's pretty much on the brink? I see a lot of um, I think it's the around. mostly dead. There, yeah. Oh, there might be some, some oh. right here. There's a polyp, but on the That's side, nice. it looks mostly beat up and dead. Yeah. With a few rhizomes or hydrozones around it, is that 
What is that feature there? Is that That's probably a zoanthid. No, zoanthid. if it if it was okay. the coral lives much tighter in that. Yeah. Right in the pile up than that. So that's like more sitting on top of it. Yeah. And here we go. We have this spiky. I'm not sure yeah. what it is, what that spiky stuff is. Maybe just a different type of zoanthid mm -hmm. or something along those lines. I mean, it looks like we have barnacles living on the on the right hand side. See the, the tentacles here yeah. at about three or four o'clock. That looks like a barnacle mm -hmm. mouth feeding appendage. Um, so Casey thinks that the white, small, spiny, branchy things could be clatter. Is it? Clatterized? Clatterized. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what is yeah. clatterized, yeah. Shirley? Sure, like. They could be the um, carnivorous sponge. So one option mm -hmm. would be to try and collect thank you, some of the, the coral, mm -hmm. and then uh, you might be able to pick up some of that, the sponge with it, the clatterized. It's really interesting. Um, well, we do have Lophelia as a target, too, so that would that would kill two birds with one stone, I think, if we can lobster. get it. A living piece. Um, I'm not sure if um, Aspire is interested in, you know, if it's okay if we just get one or two polyps of living Lophelia, if that's a good enough sample for them. We could do that and this clatterized um, carnivorous sponge. Um are you guys in position to collect? Yeah. Okay. What do you think? I think it might be worth collecting. Okay. Copy. We might see a lot of Ophelia later, clear. but mm -hmm. I think for now, uh, specifically yeah, with the clatterize it on it, it does look interesting. Like you said, two birds Jeff, we've with been, one uh, stone. Mm -hmm. Pull yeah, away. See they're on. I'll they, they disabled the yeah. valve. Uh, Lauren thinks that might be hydroid. I think if you're just not using them, you can just punch the disable on the toy box. I mean, I guess if that, no one if knows what it is, that's a good. It's yeah. a good. It's also a good target. <laughs> yep, that would be a good collection. Watch, <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will make sure to do that. Watch, Lee, did you want us to go for a sample of this subject? Um, I think we or might. Shirley, can I, or anyone out there in the chat room, is is this a still of interest? Do you think it's worth getting this guy? Uh, yeah, I, okay. I think so. I mean, right. I'm, I'm not sure what you're, you're, like what we were looking at before. Yeah, the clatterized, the possible clatterized on the Lophelia. Yeah, and I know Lauren came back and said she thought it was hydroid, but I'm not sure which one she's talking about. The greenish one, I think, is the hydroid, but the whitish feathery thing in between might not be. Okay. There's, there's two more here, too, watching. Uh, I'll you come in. Uh, yeah, this, we're actually specifically looking for a um, branching white feathery like thing okay. on uh the one to the yeah. left okay yeah i mean no. oh, looks but like yes this is a yeah, dead on. lophelia yeah. covered in a okay. what looks like a yellow sponge just hoping that same branching thing was on this live look yeah right a more convenient place. spot huh we are setting up for the sample mm -hmm. and then there's some nice coral off to the left yeah, a good Gorgoni, and he's pretty big. Yeah. Hydraulics up. Hydraulics up. I see. I brought your mini here. I can hang up something else if you'd like. Yeah, it looks good. Hydraulics coming on. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like a center back. Yeah, you can zoom in video on Zeus. Roger that, pilot. Oh, Zeus. Yeah, both actually, yeah. Okay. Let's do mini first. Yeah, sounds good. And it's a partial. All right. Some of this out of the way here. I think the piece the thing you want is now down below. No, I think it's you can zoom in on Zeus. Roger. Yeah. I mean H D, yeah. Hold that for a second. Well, actually, do you still see uh, what you want to get in the middle here? Yeah, the, so it's... Kind of in the center of the subject? Yeah. Okay. He's like a, a like a white, He's bushy material at the center of the... Copy. Of the coral head. Yeah, slightly more on the left. Yeah. So right. I would go down underneath it if you can and try and pick up the whole thing. But okay. You might end up trying to pick up, like, what it's attached to. Yep. That's That's, that I'm can gonna... be pretty strong. Okay. You might uh, take the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> So you can see, yeah, see how it's picking up the rest, so. Yeah, if you need to crush it up, then. Um, take the living part. That's yeah. There you go. There you go. Ooh. Okay, I might have to um, go for like a cradle here. Yeah, help. Do you like me to come out a little way? You're going to yeah. have a ton of subsamples. Yes. <laughs> I run away, or if you're always, run away. <laughs> <laughs> Just open down a little bit. <laughs> like shake it around a little bit, get them off. <laughs> We're going to be up till 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Browsing samples in the lab. Uh, All in the name of yeah. science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's going to be pretty fragile now. All right, good job. Yeah. We'll pour it in here. Coming wide, pilot. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. Did I get you? You're good. Okay. So I'm not sure that we got the clatterizes. You might want to go back and pick up one more piece if you can, please. Hold on, you okay. Stow. Yeah. Um, watch. I mean, uh, pilots, did you hear that? Yeah, we can go okay. back and zoom in and see what remains here. And if you need to suck it up, that that's fine too. Okay. We can put it the same sample. Yeah, but you buckets. can you can zoom in and then watch it if you let me know if you see what you want is still here. I think here. we did based off the playback. I think it's right in here. Yeah. It's just hard to say. Um. 
So this is right where it kind of fell on the ground, yeah. I think. And then up here, those are the ends that kind of broke off. And then right here is where it was sitting, the whole kind of yeah. structure. I think we did get a lot of it based off the playback that we're looking at really quick. Um, I think we got most of our target. Yeah, I, I see it in the okay. sample that comes in. It's hard to see. She see it in the bucket? Yeah, yeah. she can, she can um, re do instant replays. Okay. So I, I'm able to see the... I'm pretty sure it's there. Yeah. It's hard to see on the okay, white background, great, but on the yeah. background, black background, that's right. I think it's right. Yeah. yeah. We should yeah. be good. Yeah, if you see um, if you see some of it here, I can I can uh, use the suction sampler, too. I don't really see any leftover of what mm. we yeah, were looking at. Yeah, do I. So. Okay. But thank you very much, Pilot. Yeah. Coming by. Yeah, I didn't really want to take the time to zoom in on what I had, just because I was uh, kind of precarious in my jaws. I didn't want it to drop. Good call. Um, but yeah. Typically we'll uh, zoom in on what we do have so to confirm, but yeah. Nice work. All right. We will keep moving. Sounds good. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, Chimera? You could snap ooh, it. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Ooh. Wow. All right. Okay, dude. Just yeah. Now, is this nice. your common named rat tail one? This is, um, I think they're related to sharks. Oh, wow. Just a touch. Sorry, I'm, I'm maneuvering closer to him to get more light on it here. Roger that. Cool. It's an ancient. I think a bit more species. Let's see how large his eye is. He's fighting the current just like me. <laughs> I like his tail. It's like a little sword. Yeah, it comes to yeah, a, for a little tip little. point almost. You want to go for the head? I wonder, is the, the mouth okay. used, if it, that it's almost like stunted, is it used to burrow through some sand to collect maybe a mollusk or, or something un just underneath? Uh, I'm not sure what these guys eat. I... Yeah, you can see his mouth is underneath, right? So yeah. it's on, facing down. So likely he's a bottom feeder. Okay. That's fine. Nice That's fine. Close to him. Yes, it is. He's clearly curious. Yeah. Super cool. He's stuck in my head. We don't see these very often. I think the first time I saw one, I was in the submersible. He's got some cool patterning on his side, too. He's uh, 30 centimeters long, roughly. Just painted him with lasers. I like the pattern that he has. Maybe that's also for camouflage. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's known to be in areas with coral rubble, so there's different colors. And right, he looks like coral rubble, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Purely speculation. <laughs> he's pretty cool. He's flapping his fins in the breeze. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Whenever you're ready, to pilot. Get a quick zoom. Yeah. While he's trying being still. Okay.
Hey, Do you want right. more? Yeah. Okay. Oh, we're clear. All right. He was amazing. That was a fun chase for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Back towards the direction of movement here. Okay. Probably get another that. move underway. Right. Do you think so, Joe? We're on this sure. um, yeah. slope again, like a 40 degrees roughly, 30 degree slope. There's no rugosity. It's very flat. Um, it slopes down, obviously. Nowhere for anything to really hide except in the coral so rubble. So we're getting way, lots of small critters in our coral <laughs> rubble and standing dead coral heads. But otherwise, there's very few fish. Not so, not a lot of hidey holes for larger uh, macrobiota. But lots of good substrate to attach yourself to if you're if you're a benthic dweller, sessile, like all those crinoids we mm -hmm. saw earlier. Yep, it's a good place to be. Nice current going over you. Just take a zoom of this uh, whip while mm -hmm. it's a ship underway. Landing. Oh, there's a couple things here. Looks nice. We have what looks like two very different species next to each other, three different species next to each other. Yep. I'll go for the polyps. From on the Noah, definitely on the uh, left. Yes, please, if we can. Yeah. And then also, if we could scale all the way to the top of that. Um, branch it seems that well, all of a sudden the polyps are yeah. gone and it ends in a very spiky skeletal fragment yep there right there i wonder what happened there i wonder if it's just the one or is it all of them that have that maybe something ate it maybe maybe it grows like that my guess is something ate it i think so too i don't think any of the other branches have that yeah. oh no yep I think something ate, ate the polyps off the tip of that one. It looks like there's a tiny ophioroid on that yeah, guy. It is. <laughs> Hanging Blowing out. Around yeah. in the current. Going for a ride. The baby ophiothrix. Let's see if we can get a good zoom. Is that max zoom? Oh, yep, that's, that's good. The max zoom. Oh, okay. Let's see. We can uh, go for the other one here. Sure. So do we know what corals these are? I guess as primnoids, um, this fan one, I would call it primnoid. The other two possibly primnoids too, but I'm not entirely sure about them. Uh, if Scott's on the line, I'm sure he can chime in, or John, and give me a better idea what they think this is. All right. Can we get a quick zoom on that other one, the more fragile one that's off to the to Absolutely. the right there? Yeah. Yeah. That looks like a bamboo. That's yeah, a bamboo that's coral. That's bamboo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You could zoom in if you'd like. See the nose. Oh, the little squall lobster at the base. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no pink guy. Good right. call on a bamboo, and I'm glad to hear the excitement. <laughs> Start at the base. So the question is, is this a nodal brancher or an internodal? So that's internodal. Yeah, internodal. So you can see the first branch comes off the white area on the main stalk, right? And this is definitely different from the internodal brancher we were looking at earlier. So we have, you know, a minimal two species of internodal branching mm -hmm. example. Nice. Today. Looks good. Do we know exactly uh, what type of bamboo coral this is? I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have kits up there? Yeah, um, I'll work get the way I mean, we could call it no genus Keratoisis, but with a, a lot of other details, right. we don't really know. Um, so oh, that naming that we're giving it is based purely on the fact of how it's branching. I'm actually kind of surprised. It looks a little bit fragile to me. Um, and you see it's very, very sparsely branched. Yep. I was expecting to see it branching at these nodes, to tell you the truth. Mm, okay. Is that um, a particular feature of the certain um, genus that we were that we think it might is? 
Um, no, it would be an undescribed genus. Um, there's all kinds of undescribed bamboo corals right now. Um, we know them more by their um, genetics, and we're trying to sort it all out so that we can look at these colony morphologies and give you a quick answer. Okay. Um, but unable to do that right now. Would you be interested? Kind of old taxonomy. Okay. Can we quick zoom in on on where the branch meets the 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 other branch, the one that we we were just filming close? Because yeah. that one almost looks like it's too. it's branching from the node itself. Yeah. It does so. look like that, doesn't it? I'm wondering. Yeah, sometimes you have to be careful at the lower parts of the colony. They overgrow, and when they get thick, they can actually deposit calcium carbonate over the node, so you might think it's internodal. Um, so this is a good so idea. So now it makes a little more sense. Okay. Is there any this way we can nodal. zoom in a little tighter? I can uh, move the ROV closer. That's max zoom, so I can. Up to okay. You can zoom out a little bit, video, and then I'll, uh, I'll hop it's forward just a little bit. It's interesting to see that there's a couple we'll, uh, of squat lobsters associated with this bamboo as well. Bamboo corals have fewer associates than some of the other corals, but... Uh, Copy. Nice look. On the move. And okay, then thanks, Scott. You can snap in video, and then we'll keep moving. Understood. I got serious. Yeah, moving solitary here. cup, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think the branching is at the nodes. All right, so that's good. Oh, well, at the node, you're saying? Okay. This one branch here on the the, yeah. the right yeah. branch. You can see it's right. So right that would put this into something that we are calling Isodella. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also another group. Claterysis and another group, yeah. Jason Isis, all three of those. Okay, video can come live. You have to look at other characters. Marcy, I'm going to keep moving. Sirius is uh, on the move. Okay. Can we get a quick zoom of that cup coral that's off to the to the lower, um, like, 7 o'clock? The pink little uh, dot? Yeah, we'll just, we can snap it. Video snap it. Okay. We'll keep it in here. That thing? Yep. Sorry, that was... Okay, go for it. Sorry, my toes. Cool. No problem. My, my fault. Looks like he's got a buddy next to him, too. All right. Yeah. And then he's also got a squat lobster talk, hanging out. That's Max. Nice. Great. Okay. Mm All right. Thanks. Copy. All right, we're on the move. We've got a white branching thing ahead. That might be somewhere low. Philia. Yeah, up yeah, on the, um, the up right. 11 o'clock almost um, position. Yeah, up the hill, copy. And we can see here that we're starting to see a lot more of that dense framework system um, in the dead coral rubble as it is. And whereas before, we were seeing a lot of kind of more of that sparse coral rubble with all broken down, more degraded versions. But here, we're actually still seeing some actual framework system that is associated with it. And there's a little red guy there. I wonder Crinoid. what that is. Did you want to go for the white coral up here? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll keep going up there then. This might be a sponge too. This uh, at nine. This almost looks like Madripoora. Mm -hmm. And then that whip-like coral. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. probably a black coral. Lonely whip over there. First one that we've seen. Mm -hmm. There was a fish that just swam underneath. The ROV, not sure what that was. Okay, mm -hmm. video, can zoom in. Just white. trying to keep out maybe for that black that. skate again. <laughs> <laughs> or black fin skate, I think it was called. Nah, yeah, this is, I would call this living Lophelia. All right. Um, yeah, take, take we zoom, zoom in, in you can see the Project. polyps are alive. There we are. We so you polyps. can see the polyps are open on the top. Yeah. Um, 
And even some, yeah, off to the right hand side. Yeah. So we we are in we are wanting to collect Lophelia for um, the Aspire uh, collections. If anyone, if you guys want to stop and grab this guy. Well, I think with the previous Lophelia I sample, I think we have enough at least for this area, maybe okay. in future dives. This is a nice specimen, too. I'd hate to take out the last of <laughs> <laughs> Lophelia that's here. The live Lophelia. Yeah. <laughs> He's quite pretty. Yeah, there seems to be an enormous amount of But you can ones. see the polyps here. Yeah, the one at the very end, the polyps out. Yep. And if I'm not mistaken, behind it, there is some Chrysogorgia. Um, if that caught my eye correctly, um, Good, you can zoom out. We'll try we to could pan down, down just a little bit, right and yet yeah. right behind it, the pink stuff. Yeah, the that pink. that's mm -hmm. a small looking feature, and then a squat lobster all the way in the back there. Thank you. He does look quite beautiful. The it coral too. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. So zoom back in video. Roger. What's in the end of this one? See that? Is that a barnacle? No. Um, it could oh, be a barnacle. Yeah. Like Likely. I think that is a barnacle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you swing, if you were able to, I don't know if you can, if you'd be able to swing to the right a little bit and get a side shot of it, I'd have a better idea, but it's probably a barnacle. Okay. And yeah, I, don't see his, I don't see his tentacles moving around, though, uh, or his arms moving right. around. But. Thanks. He's Good definitely uh, sure. parked himself right in the middle of that coralite. <laughs> Good spot. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And then if we could go to the um, to the whip-like coral, that might be yeah, the first device. black coral we see here. Copy. Hello, man. In this region. Saddle over there here. He is. Yep. We can get a zoom on that whip and see it, what its tentacles look like. Copy. Getting closer here. Get so black crawls usually have a single stalk tentacle. Okay. All right. All right, Versus octocrawls, which have can frame it up. Look, more, look more like polyps with multiple fingers. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. That oh, I'm not might sure. be a bamboo, a single stalk bamboo. I can see the. No yeah, the, the dark, nodes. Yep. The dark bands there. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Where's him? We got Scott, to. if you're online uh, and could chime in here, this is quite interesting. And again, we see quite a few um, associates with it. Mm -hmm. Look at those little chelate arms. Aren't they so cute? Mm -hmm. It's the exact same color as the coral. Definitely see all the nodes in there. Looks, yeah, the nodes look really nice. I think this is a bamboo coral. Mm -hmm. With at least two squat lobsters on him. If we zoom out, could we potentially turn on the, the lasers to get yeah. maybe a quick Absolutely. guesstimate on how big this guy is? Yeah, but you can zoom out and uh, I'll bring the lasers maybe by the base. Roger. Yeah, they are. Oh man, he's you tiny. Can zoom out a little bit. It's more of that, yeah. Okay. But he's long. Yeah. So there you go. He's probably 20 or 30 centimeters long, at least. With yeah. the curl. Pretty cool. Yeah, sounds great. Thank you, pilot. Yeah. All right, you can come wide video. Watch that. Okay. Another enchinoderm. Ooh, what's up there? Here? We have a sea urchin. Oh, look. Mike, Mike. It looks like we have a really large coral up ahead. Mike. Oh, yay. My curiosity is uh, get the best of me here. I got to uh, check this out. Ooh, and a crab. Look at this guy. Oh, man. Ooh. 
I don't think that's Carl. I think that is oh, netting. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is something to kind of melt. Uh, yep. A little stake in the heart there. <laughs> so this is a, what we call a ghost net. That means it was accidentally lost and continues to possibly fish. Can we get a zoom in, though, on that crab? Yeah, yeah that Slowly looks like Chasey on. He is pretty big. I gotta get, actually, it's a male and a female. You can see there's, there's two, two of them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for those lasers. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, he's pretty large. So Chasey on Fenner Eyes, my nice guess, which would be the golden nice. crab. Yeah. Uh, oh, you can frame it up. They're not uncommon Watch. out here. There's another crab to the left, kind of obscured. There are two mating pair, right? Yeah. Is the male one the larger one? Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Usually it's the opposite, right? The female's larger. Usually, so I honestly have to pick it up, and look under, under <laughs> to be sure. But <laughs> that would be a one-way trip. <laughs> you can zoom in further if you'd like. Yeah, try to hold the air. Now, are they? Um, do they always stay a mated pair together? No, I don't. I don't think they like do that mate for life, right? They like, they just do it during mating season and then disperse. Okay. I don't think that they're uh, monogamous in the animal world. <laughs> um, and I might be wrong. The large one might be the female. We don't know well, if anyone can chime in if they know about the. Any of these, more about these golden crabs? These are actually a species that gets fished quite a bit. Um, there is a fishery for them. Um, but there is a giant ghost net, and I'm not sure how old it is, but we are in the <laughs> habitat area of particular concern, so we're not allowed to bottom to trawl, but we are. they are allowed to surface fish. And there are parts where, well, the crabs will be picked up by these large crab pots, yes. right? Which would be, be like almost like cages, like you see on um, that show in Alaska, the crabbing show in Alaska. I oh. forget the name of it. <laughs> Deadly catch. Right, those big pots, right? Those yeah. big crab pots. That's how you catch crabs. So this oh, looks more ahead. like a fishing net to me. Oh, look, Sleep the crab almost here. looks like he's carrying the yeah, smaller yeah. one to make sure that, hey, yeah. you're mine. Yep. <laughs> Okay, can we get a, a quick pan over the, the ghost net to yeah, see if absolutely. we can see there's, what else is in there? There's a species of crab. This one might do it. Coming uh, out a little. The male carries the female around until she molts. They can't, okay. Uh, Zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so the male would be Hold the larger yeah. one. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's and the large one would carry the smaller one. The female until she molts, so. and then they can. I think there's another crab kind of hiding behind that. So, yeah. So this looks fairly new. I I wouldn't, you know, like depending it. on what's growing on it, really, it doesn't look that old. It looks like they've got a nice Careful big piece of lophelia yeah. stuck in there. Oh, I wasn't going to get any closer. Um, which this. looks recently dead, um, uh, yeah, which is concerning. And then some anemones and yeah, definitely uh, hydrozoans attached all around it. Okay, to take a bit more zoom. Yeah, you can zoom in well. Roger that. There's a crinoid, and uh, this is anthemastis, right? The strawberry coral, which is the pink one. Mm -hmm. um, it's a type of soft coral. There's another um, we aren't moving, but type of crinoid. It's seven. We tilt down, down a bit. Back there. And okay. then some other soft Little corals ways. next to it and a mm -hmm. sponge. So, you know, this might have been here for while. a good while, enough yeah. for it to be colonized Copy. this much. Yeah, it's quite a bit of coloni colonization. It might be small, it. but... Mm -hmm. They are there. When was the Hapsi put into place? Uh, 2010. Oh, it's going to be okay. tilted down. Just so a touch. Yeah. It could be a rough fitting around the same price. And then mm -hmm. you have a small hermit crab there. Mm -hmm. And some more soft corals. Yeah, look at them growing mm -hmm. inside yeah. the netting there. That's pretty cool. They're quite large, too, the ones at yeah. the bottom. Yeah. 
Um, I don't know if we know how to age these so things. things. So if we know how to age them, we can figure out how long this net's been here. Um, my guess is if you throw some lasers on there, we can get a size, and maybe that would be helpful um, to someone in the future to take a look at it and see yeah. how long the net's been sitting here. Lasers on when we zoom out, we'll okay. uh, see the laser. Thank you. And it looks like there's even further back some crabs or lobsters in that far net mm -hmm. that's even further in there, so... Yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff on this guy. Yeah. Okay, you can zoom out. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna line back up the cereals here. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So they're oh, about yeah. 10 centimeters. Uh, as corals are. Towards 165 still, or you want to hang out up on top of this? This guy's a good a meter, meter and a half big. Let's we'll hang it's pretty balled up too. It's not yeah. like it was laying. You know, why spread out, yeah. Yeah, like 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 they were like as we getting drug across yeah. the bottom, it looks more like it was probably at the surface of them. It got balled up on its way, way down, yeah. Pretty close to this Just line. got dense and sunk. We don't really know though, so it could be oh. how it got here. All right. And if we could go around it into some of those back um standing corals that are back there, that would be nice off to the now dead center. All right, we've got lots of good standing. Uh, yeah. Standing dead coral here at Madripura again. That's this yellow, uh, white one with the orange tips. Um, that's probably living. Nice mound. A lot of now that standing dead coral. So we're seeing some pronounced coral framework now in this area. It looks like some of this netting now is drug behind it. You can see how it's dragged. Yeah. It probably got snagged up here, and then. Now it's reached yeah. its yeah, dropped yeah. All right. Do we at this point? Oh, do we have some gold coral there, or are those zoanthids? You think this this guy? Yeah. yeah that guy. Well, the the orangey looking one. I think that's probably Madripoor. If we get closer, we can get a better idea. Why don't you come around a little more? It looks like that net's hanging by a thread <laughs> by All some, right. got caught in some other framework. Mm -hmm. A really and nice squat lobster on the coral. This Gorgonian would be good if we can get a close-up of him, too. There's living Lophelia over here. Quite a bit of it, actually, on this living dead over here. I mean, the um, seven standing claws. dead. Yeah. You that seven. Day. Yeah. Okay. Crino is just loving that net. Yeah, yeah they're scaling all along it. It's like this perfect little clothesline for them. All right, getting settled in here, video. Watch for that pilot. Sounds good. All right, zoom in on the white one. We'll start with the white one, I guess. We'll go to the other one here. Holy yeah, I'd call that Madripoora, the orange. One and ah, uh, I think that's a bamboo coral. Can we get good on the white one? Get zoom on the stalk. Copy. You can zoom in. Some banding. He's in awful there. large. Yeah, the white bands down there. There's dark bands. Yeah. Yep. yep. Bamboo coral. Sorry, Perfect. video. Got no worries. So we'll do that. I'm gonna take a little bit tighter zoom. Highly branching. Is there any way we can get slowly or um, more penned around it so that we could get a front-facing view? Because those branches look like they're going in some multiple directions, so that's not something we usually see. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. Estimate towards your right if you go that way. Yeah. Before you uh, so just flip over and then take after a look, see where that line goes. This coral, Chuck Messing has requested sure to get a close-up of those crinoids after. No, roger, roger. Possibilities. Straight up there. Oh, another heterotella, a wedding sponge. Okay. I'll see what I can do for you. Watch the lead here. Try to get more perpendicular to it. Perfect. Yeah, it looks like the those the base of of the coral, the base branches that are branching out look almost like it's going almost downward and in all directions here. It's okay, video, you can frame it up. As I, uh, try to keep it steady. Regularly seen. Yeah, Correct I'm not sure if I'm wrong. Scott. There's a squat lobster behind him, too. Yep. 
Okay, watch see, is there a specific area on this one you wanted to um, see can better? Can we start with the, the base yeah. of, of the coral, okay. with those branching um, nodes there? Yeah, come so in. Should I get the branching? It looks Understood. like it's coming out above the brown area. Yeah, it does look like it's internodal. Mm -hmm. Scott would be proud. <laughs> Okay, it's just looking the interesting because some of these branches look like they're starting to grow downwards like down, yeah. before they grow upwards, so which could be a way of making more space for more branches. Um, not entirely sure how that would work, but all of those little polyps look really happy. Looks really good, and we can just continue panning upwards. Wow, and I'm guessing there's no real limitation on how far this, these corals can branch off other branches and then continue. Um, do we know of any limitations, Steph, or is it just as, as long as it can keep growing, it grows in all directions? I don't know about bamboo corals. We've seen black corals that can be thousands of years old. Um, they, they grow um, usually planar. It just depends mm. on how, bi how big that, you know, they're humongously tall yeah yeah um, okay thank you pilot mm -hmm. yeah you can come out video you can go for the uh, orange one over here gotcha hold the impression um, when you guys are ready we need to look at the crinoids now this coral off to the left is a uh, madripoor I believe that's madripoor yeah it looks it's quite zigzaggy the, yeah the zigzag if we can get a quick zoom on that um, before now, we leave. We do have Majapur Oculata as one of our targets. I honestly Hold can't tell question. if it's Oculata or yeah. Carolina or whatever because I don't have a specimen in hand. So um, if we're interested in grabbing one. this, it might be worth it. But if it's the wrong species, then, you know. Yeah. But I guess we run that risk no matter what match report we pick up because I don't think anybody can tell if it's oculata or, or another species because you have to look at the correlates under a microscope. Okay, um, I know if John's on the line maybe Jeffrey. he can tell yeah, if he would bet on it the, uh, um, I, sure being or not being a uh, match report oculata. The conditions were not holding well but I was right over top of you and now I'm 30 meters. But I think for I can always yeah, wait till he comes back if he's not here. I, I'd hate to pick it up and have it be the wrong so specimen, specimen yeah, that they're yeah, after. Um, yeah, I think so for now we can move on. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, Unless there is a request, we can after if anyone puts in a specific request after the crinoids, we can come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Coming so forward. My layback. Uh, uh, Mike, if you can hear me, if you can drop can the phone number into the um, chat. Way, I guess. Yes, for yeah. chalk. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Casey. Thank you, can you come in uh, right around the, the boat and the vehicles just so we can see the tracks a little bit? Yep. Just kind of frame the boat and the vehicles real quick so we can see the tracks for all three. Is that Chuck? I mean, they're holding a pretty tight circle yep. there. Hi, Chuck. How are you? Hi. Congratulations again. <laughs> I started out here. Thank you. It's so fun. <laughs> no, I'm you. Started out doing good. I'm sorry. I uh, uh, snapped the uh, uh, cryos when you get away. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Around around towards the south a while ago. I don't know if you ever had a chance to talk about, in addition, of course, crinoids, which in my area. But all of the little fuzzy Tetalus. trees all yeah, over the big coral and hard bottoms. Uh, have you talked about them at all? Um, yeah, we've talked about them being f uh, forams, right? The fuzzy forams. Some of the fuzzy yep. forams yep. and hydrozoans yep. all are uh, conglomerating on these coral fragments. So, I don't know how much. Yeah. Unless we get a shoot move back right. towards I you, have this really need to start I have this idea that the forams are so yeah, abundant on all of these uh, and colorable coral from the state of Florida on up here. 
that, and they collect all of this fine sediment from the water right, that I think video. they're Alrighty. major Let's contributors to the accumulation of sediment on the bottom. Oh, wow. And they're so tiny. That's amazing. Guys. Any ideas? I know you know what these are. What are they? <laughs> I don't even like, pretend like you uh, don't know. <laughs> well, I need to get closer. Okay. If you guys can get a better shot of those crinoids, then you, you that would be that uh, good for us. Call move in. Uh, wow. I'll stay here. Well, you know. We'll make a move um, that way. Watch it. Watch it. We uh, have that, to do a little really backtrack to get to there. Like, um, we had a big southerly current pickup and the, push the series. The combination of the 10 arms. We were. Uh, the, so their arms are those little adjust. filaments. So and they've got those very, 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 there. very long cirri, the hook like structures yeah. that they're uh, cleaning right the now I'm line with. About zero, one, um, and, and there's only right one out. member so, of zero, one, zero. Uh, the family Ten meters is all that yeah. I'm aware of in this region, it but it's usually rich purple colored. And um, so my, my only guess is uh, if it's not new, is uh, Xenometra columnaris. Oh, repeat that? Repeat the name? Xenometra, Z-E-N-O. Xenometra. Awesome. Xenometra columnaris. And uh, it's the only member of its family in the Western Atlantic, although it's also found in the Eastern Atlantic. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's been found in this area before, um, but it's it looks a little different than what I'm used to seeing because uh, it looked pretty, they look pretty pale. Mm -hmm. um, when you, if you do get a chance to see any others like it, the, way, the reason it's got the name Columnaris is because the um, uh, dorsal, the base of the of the animal from which the gray appear, the arms feathery arms appear to arise, and the has the hooks attached to it, mm -hmm. is shaped like a little column. It's taller than wide, um, but I couldn't see it from that angle. Would, it, would you be interested be in, in us cool. collecting this at some point? Um, yeah. I okay. mean, I, I wouldn't go near that line. No, no. Uh, because we, of the possibility of, uh, you know, just have a kind of tangle. There. But, uh, and if, if you see there. another uh, specimen like that, the species is well known, but... That one, those that little group that didn't quite look like typical columnaris. Okay, so and you said it was so the example, regular one is purple, like a purple color. Yeah, they're usually purple, yeah. Okay, and Copy. this one is more of a white. And uh, and you get close enough to see that they don't have that very tall, uh, taller than wide little columnar okay. uh, central dorsal that the hooks, the long hook derives from, that would be different. Okay. The other possibility is, now that I think of it, is a, um, a member of the family, a telecrinity, but um, the hooks on that one don't usually curl around. They usually just scout, uh, and the animal sits on the uh, straight on the seafloor, like, uh, you know, the cirri, the hooks act mm -hmm. like, a, um, like a snowshoe. Mm -hmm. And, and less, so they're less likely to be found end. around, like attached like that to a heart, to a like a line, or a smaller really substrate. They don't do that. Yeah. Right? They don't do that. Yeah. Okay. At least as far as we know. Yeah. Um. But anyway, that's very cool. You but, know. Thank you. We've seen. Uh, it we snapped the crinoids from here. I think they're talking about. Terrace, Alrighty. Which are shallow water than you get normally there. get. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got, uh, right. find Lophelia clinging to submarine pit cables as long as they're above the bottom. Right. Pretty cool. Well, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you and, for And uh, Kimberly in. got the name right there. In the group. You got you got the name in the group? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Want me to go in further? Uh, yeah. Awesome. You're most welcome. If you do, actually, if you do a quick zoom in again on them, uh, I just thought there's another character that would see that. whether it's one or the other. Okay, um, we're zooming in now. I think you might be on a bit of a delay, so um, okay, they're they're zooming in now. Uh, let's give let yeah, the okay. let it refresh a bit. It looks like there's also an anemone right between these two. Long series. Flytrap anemone. I can't. 
Yeah. I can't quite make out the feature that I was looking for. The atelaclinids uh, have none of the little side branches, uh, the pinules at the base of the arms. The, the uh, Near the base of the arms, they don't have them. But these guys have them, yes. Okay, so it's not an atelacrinid. So my guess is still Xenometra. Xenometra, okay. Even though they're pale colored. Oh, awesome. So if we see these yeah. again, we, you want me to grab one, if it's safe? Yes. You think it could yeah. be different, Especially a different morph? Especially if it's not morph. purple. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, I'll, sign, I'll uh, hang up. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, Chuck. Thank you very much. That was, my, that was my Bye. master's professor, Chuck Messing, from yes. Nova Southeastern University. And then, uh, one last thing. This is, this is one of the very few species that's been collected from both sides of the Atlantic. Oh, cool. Off Europe and off North America. Awesome. Oh, nice. In this color or? No, no, the purple. xenometra. And the, oh, okay. Real xenometra. Yeah. Assuming this may not be it. <laughs> All right. Talk to you later. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. We only have about 20 minutes left, is that correct? We come off bottom around 4 o'clock. Oh. Okay. Yeah, uh, we are happy if you guys yeah, want to move on. Yeah, you can come on. Thanks. With that. Watch lead, was there uh, anything else uh, you wanted to zoom in on this area, or should we keep moving? Um, I think we can move on if we see anything. All oh, right. We'll stop, yeah. Sounds good. This is a pretty good spot, though, but I, I'd rather you guys get away from that net. Yes, we uh, <laughs> also... I think you'd probably prefer that, too. Yeah. Yeah, we have heteratella again, this... Um, wedding glass coral yeah. sponge. Yeah, wedding glass sponge, yeah. All right, Jeffrey, See, the geologists the can learn, too. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to pick up any of your rock stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> don't worry about it. That means I get to stick around. <laughs> we were doing 160, but some interesting stuff in the vicinity here. Go up to the top. Try, you could try to push out this way and just be really mindful of where that line ends up. Yeah. Like that, uh, get near it. Like you can see the very end, end of that at that netting where yeah. it's snagged. Yeah. Just got caught in some framework. Mm -hmm. And if you also want to check out feed two, it's also another great view of um, Discoverer two. There. Observing yeah, the background. Mm -hmm. it, and so just to get another idea of really how massive you this know, ROV is, yeah. um, just a quick good. reminder that yeah, you can um, look at the different feeds that we have a quad feed on camera three, and um, that lovely view from Sirius over Discoverer two. Um, from feed two and the live action from discover on feed one and here again we it's quite fascinating how fast we can change these kinds of substrates that we're looking at so we already had some dense coral framework before and not even what five ten meters away we already start to see more of the actual coral rubble the degradation of these corals in this area so it goes to show know. that it doesn't like take much we don't have to travel very far in order to have a completely different area yeah, that we're looking at Starboard. I see something off in the distance there. There's something white up there. Yeah. You can see if it's maybe a sponge. Probably get a move in uh, once he gets straightened out now. Yeah. You have something sticking up on the uh, three o'clock too. Go one three five or something. Five. Yeah. What do you think of that? See that little guy? Yep. That's what I'm gonna shoot for. Got a pretty good slope here. 
There's another another Herotella at, uh, dead center. More of these car slabs we're seeing in this area too, Copy. with sediments kind of just cascaded over with some dead coral rubble around. Looks like it's uh, fallen it? down by Calia sponge possibly. And then some standing dead coral. Yeah, it looks like he fell over. Do they have the ability to kind of grow back standing up, or he'll likely die there? Uh, that's probably a better question for Shirley, but can, uh, lose I'm pretty video. sure that he'll regrow right. if he can find a solid yeah. bottom to, to attach to. Okay. Um, can well, he reach back down and, and try to find that, or...? No, they're not active like that. They're okay. They're uh, Once they are settled, they're... They're there. there. So, yeah, there's no. It's not like an anemone you can pick up and move, right? They're they are stuck to the bottom. Okay. Like a coral stuck to the bottom. Yeah. Oh, right. Can already see maybe parts of him that are yeah, starting like, to degrade and right. Well, maybe be eaten. And they could change. You know, if he could grow, he'll start growing in a different plane. If okay. he can find a, a, a calm, subtle place to, like, if he got knocked over by something else that wasn't like a current, right? Yeah. They might be able to regrow in a different plane, but um, he definitely can't. He's not choosing to do that. It's yeah. just the part of the, the genetic, um, hmm. you know. Apparently, he took care of all the seeming for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think he picked a too small of a rock and he tipped over. <laughs> yeah, that well, could be it too. Just grew too big. Blown over in the in the you know breeze from the current. Yeah. <laughs> This one's pretty cool. This one is nice. Interesting structure. I'm gonna get close video. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Something this just flew weird. by. I don't know, Shirley and Chris are still on the line, but this guy's pretty weird looking. <laughs> Shirley has just yeah, yeah, chimed in. So what is that? We're, we're looking at this. I think that must be a hexaxonella. It's kind of ratty looking, but it's yeah. uh, looks okay. like a hexaxonella yeah, sponge. Yep. Awesome. Very interesting. Can we get the lasers on it? Yeah. It's, what, 30 maybe? Yeah, 30. Yeah, roughly. About 30 centimeters. Do you want to try the forward lights video, or do you like this lighting? Oh, this lighting's pretty good, actually. Okay, I will leave it there. And then we have that soft coral off to the side again. Mm -hmm. And then we have, are those zoanthids off to the left um, in the coral rubble itself in the framework system? It could be, I can't. The little really. yellow guys, can yeah. we zoom in on those? Yeah, come in video. So since we only have a few minutes left, mm -hmm. I think maybe we could pick up a piece of that yellow sponge. You want to grab that? You want to grab a sample? Do you think yeah. it's a, a new species? You don't. Yeah. We're not sure what it is. I'm not sure what it is. It Can looks unusual to us. The sponge. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I'm okay with that. Cool. If we think it, it's new or never seen before, I'm totally down. How much time we got? Yeah. Uh, how big of a piece do you need? You want you want a morphology yeah. specimen, or do you want more yeah, of it for DNA? Get, no, a small, a small piece is good. We can get the the morphology from this ex okay. excellent video. Yeah, you okay. Okay. Wide video Pilot, do you think uh, we can grab a sample? Yeah, absolutely. Yep, or wide. Before you do, can we finish a uh, look at that right. yellow? Zoanthid. Maybe not. It'd be too late. Uh, we might be able to get oh, a shot of it when we zoom in for to pick it up. So we can get a quick zoom. Yeah. I was just wondering if it might be uh, could frame it up video. for Dr. Corals, <laughs> or I thought actually I saw the Canopy Borgia, which yeah. is I don't remember seeing that. Watch, see, did you want a closer view, or is this the view that you were looking uh, for? The closer view towards the yellow um, look coral-looking things off to the left. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, come in. Hold that. Yeah, I can't tell if there, is it a mat, or is it a thin uh, branch? I think it's a thin branch. I'm not really sure what, what we're aiming for. This? Scott, are you looking at the, the yellow 
coral or? Yeah, the yellow in the lower left corner. Mm. There's yeah. And there's a uh -huh. lot more of it. Yeah. Left, more. Yeah, that's what I was aiming for as well. Okay. Can we uh, maybe uh, pan to the left? Three by one. Okay, this little baby gold coral. Yeah. yeah. And then there's more of it off more to the left if we can get that in the shot too. We yeah. Get a tight end zoom. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what he's looking for. It's deep in there. Gold coral. Yep, okay. There we go. Yeah, that, it yeah, almost color. looks like uh, there's an acanthagorgia mm -hmm. that's tucked in like and the growing the at the base, but it almost looks uh, membranous. I think that's Yeah. Good. That sound right, Joe? It's, it's very odd. Oh, sorry. It's, it's like it's starting as a membrane else. at one you? end and growing downwards. Into the framework. Branches, unless there's two different yep. things, I suppose that's yeah, possible. Yeah, let's do it for a second. Right. Maybe, it. but it looks really interesting to see. I think I'm looking at... Adaptable morphology to the substrate to that it's growing on, I guess. <laughs> it, they yeah. might be two different things. Oh, okay. You can come out, we can go it's back odd, to the other one. But, okay. you know, you can see it's got these very, very slender, tall pops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You see branches, yeah, Maybe, like down uh, below. There were come back some in. branch work, the branches. Yeah, yeah, that's on. Oh, and okay. I wonder really if... Gotta be a yeah. yeah, and it's that, and this one that we're just zooming in now, it does look isolated from the rest that it's growing on its own, but it looks like the same species. Mm -hmm. Look, he's got a little amphipod or isopod oh. on him. He's so cute. It has, Yeah, I can see that where it's attached to this so, coral, you know, this dead coral, like yeah. towards yep. the center of the screen, yeah. yeah. But that's I'll just... What, uh, picking up a clump of this skeleton stuff here would bring an awful lot of interesting stuff up. I will just okay. with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hint, hint, we nudge, nudge. Here too, Scott. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff on that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, are we aiming for a piece of the sponge or do we want kind of more of a, a whole piece in one? I'm not sure you're going to be able to get but I, I'd say a piece of the sponge and then pick up some, a clump of this um, dead coral. Yeah, I think two separate okay. samples would be the way to do it. Okay. I don't think I can get the sponge with anything else. I'll just trim a piece of the sponge off the top and then go back for more of the... Sounds good. All right, video income wide. All right. We're set up for the sponge sample. We've got hydraulics. Copy. Copy. Sponge would probably be easy, so, yeah. so maybe. Easy grab. Starboard in there. Yeah. Of course, I'm going to start right out under the armpit for the easy grab. So we're just going to call this periphera. We don't even know um, what class it's in. Come in a little in. more on the uh, sponge. Whether it's hexactinellid or um, Dima spongia, yeah, so a pilot. Is that good? we get a better idea when we touch it. Tripping down a little more. It's mm. pretty squishy. Yeah. I'm just gonna cut this section off. Watch it. Does that sound good to you? Mm -hmm. That okay. looks good. In video, we can get a zoom on it right here. Alrighty. And then I'll put it in the. Uh, yeah, you're already, you're already ahead of me. Ah. Boom. Nice. Alright. One year clear video. No rush, but. Uh, yep. I think I'm good. So just from a person that is not very familiar with sponges, this looks very different oh, right. from what we collected right. earlier and the fact that it looks actually spongy versus very fragile and crystal structure. So this looks very interesting. It has a more of a spongy, soft very good observation. <laughs> Still first.
go for some rubble. Do you want yeah. to? So okay, so watch it. You're going for the um, gold kind yeah, of rubble with the gold guy on it. Yeah, um, you can. I see kind of two. There's a larger colony deep in there on the left, or there's the little tiny one. Video, you can come in. Uh, well, um, whatever you would prefer to do, uh, whatever's easiest to possibly collect. Okay, this one's super tiny. I think I will lose it, and okay. uh, it'll be obscured. I think the larger one on the left, I have a better shot. Okay. So we'll uh, see how brittle it is. We'll give it a yeah. shot for you. Sounds good. How much reach do I have? Yeah, and Scott prefers the yellow one on the left, too. So. We've got a big, enormous envelope here. A larger yeah, one just on the a left. Big, just a big handful of it. Okay, Vidi, come out a little bit here. Yes, yeah, so hold that. Okay. Which one of you guys is working in the arm? Just uh, out of curiosity. Levi is pilot. Levi. Okay. Yeah. The main pilot. Yeah. Um, I might break this up a little bit here. Oh. I mean, we're okay with it. I don't know if the critters inside will be, <laughs> but all in the name of science. Um, Copy. Try to be do as least impact as possible. But oh man, well, you're I try to take <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you can, <laughs> can <laughs> clobber a little on it with the claw, maybe you can break a chunk off. Put the whole thing in the rock box. <laughs> we'll be, we'll be cleaning be it inverts for three straight days. Yeah. We'll just cancel the rest of the dives. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah, <laughs> Whoop. There and there it goes. Okay. That's fine. You got some of the yellow, but it just floated off. Okay. So. All right. So I think the larger yellow portion is going to be. Mm -hmm. So I think the section I do have is. Um, do you, you do have some. You do actually have the little yellow guy on there now. It's uh, a large piece. Yeah. I don't know what box that's going to go in. Um, Maybe put him off to the side now. Yeah, I, guess. I think I'm going to set this one off to the side and then uh, go for the. Try to get that section, uh, protruding chunk now. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get some of this gold stuff here. See how it breaks. There you go. I think you're there. Try picking up. Give it a go. We're going to get some of that bacterial matting, too, or whatever that is. Right That's probably the, good. Ready right on the box, Joe? There you go. Didn't want your spice to throw away. The schmutz. The sm schmutz. Mm hmm. You want to put it in the rock box? Uh, no, it'll go into Did starboard it? inner. Okay. If I could fit it in there. Might oh, we got quite a bit on there. Talk about like eight stones in one bird. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I you don't know, know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> eight birds, one stone. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, <laughs> operation. Uh, there it goes. It kind of broke up on the way in, but I think the gold yeah, is in there somewhere. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Quite a few other bonus items in there. That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're calling this dive, I think. All right. Um, we're going to have a dive planning call with our core participants at 10 after 4. Um, the phone number is or should be posted on the chat line. If you guys want to call in, that will sum up today, and we'll be prepping for tomorrow. Okay. Um, thank you so much for visiting us and exploring with us today.
just have to We are very that. excited about this. Right. Um, that was yeah, a really right. good first day. Um, again, we're going to go right through right our right social here. media. You can well, lower, so. follow us I'm on to, Facebook uh, at Ocean the Exploration the Research or at Facebook at, at Ocean day. Exploration Upper Research down, dash yeah. Education or on here. Twitter at Ocean Explorer with the hashtag Okie on us or on Instagram at No Ocean Exploration. And you can follow me on Twitter at um, Deep Sea Nerdy or on Instagram and Facebook at Deep Sea Nerd and Kim's Instagram. My Instagram handle is Deep Sea Kim. You can follow me there. Um, and also for those, just in case there's any confusion, we're talking 4.10 local time. That's in about 10 minutes from wherever you may be. So if you guys want to um, take a break and then come back and, and dial in. Uh, the number is also on the PDF um, that was sent to you last night on the, the for the pre-dive meeting. So it's on the chat room or the PDF. So feel free to chime in, and um, we'll see you guys then. Thanks for joining. Yes, and thanks for participating and helping us out. We really much appreciate it. I do, too. I really appreciate it. We appreciate all the call-ins. If you guys can make the time to call in and, and give some advice or let us know what we're looking at, it's always much appreciated. Yes, so. And correcting me. <laughs> Please correct me. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you. Signing off. Bye. You still pushing out? Oh, yeah, 20%. Okay. I can do more. No, you're but. Good. Uh, we're, we're, we're pointing with the current, so it should, yeah, be, it should, it should be, be pulling. It should be up. sailing at this point almost. Yeah. But just making sure my heading was bouncing a smidge. Pulling in at 26, increasing a little to 20. 30. Oops. Took up 33 there. Pretty much maxed out at, uh, I'm at 95 right now. I'm going to hold that, see where it, uh, what, get, what that gets us. You might get ahead a little. You think? Well, no, I just, I'm doing 20 right oh, now. Oh, you're 20, okay. I'm just trying to find a sweet spot. All right, we were off bottom. Yeah, the nav dropping off bottom. Remind them, nav off bottom. Chris, you can drop a target, uh, ROV off bottom. ROV 01 off bottom. Drop it where the ROV is. He's just south. Off the screen, I think. So, I think you guys will stream okay, but it's up to you if you want to get moving ahead. Yeah. So okay. Thanks. You guys make that call. call on. We're doing. Otherwise, looking good. It's rocking and rolling a little bit, but not too bad. 31 ish. Let's touch it back. You want 29.30 or 30.31? <laughs> What does Nav want? I think we're right on time. Okay, your arm's good and stowed. How's the shilling look? I stowed it earlier. So, typically so I... Probably, probably wrong then. I'll fix it. Typically I leave it so it's like, if anything, it's like a little bit too far off the drawer. So as it drifts throughout the day down, yeah, keep stays off the drawer. And then on the ascent, you can always kind of bring it back down if you're too high. It looks good to me, I think. Yeah, I think it'll clear the door, no problem. Great. Rock boxes are out of drawer. Or I'm going to retract the drawer. Rock box. Retract drawer. So, look at it. Oh. oh. Bless you. Uh, retract both bands. It's that big sponge. I feel like I just, uh, because it tipped over. It'll grow. I'm concerned that it may not go back. You feel that way? Yeah. Yeah. In the name of science.
see if we all agree. So I, my my comment would be, in terms of recovery, it's nice to be in joystick already doing a half knot through the water. It'll, it'll like make Chris's job a little easier up there. But but uh, you know we're we're in a steady state. We're looking good. And get you know leave. You can leave auto sway in, so they don't have to think about that. But just get auto surge going and tuned, so they know what roughly they're doing. Because they're going to just pop out of sway last minute anyways. It, in, my, in my humble opinion. 